Good morning and a very warm welcome from Adidas Global Headquarters in Herzog Aurach, Germany for the third edition of the Adi Zero Road to Record. My name is Michelle Samet and I'm so excited that you are joining us today for this absolutely phenomenal event. We have got an incredible six races coming up, three in the men's and three in the women's category, a half marathon, a 10 kilometers and a five kilometers distance. And if the last three years or the last two years are anything to go by, we're in for an amazing treat. In the first year, we saw not one, but two world records get broken in the 5K and the women's 10K. And last year, we saw a historic race in the men's 10K with five men going sub 27 minutes. And of course, many records broken, nine national records and a European record. So an absolutely phenomenal race. And joining me now, I have Spencer Nell, the director of sports marketing. And Spencer, what a phenomenal event today and what a field you've got lined up here. Hey, Michelle. Yeah, thank you very much. They say all good things happen in three. This is the third year. Um, we're really looking forward to it. We've got a phenomenal field put together. We've got 140 athletes of 22 different nationalities here. We've got Senberi Teferi and Yomif Kajalcha, respectively, in the women's and men's 5K. We've got Ron X Kipruto in the 10K with Agnes Kip Ngetic in the women's 10K. And then in the half marathon, we've got the defending champion Matthew Kameli and Dorcas Kameli in, in, in the women's half marathon. So we really are looking forward to it. You judge an event in the third year, we're here to see how we can go and if we can improve on the first two editions. And you mentioned last year, the first year was all about exploring what's possible. The second year was improving on that. And then the third year is about evolving. How has this year evolved from the other two editions? Like I said, it's, it's bigger and better uh, with 140 athletes, um, which is an improvement of over 15%. And last year we only had 18 different nationalities and now we have 22. So in every aspect of the race, we've, we've looked for improvement, um, a new faster, flatter course, um, which we hope the athletes are going to appreciate and they're going to be able to run faster. And of course, we've not only got a phenomenal field of athletes participating, but we've also got some really special guests that are joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about who is joining us and who we'll be hearing from today? Yeah, we're very happy to have our legends, Haile Gabriel Selassie and Mary Katani, joining us again. And then a very special guest of honor, which is Paris Jebchicho, who's just come back from her third place in London Marathon. So yeah, we're really, really excited about having them join us. And then we've got real special guests as in Kaka, our famous footballer, who's a long Adidas ambassador, and then uh, Garbine Muguruzu, a famous tennis player, as we all know, that's joining us here today as well. And of course, we'll be hearing from all of them over the course of the day, and a few other people we'll be hearing from are our commentators, Kerry Tollefson and Tim Hutchings, and they will be taking us through the day, and we can't wait for everything that this 2023 edition of the Adi Zero Road to Records has in store for us. Yeah, thank you very much.
Well, good morning and a very warm welcome from me, Tim Hutchings, and beside me, Carrie Tollefson, for the first of six races at this 2023 edition of the Adazero Road to Records here in Hurtigenau Rack on the Adidas campus. There is uh, Jasmine Jepleting, the 27-year-old who has a personal best for the half marathon of 66.57. That was in Prague last year. She's the second fastest in the field. She's very useful over 10K as well. There is uh, Dorcas Kimeli, the 25-year-old, her compatriots. She's a Kenyan as well. 67.10 in Barcelona back in 2020. Her brother uh, Bernard will be racing later on today. He's a great runner. Kimeli, very much amongst the favourites. She's in wonderful form too, recently winning the Lille 10K. And this a field of 15 starters. There are no pacemakers, relatively small fields. Just about to uh, get underway here. They will be followed by the men's half marathon, then the women's and men's 10K races respectively. And... Uh, then the women's and men's 5K races. They are due to get underway on the hour. And racing has started indeed at this 2023 edition of Adizero Road to Records. The early pace, of course, important to get right to uh, set up the athletes who will go the full distance. And uh, while there are no pacemakers in this one, the course has been adjusted from last year, indeed the last two years, where a, a much longer circuit was being used, a two and a half kilometer circuit around this Adidas campus with a, a significant hill in it. 16 laps that they've got here with uh, a 170 meters run into the finish. And Kerry, conditions just about perfect. We had a lot of rain here in southern Germany, in Herzogenaurak, especially yesterday. In the morning, it poured down, didn't it? But this is what was predicted. Good weather, very little wind. It is perfect out there right now. These athletes saw that the, the street could be a little bit slick. It's just perfect out there today, Tim. You know, the weather yesterday made the, the streets a little bit slick, and today it's all dry, barely any wind. Look at the trees, they're just perfect. And I think the athletes coming from all over the world are so excited to hear that gun go off and to get started. Well, the target times in this women's half marathon is 66.30. That means 3.09 per, per kilometer. And because it's not a, uh, a perfect distance, the circuit, it, this new circuit, by the way, let me just tell you, is, is uh, 1,308 meters round. So the kilometer splits are kind of complicated. We might not bring, be able to bring you every exact kilometer split, but we should be able to bring you the 5K splits, we're hoping. So 3.09 per kilometer. The world record, well, I think we can discount that. That's an astonishing, almost superhuman, science fictional 6252 <laughs> by Let's Let Us End Bet Guida. That was in Valencia back in uh, October 2021. Uh, but if they can get down towards 66 minutes here today in this very small, high caliber field, that would be mighty impressive. Yeah, as we're watching Emily Durgan from the States lead here. She was so excited. She is a new professional athlete for Adidas. She was here and they did a photo shoot yesterday. She said she hopes her picture is all over the wall as all the other legends here. She was so thrilled to be all the way over here in Germany for the first time racing here and she's leading this pack. You know, Emily is just coming off of a phenomenal year. She does have one of the faster half marathon times in the field right now. She is a sub 108, so she her PB is 107.54, so not surprising to see her up in front here. But you know what, Kerry? I mean, a lot of people overlook the fact that the USA is the world's third strongest distance power behind Ethiopia and Kenya, and you can pick which of those is the strongest. You can debate that all day. The USA is the world's third biggest uh, distance running power. There's no doubt about that. And athletes like Emily Durgan, a 67.54 yeah. half marathon runner, have never pulled on a USA vest. She's never run for the USA. And this is a problem for a lot of these top Kenyans and Ethiopians. They can be in the top 10 in the world and they never get to pull on their national vest. It's yeah. an astonishing fact that it's so hard for them to break into their teams. What it does mean, though, is they go to the World Health Marathon Championships or major championships running 5,000 or 10,000 in an Ethiopian vest or in a Kenyan vest there's a good chance they'll get a medal just by having made their For national sure. team. Yeah, there's so many people to pick from, choose from. But, you know, one of the things is, you know, Emily Durgan came all the way over here to run against some of the best in the world. I mean, we are here seeing some of the best in the world, and she wants to put those those national vests on she wants to wear the usa colors and for her to be able to compete against the likes of everyone around her today that's the next step 
Well, that first kilometre, 327, and uh, you will remember I said that they are looking to run 309, so if that is accurate, wow, that is really slow. They need to get their skates on now. So looking at a projected finish time of 112, so yeah, just, you know, sort of working into it, and, and I, I am a little bit surprised, and I see Emily Durgan up front there smiling at the sideline, somebody cheering for her. But, you know, I'm surprised to see nobody really right up on her shoulder trying to help her with that pace right now. Yeah, they're going to ease into this, I guess, once they've uh, negotiated the first circuit. Maybe they'll get more of a feel for it. If that is accurate, 327, that's desperately slow. We were looking for 309 or something around that sort of mark. But uh, Durgan beginning to actually break away from the pack here a little bit, which is a surprise to me, I have to say. Well, and I think a lot of the ladies might not be looking around or looking at the other times of the athletes coming in. But, you know, Emily Durgan is an athlete that has had a phenomenal last couple of years, years, and she's really working her way into it. But again, if she's be able to run 108, that's pretty awesome. So this small pack, relatively small pack in this uh, women's half marathon. have been running now for just five and a half minutes. The first kilometer, 327, very much on the slow side. We're looking for around 309, 310 per kilometer to get down towards 66 and a half, 67 minutes. I'm sure it will pick up. The uh, five of these athletes, by the way, are wearing uh, special wristbands or small watches. And... Uh, we just wearing, and, and they are wearing uh, markers on their feet or little uh, sensors on their feet that uh, give us telemetrics. And we'll be talking to you about that during the race. We'll be able to tell you their, their stride length, their, their, stride, their cadence. It is astonishing the amount of information we'll be able to give you about those athletes wearing the uh, equipment necessary. And that information is being handled by the Adidas Innovation uh, Hub or, sense, or Center that is uh, here on the campus. We'll be... Uh, Going down there and having a look what's going on later on. But there is a lot more information coming back at us from this race and the rest of them happening today for the first time ever because of the, uh, uh, the sensory equipment that the athletes are wearing. Well, Emily Durgan, 28 years old. Is she a bit of a late bloomer, I guess you could say, Kerry? You know, she, she's run a personal best in, in January last year in Houston, that 67.54 half marathon. But it it's almost contradicts the way that a lot of the Africans come through when they're 17, 18, 19, they're breaking through to world class. Well, yeah, I mean, she she went through the NCAA system and obviously she she's had to deal with COVID. So she signed professionally in 2018 and then just getting started and then obviously the world shut down, right? So, yeah, you look at some of her... her her results and there's a little lull there but she did try to do the the marathon oh, yeah. this year she, she, she lined up to run the new york city marathon it didn't go her way but she bounced back and ran this 107.54 in houston in january and also running the um the world championship qualifier our cross-country world championship qualifier in the states did qualify for world cross but ended up not being able to go so you know she's having a phenomenal last couple years as i said but yeah taking her time getting into it well, you can see that QR code to the left of the screen. If you uh, get that on your phones, you can uh, dig into a whole mass of information about the athletes that are wearing the, uh, the equipment that picks up the telemetrics. Of course, each of the athletes has got their uh, timing chip behind their, their race bib. And there is one athlete already beginning to drop off the back of the pace. That looks like Maria Fernanda Montoya. She is uh, struggling already on what is a slow pace. The first kilometer, 3.27. The second kilometer came up at 3.23, so 6.50 for 2K. They're starting to wind it up a little bit. You could see that on one of the side shots that they were starting to stride out a little bit. You know, they're still on that projected finish of 1.12, a time that all of these ladies have run before. But yes, you know, you mentioned some of these athletes, 21 nations are represented today. It's a pretty phenomenal thing. 22. There 22? was a late addition Ooh, yesterday. 22 nations. Me. 136 athletes from 22 nations. 
chasing personal bests today, trying to break records and build legacies. Quite frankly, there we are, nearly nine minutes into the race. And these athletes negotiating a short, sharp circuit, as I said, 1,308 metres. The uh, full circuit, Durgan being uh, gradually sucked in by the, the pack now. She was building a bit of a lead a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love about Emily Durgan's story is her coach, when she was training back early in her time after college, told her to, that he really thought she could be a professional athlete. She was not a professional athlete when she started training for this type of career. She was a nanny. She wasn't making any money, but she really stuck her nose at it, and she stayed with it for a year and a half, and then she got signed with Adidas. So it's pretty, pretty fun to hear those stories, how you really go for it, even if you're not making a living at it. Well, not exactly the rags to riches story of fairy tales, right. but uh, it's still pretty special. These athletes beginning to uh, pick it up now. I think you could see one or two coaches and managers yelling at them just now saying, come on, ladies. <laughs> Let's move. Let's move, because that first 10 minutes or so has been very, very cautious indeed. I haven't seen the 3K split come up yet, but they are moving, well, way, way slower than was expected. I never enjoyed racing early in the mornings, I must admit. Training early in the mornings, never mind about <laughs> racing early in the mornings. You know, most of us get up in the mornings and when you're lying down at night, so your, your joints relax because there's no downward pressure on them, no gravity on them, and you stretch out a little bit. So you're, whatever, a few millimeters longer when you get up in the mornings. And that's why you're a bit stiffer in the mornings, as I understand it, around your joints. Maybe when you're older. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> What are you trying to say? 3.30 for that third kilometer. No. Kerry, I shall be speaking to you later on. Well, you know, as these athletes have been finished. up. Some of them have maybe even possibly done a little bit of a shakeout coming outside early in the morning. You know, I didn't see anyone down at breakfast. They were clearly doing their thing. But look at this new section here. Yep, this is about 90 meters of specially laid track. They uh, had to get a permission added us from the local authority because that is just outside the boundary of the Adidas campus. So they had to construct that little strip of road with uh, artificial grass on it and back onto the road inside the campus now. So yeah, special permission from Herzogenaurat, uh, the local big village or small town, however you want to look at it. Beautiful little place, like a fairy tale place. Almost We're about six. an hour and a half from, Mun out from Munich. Almost 16 athletes in this field right now, or in this front pack, excuse me. Did you count 16? I had 15 down as the number of starters. Really? Well, I'm just eyeballing it quick, but two, four, six. You can count from that shot? You know, Carrie, I can do a lot special. of things, Tim. I've heard of multitasking, but... Well, there you can see at the bottom of the screen the picture from above. We have a drone in the sky that will be getting us great images throughout the uh, morning. Like 14 athletes, if I can count correctly. But Nesvin Jep, Jeplitting right in front. They're fifth here last year in the half marathon in 2022. She ran 108 here last year. You know, one of the top returners, and it is a it's a crucial thing that she knows this course. She knows what she's getting herself into. And she's really been the one to push this pace now in the fourth kilometer that we're in. Dorcas Camelli on her left shoulder there in the shorter hair. She's a 107.10 athlete. She did that back in 2020 in Barcelona. There's a really good idea, by the way, of the uh, course map. It's an anti -clock It's a clockwise circuit. They run in a clockwise direction. And then at the end of each race, of course, take that little right hand jinking towards the center of the big uh, the arena the main adidas building which is uh, right beside the finish line and they are picking it up now yes that's been the uh, 27 year old fifth last year in this race and uh, an athlete who well is very much a road specialist she, her track times are relatively poor of course uh, there's a generation of these east africans who come through without really touching the track. They go straight to the roads. They know that's where that uh, fame and fortune can be found. Some of them have the traditional route carry. They have the track pedigree. Yeah. Plenty of them don't show it. Yeah, it's really changed, I would say, since I was racing. And I haven't, I haven't been racing in 10 years. But, you know, it used to be that traditional go to the track. Then
on up to the marathon on the road. So it's definitely changing our sport is. But, you know, one of the athletes that we do want to keep an eye on, she's right behind there, behind Dorcas in the lead here. She's in about fourth position back behind Dorcas there is Deradita Yami. She is one athlete that is so good over the, ha the marathon distance. She just ran in 2023, 221 back in February, but she clearly is the one to watch. She's a 108 half marathoner, but I think that her 221 clearly shows her she can go faster. Yeah, she's a very, very tough customer, Deradita. I always like to see it, the uh, these distance runners with cross country pedigree as well. And Dita was second in the world cross country in Aarhus, as you, uh, as you said. Her fourth marathon, that was when she uh, ran that 2.21 to win Dubai back on the 12th of February this year, just a few weeks ago. That fourth kilometre, 3.13, Carrie. So uh, they're still not really hitting their straps. Predicted t winning time now is 70 minutes. I think Paris is a person to keep in her mind, never give up. She's very disciplined, and she also has the talent. She's also a role model to uh, young upcoming athletes. So they've just negotiated that little outer strip of a specially built track. And back onto the Adidas campus, there's the uh, arena building. So they need to increase their cadence. The uh, information we're getting, the telemetrics information, from the athletes that are wearing the uh, equipment, telling us they need to increase their cadence, they pick it up, and they look to have done just that. I think that's uh, Medina Kadir Mohamed, the Ethiopian 31-year-old, who has pushed to the front and is beginning to wrestle some respectability into the pace of this race. But they've been going 15 minutes now, nearly 16 minutes, and it just has been, well, by the standard of these athletes and their ability, desperately slow. But around 90 to 95 strides per uh, minute is uh, three minutes per kilometer. Is three minutes per kilometer. The heart rate for Medina, well, it's around 175 to 185 at the moment, and uh, that has increased a little bit as she accelerates. Well, she did not. She hasn't raced here in 2023, but she did have two new PBs last year in both the 10K and the half marathon in 2022. So clearly, she's on that momentum of having a great day, and she she did not like that pace. You could see that she really wanted to get going and get out got out of that pack. Started to break it up. Well, good to see Medina testing these athletes now and beginning to drag them out at a quicker pace. Medina Mohammed hasn't raced this year. She comes into this very fresh. Some athletes have had a couple of half marathons already. Some of them are a marathon uh, back in uh, back in the, earlier in the year. Medina won the Dubai uh, Dubai 10K back on the 13th of November, and indeed there is. Uh, I was checking her information last night and actually i'm not sure that she hasn't converted to uae citizenship uh -huh. recently medina kadir mohammed who leads at the moment and uh dira deba dira in second place and we're beginning to see carrie single file and that is a real indication that somebody has put in a significant acceleration well we went through 5k in 1628 but listen to this, Tim. The first kilometer, 327. Then they moved to 323. Then they dropped it down to 316 to 313. And that last kilometer, 309. So now they are on 109 pace, but they are really revving it up. Well, they are. But you know what? They've lost an awful lot of time. I mean, they've lost, you know, 327, 330 the third kilometer. That yeah. is, I don't know what was going on. I don't know why. It was almost like they needed a, a rocket put behind them. And well, no pacers in this race, right? So this was a tough one for them to figure out who was going to take the lead and to take charge. Now, that's 109 there to the bottom right of the screen. That's Nesvin yes. Jepperting who's struggling here. And that is a real surprise. She was fifth last year. She's the second quickest in the field if you're looking at their personal bests. 
with the 66-57. Jeppeting just hasn't reacted to this surge. And we knew coming in, she was fifth in Prague here just a little bit ago with 70.04 this year in 2023. So 70.04 is clearly not anywhere close to her 66-minute PB. So she's not quite the athlete she was. Is she trying to hang on? It looks like she's trying to regroup. Well, the pack is regrouped now. There's no single file now. So that initial surge put in by Medina Mohammed is what has uh, racked up the tempo. Something far more respectable. There she is, the taller figure to the left as we look at them at the front rank. Dara Dibda right in the center there. And then... Uh, yeah, she is trying to desperately get back to them, Jet Plitzing. Others beginning to peel off the back, though. I'm a little surprised to see some of these athletes peeling off the back already. Well, isn't it so interesting? This is my favorite part about racing, the, the jostling and the, the, you know, pressing the pedal down and easing off and pressing it down and easing off, the chatter that happens between the, the athletes. That's what it's all about. No, that's exactly right. So kilometer six, 308, that's the quickest yet. So that certainly has picked up. That's uh, good to see. And they will start clawing back some of that time they lost in those very, very slow first three kilometers. The fourth kilometer began to become respectable. 3.13, that is way, way down there under 70 minute tempo. Nixty is there as well. Nixty have to test five. She's back in the pack. The Ethiopians and the Kenyans as well do quite often talk to each other during these races, yeah. don't they? Sort of negotiating how they should progress, who's going to take it on. Well, a lot of them train together, and even if they don't, if they're from the same country, you know, there is there's something about that. They want that, that title of having the best from their country. And, you know, we're watching as the athletes start here on the left. Not real aggressive off the line. We saw that for the first few kilometers. There wasn't a real real you know pressure to get out front and now we're starting to see medina really try to get this race going dara there right on her shoulder and dorcas camelli i think the one that we're all watching i mean she ran here last year in the 10k she was fifth excuse me in 2021 but she has that fast pb of 107 10 and i think a lot of athletes are keeping their eye on her she's a great racer very savvy and right now she's in great position just kind of letting everyone else do the work to the right of the group on the front there, that is uh, Ainadis Berle, 23-year-old Ethiopian. She has a best of 68-18, 108-18, and she's already run two half marathons this year. She uh, was second in Dakar back in the uh, middle of January in 70 minutes, and then about a minute quicker when she was third in Madrid in late March. Looking uh, strong, quite happy to be at the front at what is a definitely a significantly increased tempo. No wind about, by the way, so not much disadvantage to being in front. I always like to be at the front of races if I possibly could carry. I did too. I liked uh, being in control a well, little bit. Yeah, but it's, it's like you're striding out freely and not worrying about mm -hmm. people's heels and, and clashing into people just in front of you. I don't like, I never really like bodies around me. I mean, in track racing, you kind of have to get used to it, but road racing and cross country and things, it's nice just to be able to stride out. With I think so too, especially when there are some changing of paces and things like that. You want to stay clear of people. You know, we saw that just at the Boston Marathon a couple weeks ago in the final stages. We saw um, one of the, Yeshina, who was fourth overall, was second in 2022. She was clipped and fell down, got back up. But I mean, in that big of a race in the marathon, you have all the road. I know, oh don't. You know, don't. it's almost nice to be up front out of trouble. But in, you know what, your nerves are jangling even during the race as well. And people stay closer to each other, other than is necessary. 310 for that seventh kilometer, by the way. So that is great. They really, they're averaging 309 these last three kilometers. That is the tempo they wanted from the start. 309, 308, 310, these last three kilometers. They are motoring now. That is 66, 30 tempo. If they can maintain this, then we are heading for something a long, long way under uh, 60, 68, 69 minutes. Well, you mentioned it. Ayira Tashome is quite young, you know, for her to be already doing so well at the half marathon distance. It's fun to see these younger athletes tackle the distance, and we're seeing that time and time again, as you said. 
the corners here have been made a little bit gentler. They've adjusted uh, the way the, the barriers and the bales of hay are laid out just to make these corners gentle sweeps. So there's minimal deceleration for these athletes. And by the way, uh, the uh, amount of uh, climb being used here is much, much reduced. Last year, it was uh, quite a few meters up the side of the hill. That hotel in the background you can see in that shot is uh, what they went around this year. That's where they're staying, by the way. So it's all, it's all of us. But this year, they're running this side of the hotel in a much smaller loop. And the uh, climb, the total climb, is just four meters up and four meters down on each lap, which is not much at all. In what is almost one English mile, the circuit, 1.3 kilometers. Well, the athletes have had such a fun time here at the headquarters here of Adidas. I mean, they're they're here with all of their competitors, obviously, but you can see the camaraderie that they have at the at the hotel and over at the different buildings on the Adidas campus here. You know, they're learning about how to use social media. They're learning about fueling and hydration, but they're also learning about the new technology that Adidas can provide, especially looking at these shoes. I mean we've talked about the shoe technology it has totally changed the sport and even though these athletes have to come and put in a really big work day and run fast they're also learning about all the different ways to to elevate their game as well individually on social media and on the roads absolutely right now i'm loving the effort being put in here by natis burley at the front she is churning along here she really has wrapped it up and look at this they're stretching now that is not a comfortable circular little pack anymore. It's beginning to stretch out now. Not single file, but maybe two by two. And they are moving. That has been a, there's been a slight downhill section, I think, too, which helps the uh, picking up of tempo. But they are really shifting. I'll tell you what, I'll bet you, they're in the eighth kilometer now. I'll bet you this eighth kilometer is a quickie. I'll bet you it's a fast one. Quickest so far is 308. That was the sixth kilometer. Well, Tim, you said it. Is This is a little bit of a downhill, but, you know, on such a flat course, you do like to have a little bit of up and down. It just gives you a little bit of a change in that stride. No, absolutely right. So, I notice Burley doing the aggressive running at the moment. 3.11 that eighth kilometre. Maybe the damage has been done in the last five or six hundred meters of it but that is still great still operating at around 309 310 per kilometer tempo as we approach the mid-race section eight kilometers done five english miles if you like that particular currency So, the athletes here producing performances that are months in the making. This is not something that you just get out of bed and do without years, months and years of preparation. And they have been shifting for the last uh, four kilometers on a much accelerated, in fact, the last five kilometers, a much accelerated tempo. If you've joined us in the last few minutes, first 3K here in this first race of sixth in this Adi Zero Road to Records edition of 2023, first 3k was pretty slow and then they uh, began to really turn it on and they are shifting and they're now on schedule to run something around 68 minutes just outside 68 minutes the arena building of adidas one of the uh, great heartbeat centers of the uh, this famous brand the last five in fact on the front of the building is a great statement in huge letters about a meter high it says through sport we have the power to change lives and nothing more true could be said than for these east african athletes most of whom who come from incredibly humble background carrie i mean it sounds sometimes like a cliche they come from incredibly humble backgrounds farming communities a lot of them out in the fields as kids working with the animals and the crops and they can become multi-millionaires through the sport. I mean, changing lives dramatically, changing whole communities in exactly. the case of many of them. That's what I think I love. The athletes that I know that have done so well, they go back 
to their country. And not only do they have a better life, but they give a better life to so many people around them. Well, this race currently being dominated by the Ethiopians, it would seem, at the front end. To the right of picture there, Dorcas Kimeli, the 25-year-old, who is in wonderful form. That uh, win in the Lille 10K about five weeks ago in France, 30-48. Anything under 31 minutes is mighty quick. She is in great shape, and she will be enjoying this. And this is, what, eight athletes now in this pack who have broken away. And you could throw a big blanket over them, Carrie, couldn't you? I know that's another commentary cliche, but you literally, yeah. you could. They're very tightly bunched, a little worryingly tight. And everybody looks good. I mean, you can see there's not, there's really, nobody is grimacing right now. Everybody's focused. You can see that all their form looks good. And there are some big crowds out today. Well, of course, there is a, uh, a public race that will conclude the day. The public race over 5K is at 13, 15, 115. About 1,200 local residents taking part in that one. And the other thing too is when you're on a circuit like this quite often, where you're running without spectators for most of it, and then you run through a section where there's noise and music and spectators cheering, you get that, that sort of burst of yes. adrenaline and you, you almost involuntarily accelerate very often. And that will happen a lot here because they have 16 laps that they're going to run of this course for the half marathon. So anytime they go by those loud sections, they're going to get a boost. And that's kind of nice to have, actually. I mean, it's like a little bit of a surge. You get excited, you get going, and then you settle back in. So the ninth kilometer was the 314. The uh, last few Ks have gone 308, 310, 311, 314. So they're right down there in that sort of zone where they need to be of 309 per kilometer. That was the pace that we wanted to get them down to 6630, their targets at the beginning of the day. Now, I, I think it'll still be a very, very tough call to get them down towards that sort of time at the finish after those first three kilometers were desperately slow. But they're approaching 10K, and uh, that will be significant. We'll see what their 10K split is, and we'll have a much clearer idea then of what they uh, might be able to manage. Deep in concentration, these athletes. Good prize money as well for the uh, first three in each of these uh, six races. Just to remind you, if you've joined us in the last few minutes, the, yes, this women's half marathon began at 7 a.m., what's uh, about 30 minutes ago, and uh, at 8.35 is the men's half marathon. Central European time, of course, is at 10 o'clock, the women's 10K, at 10.55, the men's 10K, 11.40, the women's 5K, and the racing concludes the elite racing with uh, the men's 5K at 12.15. We are just winding up the pace as the day goes on, aren't we? We are indeed. Yeah, it gets faster and faster, and there's a uh, real chances of a uh, world record of that men's 5K Ooh. to conclude the day. Coming up to 10K now, they're about uh, 20 yards from 10K, 20 meters from 10K, and that split will come through any second. Well, Inetis Tashome, the one that's been in the lead the entire time, she's young, 23 years old. She has run already two half marathons in 2023 and podium both times. She's been second in 1.10.34 in Yaka, and then she was third in Madrid just in March. And that was a 109.02. That's her season best of the year, and she right now is running at a pace that's faster than that. So we can give you that 10-kilometer time. That, uh 10th kilometer was a 3.17 and the 10k time well not quite as quick unofficially 32.27 we'll be able to give you that official split I think very shortly as they negotiate this uh, clockwise circuit again and again 16 laps remember they've got to do 16 laps and 170 meters so it looks like 3.17 for that last k Again, the projected finish, 108.27. Yeah, 68.27. It's uh, They'll gradually, I think, head down towards sub-28 second territory.
So Medina Mah Muhammad really kind of pushing and making a little bit of a surge here as she hit that 10K mark. You know, Tim, a lot of people will get to 10K, and that's kind of that that switch that they have, right? I mean, that's really, you know, in the 1500 or the 5K, there's those la final laps. But in the half marathon, a lot of people mentally get to 10K, and then that's really where the race strategy or the race tactics begin. No, absolutely right. I think once you're past halfway, it's almost like those big training sessions. Now, if you were doing a training session of, say, 2400s, which I used to do uh, oh, quite a lot, yes. you know, you were a 1500 Can you meter imagine? runner, so you wouldn't know that stuff. I but did those, it, 24 by 400. Oh, God, I'm glad to hear it. I want to see proof. <laughs> um, no, but if you do those big, big track sessions where you're doing repetitions, maybe 20 or 24 times one lap of the track with, with one minute recovery, when you get through past halfway, I'd always say, right, it's downhill from yes, here on. So me you, too. Get, you get through the 12th one of 24, you're on 13 or 14, it's downhill. Yeah, you know, you're we're on in the, the other side of now. the hill, yeah. yes. Otherwise, you're looking up at the peak of the mountain. Yeah, and, but, and, uh, the, and the mentality that we need as runners and these athletes are right now. I mean, you know, you practice that, you visualize, you think of each kilometer or each mile that you're going through. And, and it really is such an important part of our racing plan and training plan to be able to train your brain in order to handle the last part of the race. No, absolutely right. They are moving now though. And Chinalu, that the smallest of them. She's a tiny little character, but she's moving well. And Chinalu, Desi Genanit to the right of picture there, at the, towards the back of the group. She's just 20 years old, but she is quick. She's a 68-53 athlete, and at the moment, she's heading for a, a big personal best to improve it. If they stay on this sort of tempo, improve her personal best by about 30 seconds. And at 20, of course, you are going to improve. You're, you're, you're going to take these great chunks out of your personal best at various distances. It's an exciting point of your life. When you're 18 to 22, 23, it's a really exciting period because you just expect improvements because of your age changing. After 23, 24, you have to work at it more. Ooh. That 11th kilometer, 308 carry, that's good. That's the equal fastest yes. K of the race. Yeah, 6K they went through in 308. Now in 11K, they're in 308. You know, again, we're looking at our splits. They got through 5K and they dropped it down. Then they get through 10K and they drop it down. It's a mentality thing when you're out there and you see these big markers getting through 5K and 10K. That's something that we can see, obviously, physically, but also I think if we were to know what's going on in their minds, it's a just they're resetting the game. Every time they get through a 5K, they reset and they get going again. They attack it. Now, that group has whittled down. We're down to seven. One athlete has dropped away. I'm trying to identify who it was that has eased back. Well, Deradita finding herself back up in the lead. Not surprising. I mean, she's a veteran. She knows how to run very well. She's married to one of the greats, Tamarit Tola, who won the bronze in the 10K in the Rio Olympic Games. He's also a 204 marathoner, so you know he's got some great advice, but she clearly doesn't necessarily need it. She knows how to run herself. Imagine the breakfast. Pack, I know, right? You know, I love you know, it. What are you, you going to talk about but running? Oh, man. Elite there might running. be a rule in the house. No talking about running. Possibly, possibly, yeah. but uh, you sort of, as soon as you lose concentration, you get back onto the subject. But you know what I really do like about her is that she's run so well already this year. We know she's in great fitness. The other thing, though, is she tired. She just ran that Dubai Marathon in February, and that is not that long ago. But we're seeing time and time again now with the new technology that athletes are not only able to train harder with the shoes, but they're able to race more throughout the year. No, absolutely right. And I, I think, you know, she's hand managed her career really well, Deridina, the athlete leading at the moment, the 26-year-old Ethiopian. She's handled her career well with the right discipline. And in fact, uh, she's very, very consistent. A win in Dubai was her fourth marathon. And her four marathons have gone 221, 222, 222, 221. Wow. I mean, super consistent. That is That suggests so much. There's so much about the discipline and the 
almost monastic lifestyle you have to lead yeah. to maintain that that high, high plateau of performance. But what I like about her is she's done the track. She's done cross country. She's done the roads. Like, you know, it, it's different and not everyone takes the same route, but she's clearly very strong. She was on the gold medal team in the 2019 World Cross Country Championships where they ran the relay at the World Champs. And, you know, she I love that she can run on the grass, but also transition to the road and still show that she's got that strength and that power to come off the road. I'm just looking at this pack. It's dominated by the Ethiopians. The uh, 12 kilometer of 312. So they slowed a little bit there after the 308 in the uh, 11th kilometer. But they are still heading now for a time. The projected finish time has come down. It's 68.11. That is uh, the uh, information we've been given from the the data being picked up on the timing mats and the, the, the kilometer points indicates that they are knocking on the door of sub 68 minute tempo at the moment. And after the first three kilometers being so slow, remember they were 327, 323 and 330, yeah. then that is uh, that suggests fabulous picking up a pace. The work at the front being shared too over the last few minutes. Sheer defiance. Back in 2012, I told my doctor I wanted to run. He laughed. That day, I bought running shoes. And I've been running for 10 years ever since. Well, we are back racing, and uh, they are past halfway now in this women's half marathon. And Nixty just beginning to open up a bit, a bit of a gap here, maybe. Nixty have to test fight. She's stretching them. She's working hard. They've gone through 12K. The time there, 38.47. And they are on schedule now for something down around 68 minutes, close to 68 minutes. And the uh, aggressive running is continuing. And I always like it, Carrie, when you see different a little pack like this but different people moving to the front and sharing the work sharing the workload and it, it kind of indicates that if there's not any noticeable lapse in pace that there are several of them ready to be aggressive wanting right. to be aggressive and when will that aggression take over and when will we see the big pounce you know the big takeoff and that's what makes it so exciting Nagis Tesve, she really just kind of slowly moved into the lead. She's kept that pressure on. She looks so good though right now. And this was the athlete, one of the athletes that we want to look at. She's still only 23 years old, but she is one of the fastest in the field with that 66-17 PB. She was fifth in the uh, the 5K here last year in 15-12. Uh, Nigsti have to. That, in fact, is her personal best. She doesn't have a great deal of data. She's relatively inexperienced. It was in June last year that she ran that uh, personal best of 68.36. Only one race this year so far, though, and she ran 70 minutes in April. But that doesn't always mean anything, you know, just for her to get out and shake some cobwebs off, you know, just get ready to go in the new year. A lot of times we look at these 
stats and we think they tell the whole story. Well, there's a lot that goes into running a race and sometimes they're pacing or they're just winding it up at certain points of the race. So she only does have that one race from April, but clearly today she looks good and in, within herself. And now here we go, another change. Well, another change, but more importantly, Dorcas Kimeli is dropping off the back. Ooh. One of the pre-race favorites. The uh, Kenyan 25-year-old with a personal best of 67.10, who we know has been in wonderful form in recent weeks with that big win in France in Lille over 10K. That was just five weeks ago. She's not in shot. You can see six bodies. The seventh, Dorcas Kimeli, has just dropped away off this pack, and she's struggling. No doubt about it. She's a very, very consistent athlete, is uh, Dorcas Kimeli. Very tough character. She's been in good form. And that's a, a shock, really. Carrie, they're in the 13th kilometer at the moment. They've got a little way to go. It is a shock, you know, for her to be able to run 30-48 for 10K just last month. I think all of us thought she would have a real big breakthrough today. But when you are running a race like we've seen today, where you start slow and then you have some surges and then you back off and you have surges, some athletes do not like that cat and mouse type of, of pace. They like the more steady and, you know, Dorcas Camelli, the one that we all kind of were keeping our eye on today, is clearly in trouble right now. Very, very tough, too, when you start redlining and you have to ease you know, back a bit and the pack pulls away from you like that. Then uh, you're working on your own. And you, what is she about? She's only about 20 meters back. There she is, right of picture. She's working really hard to try and get back to them, is Dorcas Camelli. 11th in the World Half Marathon Championships back in 2020 in Poland. And 67.55 there. She's run 45 seconds quicker. But that's a tough one for her. That and is a tough spot, isn't it, Tim? To be back behind, what, six, seven athletes up front here. Six athletes to be exact, and she's right there. You know, this is where she really needs to attack and get back on that pack if she can. There's still plenty of racing left, and if she doesn't get back on there, I think this might be the day for her. Well, it is very tough, yes. And in fact, all six of this pack that have broken away are Ethiopian. The best of the Kenyans, Dorcas Kimeli, cannot live with them at the moment the uh, acceleration through the middle of the race there was a 309 a 308 a 310 and then another 308 in the 11th kilometer has uh, hit them pretty hard and if you're not ready for it then you are you're going to suffer you're going to have to hang on as long as you can and then he's back well, we've seen Toshome here, one of the younger athletes, really kind of being excited to get in the lead. She's not afraid to go up there and to challenge the pace. We've seen her, her agent on the side kind of waving his hand to up the pace. Let's get going here. They are dropping one of the best athletes in the field, and this is the time to really put it away if they think they can beat Dorcas Camelli. No, I think that's exactly right. Although I don't suppose many of them will be focusing upon any one athlete in the pack. You're just It's a patience game. You just have to try and keep grinding away and see those bodies drop away off the back of the pack. It is, it is a test of patience, isn't it? You know, and determination. You've got to keep your foot down on the, on the pedal. Yeah. Really keep pushing and pushing and, and tell yourself, convince yourself you're hurting those guys behind you. Yeah, even though it's a beautiful day, it's cool, there's not a lot of wind, there's still some humidity in the air. I mean, you can see it when we go on air, Tim. My hair is completely flat. But, you know, you can feel that. And so these athletes have to, they have to think about that with their body as well. Like their body temperature is rising, even though it is cooler. And there is some fueling out on the course. I haven't seen any athletes take any yet, but there is fueling. And so, yeah, this is a long race and lots of things can happen physiologically out there. Well, they're on schedule at 14K. They were predicted finish time was 68.10, so it's gradually coming down. I must admit, Carrie, I was, I was going to say just then, I thought your hair was <laughs> usually, usually pretty flat, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that Let's, later. Hey, we don't have to talk about yours. You, talk, you mentioned age <laughs> earlier. I just thought I'd get you back. <laughs> well, I, again, now it looks as if they've kind of, you know, bunched back in and settled back in a little bit. Yeah, and maybe Dorcas Kimeli can regain contact with them. Many people's minds will cast back to the London Marathon just last Sunday, mm -hmm. where uh, 
Sifan Hassan got dropped mid-race, had some problems, had to stop and do some stretching, and then uh, came back and won the race famously with that sprint down the mile in front of Buckingham Palace in the English capital. But then we're looking at the Boston Marathon, which is the week before. Helen O'Beary winning that race, such a great track athlete that we've seen. And then to see Sifan Hassan win the London Marathon with her track pedigree, you clearly see that speed also is now translating to the endurance events. Well, you can join our global virtual race. The uh, QR code came up just now. You can go and find that if you want. And uh, there's the 5K split. She's running really aggressive, aggressively. Well, you could see some chopping at the bit almost. I mean, a lot of athletes are asking, you know, their fellow competitors to back off. You can see their hand drop down or people looking around and maybe some of these athletes are getting a little antsy. They're wanting to put that final move on or, or get ready, get into position, you know, figure out where they are. And for the first time, we are seeing a brand new leader. Yeah, Bertukan hits the front for the first time. And uh, this is a very significant move because she is striding out powerfully. And the others are struggling to go with this and carry with 5K to go. There's still a long way to go. She has really tested them here. Look at the bounce there, the power in that stride, the length of the stride is quite superb. And is straight away, pretty much single file behind her. And Nagisa attacks that move and is right up on her again. Well, Bertrand Wilde Sura of Ethiopia is uh, not on talking terms with her colleagues right now. She's working too hard. But it is impressive. And she doesn't look strained either. No, she looks good. She's been sitting in the back of the pack the entire way. I've noticed her because her kit is just slightly different. So I've been watching her, and she really has had no interest to make any moves until just now. And this move has been big. One of four at the back of the group, that is uh, Anchinalu Genanet, 68-53 athlete who is uh, heading for a personal best if she can stay with this. And in fact, that is one of the athletes, Maria Fernanda Montoya, who's about to be uh, lapped here. So that Bert Dukan, Woldy out there in front. Nageste re in second there. But what I see with Woldy, if we can, if we're looking at her, she's 18 years old. She just ran 32 minutes flat in February for 10K and no half marathon PB. So she does not have a half marathon time. Is this her first time running? It is indeed her debut, yeah. That is great running, and she looks good. Look at her. A little bit of higher uh, arm carriage than the others, but she's young and she looks smooth. I mean, that just might be her, her natural placement. But as you said, she's got quite a bit of power coming off the pavement, and she looks really strong. Yeah, looking up. There was that big surge which has tested the others. I wonder if she's tested herself though, because she has eased back a little bit. There's no doubt about that. But you know, Tim, I don't know if you remember, but when you are in the lead of a major race like this, where you have so many greats around you, and you get to go to the front and you get to dictate what's going on, that is a huge adrenaline burst. And she has to be excited about where she is right now. No, absolutely, and in fact, and we down to five. We have lost one athlete. Dera Dida is still there, right in the center. Dera Dida, the 26-year-old, the winner of the Dubai Marathon. She will have the strength, of course, if she's recovered from that Dubai race. Nigsti, to the right of picture, the Nigsti have to test five, the 23-year-old 
with a best of 68.36. She too on schedule for a big personal best here. So it is down to five. It's gradually been whittling down from eight to seven to six to five. It's a perfect reward for the for the patience game that the athletes who hit the front have to believe in. Do you have what it takes to make it to the finish line? Join our global virtual race now. That uh, QR code, bottom right of your screen. If you key in on that, then you can uh, find out how to take part in our global virtual race. And five more races to come after this women's half marathon, which is building to a wonderful crescendo. It is. It's been building and building and lots of different paces going on. But right now you can see they are in serious race mode here. Look at this. The eyes are focused down. The arms are pumping. The knees are coming up. We are getting ready to see some final stages of this race and a lot of racing. Well, the 16th kilometer was a 3.07. That was the aggressive running we saw Woo. put in by Walde. She's not at the front anymore, though. She's right off the back there, but yeah. she's got to hold on right here. This is that breaking point where when you fall off and you see somebody else making a surge or putting a surge on, that's where you got to regroup and get back on. And she looks like she's doing that right now. Look at her. She's back in that pack. You can see her in the blue top if you're looking at the screen in the bottom part of our screen. This is the youngest one that was the one that kind of broke this race open. I wonder if it was just a bit too aggressive. It's almost a rush of blood to the head. But she is staying in the group. And Anchinalu now moves to the fore. Genane. Anchinalu Desi Genane to give her a full name. Lovely, bouncy, raking stride she's got for a relatively small athlete. In fact, she's probably the smallest by a couple of inches of this uh, group, by some five or six centimeters, maybe more, of this group. But doing the aggressive running now with 55 minutes on the clock. But they are, by the way, still on schedule to run a, down around 68 minutes. It's getting quicker all the time, 68.10 and then 68.04 at 16 kilometers was the predicted time. And surely they'll only wind it up from here, Carrie. Well, I like it, Chenelou. She just is coming off of a new personal best of 67.30 where she run, ran in Milan on March 19th. So she clearly knows how to race right now and she's coming off of the best race of her life over this half marathon distance and look at her you can see i love how she has her eyes down she's not really looking around she looks so focused and this is the first time we've seen her really pushing the pace i think just about everybody in the group has shared the work so far you know this group of five has been whittled down remember that it was originally some 15 or 16 starters down to these five now again and they're all doing their share at their their little bit of work at the front Ooh. now nixty you could see nixty almost you know pushing on her her stomach a little bit maybe having a little bit of a side stitch she doesn't show it in her face but you know just watching every little movement that's what's so interesting like watching now looking in close on their feet seeing how they come off that pavement seeing how they put that power in and come off, but still a group of five and looking great. Well, this is the testing point of the race. They've gone through 17 kilometers now. They've got less than 4K to go, so about uh, 10, maybe 11 minutes of running to come. And uh, the old saying, impossible is nothing. Well, they've got to believe that now because these girls, these ladies, these women, these tough runners from East Africa who train, who hone their strengths and abilities, High up in the thin, thin air above Addis Ababa, 8,000 feet plus is where they do their training. They will be tested here very, very severely. And who is going to withstand the test best of all? Dira Dida, perhaps one of the more experienced here, the Dubai Marathon winner, has the strength. Now, I wonder whether Kerry, because of her strength, yes. she is wanting to make that early push from That's a long way out. That's what I was wondering. Her marathoning in her maybe is speaking to her and saying, I need to run the kick out of these athletes. Well, of course, each of these athletes is like the tip of a lance. They represent a team that is behind them, whether it's coaches, masseurs, psychologists, agents, everybody, not to mention the shoe sponsor that helps them uh, get the best equipment available. And these athletes are getting a lot of support and advice, and yelled emotional advice from the sidelines. 
Well, this is a big day. They have everybody from their sponsor looking at them, watching them. And for them to win here not only is great on their running CV in general, but to be here on the Adidas headquarters, that is a huge, huge thing for them as well. Well, the 17th kilometer they've gone through, that was a 3.15, and the 18th kilometer, a 3.16. So I don't know if that's a little bit of fatigue creeping in, or if it's them gathering themselves for the final surge. Remember, 16 laps plus 170 meters to go. We're now on 58 minutes, so we've got less than 10 minutes of running to come because we are looking for a winning time. I suspect it'll be just inside 68 minutes with the surge over the final uh, few hundred meters. At 18K, 58.08, and the predicted time is 68.08. Well, Derrida is quite the athlete herself. She's run 14.42 on the track, also running under 31 minutes for a 10K. She's only got a PB in the half marathon of 68.06, but you know clearly when you can run the marathon at 221, I think that that shows that you have some faster halves. Today we're not gonna see it, they didn't start fast enough, but she looks like she's got that strength and speed to really be quite a great half marathoner as well. Two laps to go then, in this first race of six, on this morning of racing at the third edition of the Adazero Road to Records. Uh, elite racing meet, the gathering in this Adidas campus. And Dera Dida imposing herself now. And one or two gaps beginning to appear in this group as the pressure increases. The tempo cranks up, tired legs out there. This is where it becomes just a little bit of matter of mind over matter. Who is that beginning to drop off the back there? Is that uh, Inaris Burley? Yes. It is. Yeah, she wears uh, 103 on her back. And she is doing some damage here as Deridida. And every time they turn a corner, a sharp enough corner, she'll get a little glance out of the corner of Rive, what's going on behind. And it looks like we are down to four. Down to four, it looks like. You know, you could see that, not a big look back, but just a little bit of an eye glance every time you make that turn. And I don't know about you, Tim, but what, every time there is a turn, I feel like a lot of the athletes will lean into it now in these final couple laps that they're on. Well, Dera Dida, just cruising momentarily here. This is the slight uphill section before they turn onto the artificial grass strip this flattens out and then they swing right gradually and head onto the downhill section they're halfway round this penultimate lap watching each other now will it become a cat and mouse game will they slow or will Deridida hit the strongest of them all the marathon runner will she be the one that keeps the pressure on they've got about oh a mile to run an English mile to run maybe a little bit more than that about six minutes of running's come. 19K goes by, another 3.12. And now Nagisti up front again. They're halfway round. Single file then. And it is yet another new leader here. And it's uh, Nigsti who hits the front. Nigsti have to test five. Head and carry, surely for a big personal best. 68 and a half minutes is her lifetime best. That was in June last year. Well, you could see a real change of pace there and she really started to put the hammer in. But I don't know, Berktekan in second looks great. Oh my goodness. Look, Look at this. who we have here. I'll tell you what. It cheers a Saturday morning when you can hug an Olympic champion. Oh, my goodness. Perez Jepchir, cheer, the Olympic champion in Sapporo 2021. Perez, good to see you. You're looking well. Thank you. Coming you... off the London Marathon. Yeah. I guess you've done your 15-mile run this morning. Are we... <laughs> Have you been out yet? No. You're going to later on, though, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear. Got to keep you on your toes. Yeah. Hey, are you enjoying this? Yeah. Wow. Uh, 
Would you wish you were out there though, Perez? Because this is do you. dominance from the Ethiopians. Where's Kenya? Come on. <laughs> Congratulations on everything. Wow. See you what later. <laughs> hey, what a treat. Oh, that's Olympic so cool. champion. She could have brought a sandwich or something. Oh, man. Anyway, one lap to go. One lap to go from the 15 behind them. And then it'll be that sprint over the last few hundred meters. Indeed, this is 16 laps. And, and the Derrida one... back up front again, trying to run the legs out of the youngsters behind her. 170 meters is the run in. Derrida has achieved one more small victory. And Chenalu just easy, had to ease off the back there, Genanek. Although if she can hang on in fourth place, she will run a big personal best. Heading out onto this final lap, we're down to three. And they have been increasing the pressure lap after lap. 19K, the time was 61.20. That was a 3.12, the 19th kilometer. And still she is holding the front there. And I'll tell you what is impressive, Kerry, is the uh, stubborn running from Bertukan I love it. Well day there. Yes, she the looks youngster. Good. She's 18, yes. the athlete in second place. And has not run a half marathon ever before. This is her debut and she has been gritty. There have been times where she's wanted to fall off, but she said, no, I'm gonna go up to the front and see what I can do. And then she'll hang on to the pack. I mean, the two next to her are very veteran and very good athletes. This is a big day. There is a real furrow across the bow, brow of the athlete in second place. She's working so hard here to stay with this long, long surge from Dira Dida. She's been in the front now for about three laps, trying to break this field, trying to use her strength as a marathon runner, even though she's a pretty good track runner. 1442 for 5,000, 30, 51. She's run under 31 minutes for 10,000 on the track. She's trying to use her main strength, her main quality, which is her strength, dear Adida. And so far, it's paid dividends. She's gradually whittled this group down from eight to seven to six to five to four, and now to three. But who's going to have it over this final kilometer? Tight oh. turn there. Nagisi trying to take that turn, getting a little bit of distance there here. Look at Bergatan back on. Well, that 20th kilometer has just clicked by, and it was a 3.05. Fastest the quickest of the, of the race so far. Derdia showing a little bit of grimace on her face. Burkatan getting right up on Nagisti's, uh, her shoulder. But listen, Nagisti is a 23-year-old and she's run 66-17. She knows how to run this race. Fifth year last year in the 5K. So very good over the shorter distances, moving up to that half marathon. But all three still in it. Well, projected winning time at 20 kilometers was 67.58, so they have eased into sub-68 second territory. And now we're almost into track racing territory because there you saw Bertukan try to force herself to the front and Nixty responded, Nixty Tesfai, the 23-year-old up to her game, lengthened her stride, pause on the pace. That's Dira got the speed. She's not finished yet, back in third place. It is single file, one, two, three. 67 minutes on the clock, about a minute to run. Remember, they've done 16 laps and then there's a 170 meter run in as they head for the line now. They've got to get this right. Nixty is not taking any chances. She doesn't want it to be a final sprint. They take that right swing there and into the finishing straight. They run hard here now for about 60 meters, and then there's a left-hand turn. Nixty Tesfai in the lead, but I don't think that the second placer is finished yet. Batukan is still pushing hard. Can she catch Nixty here? Nixty Tesfai, or is it gonna be Batukan? Who's gonna take it? It's gonna be so tight, and Batukan takes it. Batukan Sora Walde takes the win. <laughs> boy, oh boy. For an 18-year-old to be able to time that finishing kick, she got in here to where we could see her in our own eyesight, and she was right there just hunting and hunting until that final 10 meters. 
she made that move to cross the tape in her debut half marathon. Unbelievable determination from her. Found that extra meter. An 18 year old. It is just a production line of astonishing talent that comes out of Ethiopia. They're nearly all based in or around Addis Ababa. They train in big groups under the management of, uh, under the coaching eye of half a dozen fabulous coaches in the Ethiopian capital. And a one, two, three for Ethiopia here in the opening race of the day. Wow, that was an amazing finish. What I loved about her, only 18 years old and she just showed such poise. Running needs nothing. It likes fast times, slow times, but most of all, good times. And we're here with our winner of this women's half marathon and the very first half marathon for your career. What did you make of that race and what a phenomenal finishing sprint? Yeah, I'm a marathon, a half marathon, a sprint, a sprint, sprint, a she says she, she is keeping her the finishing line the why she come from a shorter distance by that case she waiting the last minute the last sprint and by that case she can do it and the whole motto of this event is to break records and of course it's always a record when it's your first race but what mental attitude does it take when you approach a race like this for the first time uh, this is fantastic organization. This organization is very fine. And uh, she, today she is uh, her first half marathon. She says for the next one, she can run better than this one. And she is very happy for now. We're very happy for you and congratulations again. And we'll celebrate you. For this. There is the uh, official result. 67.44, in fact, for uh, Bertkan Wilde Sura. Just 18 years old. Wow, that is some run from her. And her birthday is in about 12 days' time, an early birthday present for her. Tezfai, given the same time, Nixty Tezfai, she did so much of the hard work there, as did Deir Adida, taking third place, 67 47. Well, Haile Gebre Selassie was mentioned earlier. He is one of the uh, legendary guests here. And I'm here with two absolute Adidas running legends. Next to me, Haile Gebrselassie and Mary Kitani. Thank you so much for joining us. Haile, you were here last year. And if you look at how much this event has evolved compared to last year, what are you making of it? Well, it's, uh, it's wonderful, uh, especially, you know, to give an opportunity for the Adidas athletes. And, uh, well, uh, everything what I've seen you know, last year and this year, it's really wonderful. It's a very good uh, organization. It's great, and uh, I hope uh, if the weather is getting better, uh, we can see something very special uh, late uh, uh, the race. Absolutely, and Mary, you're one of those athletes who you take your role as a mentor to other athletes really seriously, and you're really a role model for so many athletes. How important is it for you to be part of an event like this and be part of uh, an event with the whole Adidas family? Uh, well, uh, it's a great day uh, today, and also uh, I'm happy again to be uh, in 
Adidas for the uh, road to records. And it's a privilege to me, and also I thank a whole uh, team of Adidas for the invitation. And I know Kudings uh, uh, will happen today since the weather is perfect for the race, and we hope for the records today for sure. So thank you very much, and uh, I'm really uh, very grateful. Great, and you've touched upon uh, the subject here for fast races. We've got the, the men's half marathon coming up next, and Hila, I think you'll be joining Tim up in the commentary box in a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can look forward to in this men's half marathon that's coming up? Well, uh, our main goal is uh, to run faster. Of course, you know, the name of the race is called it, you know, just a road for, road through for record. <laughs> and, uh, I hope uh, if I will be there, uh, I have to make them, you know, faster and faster. <laughs> we'll see that it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice, and um, uh, we'll see the athletes. And Mary, you've touched upon the athletes that are racing and the great races we've got coming up. Which race are you most looking forward to today? Um, 10K, yeah, uh, because uh, uh, last year I was. Uh, it was first time for me uh, for the, to attend the road to records, and this is the second uh, third edition. So I yeah, have been here for two years for this event of road to records, and I know um, good things will happen today, and we'll be cheering, uh, watching the 5K and the 10K, of course. Yeah. And there is also a public 5K later on. Is there any message that you can maybe send them on their way that they can take on board when they're running later? Well, uh, when you run a 5K, you know, your calculation starts from the starting line. You know, you shouldn't uh, wait until the last uh, part, but you have to move uh, from the beginning. I hope uh, today one of my expectations is going to be the 5K. <laughs> And I think we've got some highlights from your career coming up and so we'll take a little look at the screen on the big screen and thank you both so much and we can't wait to see a little bit more of you later on and hear from you. Thank, thank you, you Hyla and thank you Mary. It's a sprint to the finish after 10,000 meters. Paul Turgot, Hyla Gebrselassie. Turgot still has the advantage. Gebrselassie trying to make one desperate last move. Gebrselassie up on the outside. Das muss es werden. Heile Gebrselassi schafft es. Jetzt ist das Lachen da. Es wird Weltrekord. 2.04.26 Weltrekord durch Heile Gebrselassi. Heile Gebrselassi then, looking to break the two hours four minute barrier. This is the most astonishing marathon performance in history. The line is just yards away. Haile Gebrselassie writes yet another chapter in the most astonishing distance running career in history. We'll see the clock ticking away. She'll now realize that she's heading for something special. She's heading for something great. And now heading towards a world record for the women's only marathon, Mary Katani of Kenya. Mary Katani on New York's best day. She comes to the tape as New York's best for a fourth time. Mary, absolute goosebumps moments there we're seeing from you. What emotion do you get seeing yourself back winning New York four years? Um, well, uh, it's uh, really incredible and um, uh, feeling like I'm just the, uh, the same I was running and also winning the events. And uh, it has been an amazing moment for me, um, even if I retire, but uh, it seems I'm uh, again uh, very active in 
uh, going uh, to races, attending the races, like the way I am today in Addis Zero and uh, Adidas uh, headquarters, watching the uh, live uh, races, and it's really uh, motivating the uh, young generation to uh, follow our step, as you see, uh, Haile and Miha, we are here watching and also uh, cheering the team, and giving them uh, uh, the inspirations to think of um, they can be people who uh, the young upcoming can watch uh, and have fans and also think of they have to be strong and they have to believe in themselves that you can do better. And we'll be hearing lots more from Haile shortly afterwards. So Haile, we'll be getting you to talk about your favorites from your career in a little bit. Send you off in the commentary booth and we thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's true. I'm a, a lucky fellow on this particular Saturday morning at this uh, third edition of the Adidas Zero Road to Records Racing Festival on the Adidas campus in Herzogenaurach in uh, southern Germany. The women's half marathon got underway. At 7 a.m. this morning, they set off at a very, very conservative tempo. The first three kilometers were very slow, but Haile Gebris Lassie is going to be joining me for each of the men's races today. And Carrie Tollison will be up here as my commentary colleague for the each of the women's races. The men's half marathon coming up. Start of that race is about 15 minutes away, but this was the uh, little highlight story of the uh, women's race. Coaches and agents were urging them to run more aggressively in the early kilometers, but they were having none of it. Maybe it was just the early start time. I don't blame them. Seven in the morning, and you're expected to produce world-class racing. Well, that they did, although it took a little while for their engines to get revving. The opening kilometers were way outside the 309, 310 desired tempo. But then mid-race, they began to rack it up. And from then on, the pressure increased lap after lap, 16 laps it was, remember, and kilometer by kilometer until they came to the finish. It was down to three and then down to two. And the sprint to the finish line, won by an 18-year-old Bertukan Walde, setting a new personal best of 66.744. Fabulous running, considering how slow those first three kilometers were. She ran herself almost literally into the ground. But that is the competitive uh, instinct that will carry her, I'm sure, to medals in major championships in years to come. Brilliant, brilliant young run from the youngster to open the day. Well, we haven't came over, and then, and then someone said to me, that's, that's everyone now. But that's not everyone. Right? After each the race, there is a presentation ceremony, of course, for the first three. By the way, the first six home were Ethiopian this morning. Really dominant a performance by the Ethiopian squad in this first race. Well, Dira Dida looks uh, well recovered. The third placer in the race this morning. Dira Dida, her time 67.47. She lost out by three seconds. Maybe as a more accomplished marathon runner, the speed just not in those legs. Maybe it was a little bit of residual fatigue because of that uh, Dubai marathon win back in, uh, in early February. She is a super consistent as a marathon racer. And for Dira Dida, by the way, her best before this morning was 68.06. That was in Houston back in 2017, in January 2017. So this was uh, a personal best for uh, Dira Dida there, to the right of picture. That has been waiting to come for six years and more. Absolutely brilliant. We're going to the awards now. And 
And now the award ceremony of the half marathon in the women's category is ready. Finishing in third place with a time of 67.47 from Ethiopia, Dera Dida. Gitsi Haftu. And the winner of the women's half marathon with a time of 67.44, also from Ethiopia, Berchukan Beldes Sora. Medals and trophies are being presented by Dr. German Hacker, the mayor of Herzogenaurach. Well, the uh, men's half marathon is the next race on the program. A spectacular sprint to end that women's half marathon just now. That men's race is, uh, what, about eight or nine minutes away, the men's half marathon. Well, as the first three celebrate their uh, great racing, I can hand you over to Kerry Tollison now, who is uh, down there Easy. in the uh, finish area. Kerry. I'll compete with you, don't worry. <laughs> Science Lab here with Tom Waller and also Toby Luckfield, both here working at Adidas. You guys, you have some really cool things happening. Tom, what are we looking at and what are we doing down here? Uh, thank you. I uh, know it's really uh, exciting to be able to share with you some of the work that we're up to. I mean, as, as a team, we uh, have a bit of an ambition, which is to unlock the super in all humans. And I don't know if you know, but we have a pretty sophisticated laboratory here where we bring athletes in and put them through their paces quite often. But what we know is that super is hiding in moments like this. So what we're doing today is bringing some of our technology into the field, onto the, onto the feet, onto the bodies of athletes so that we can see real time what's going on. Because we know that such different things happen in a race environment. It just teaches us really what we can learn about all athletes in the future. 
Tom, I loved what you said just there. You're bringing the super yes. out. Talk about that a little bit. So you're obviously we're looking at this data and things, but what do you mean by bringing the super out? Because I want everyone to bring the super <laughs> out of me. Oh yeah, everyone has a super in them for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much information that we can get by bringing you know using sensor technologies to to to, to pull data into into the hands of scientists. Yeah. And what we realize is if we make that data available, people can learn about themselves. They can see what you know, these great athletes are able to do and understand the nuances of you know, what their bodies are doing during a race. And it, it allows us to then take that away and uh, affect some of the products that we create in the future, but also to support um, everyone in their performance pursuits. Well, Toby, we have some some data here on the screen, we're gonna hopefully get to see a lot of it throughout the day. So what are we looking at and what are you, you know, looking at with the athletes So today? maybe let's talk first about the sensor. Oh, yes. You may have seen it on screen, uh, athletes wearing a sensor on, on one foot. It's kind of the size of a two euro coin, super, super light. They're not gonna feel it. Mm -hmm. They have a, have a smartwatch on their hand that kind of works as a transmitter. So we have different variables that kind of will be transmitted. We kind of picked a couple here. I think the, the sensor system is gonna provide a lot more information which we're going to look at, you know, in the next coming weeks. But what we have here, uh, the watch that the athletes are wearing is uh, providing a GPS signal, so you can see on the map on the left-hand side where they are relative on the, on the track. Um, and then through the watch as well, we're going to have the heart rate uh, uh, transmitted, kind of looking at how hard they are working, you know, trying to, to race for the win. Um, and then we're looking from the, from the biomechanical sensor, we look at the pace, so kind of the split time, uh, minute per kilometer, we're looking at the cadence, so the, the, how many steps per minute they're taking, and then as well as the stride length, um, you know, um, and the contact time, yeah. how, how much time they spend on the ground. And the athletes will then take this to their coaches or talk to you guys and ask how they can improve their races time and time again. Yes, I mean, the first and foremost, the idea is to help our athletes perform, help them win races. Mm -hmm. uh, and for us, from the science side, we want to understand the, the human, the superhuman. Uh, in that sense, we want to, you know, we're innovation. We need to build products, and we want to understand those athletes in those key moments to make them better on the on the track as well. Well, how cool will it be when we are watching athletes make moves out there and to see their heart rates maybe go up or to see their cadence increase? I mean, that's going to be really something that nobody really does in the sport of running. Not in the sport of running. Uh, maybe in Formula One, uh, mm -hmm. in sailing. I think there's a lot more information available to the to the viewers. So I think we hope that we can enrich the experience for the for the running community by providing those uh, those metrics. I think obviously for us from a science side, we look a little bit also uh, behind the curtain. Sure. Um, but yeah, that's for sure. Well, the athletes are getting so fast now. We obviously have new technology on our feet. And Adidas is right oh, yeah. there leading the way. But you know, this is another step to making us see faster times across the board again. Yeah, I mean, the, you, as, you, as you see, whenever there's an athlete racing, there's so much that goes on. The, the story of the race that, that, that you are able to help bring to life is, is, is really enriched by our ability to look at that data in the moment. And I mean, this really is, as, as we mentioned, this is a bit of a world first. You know, that ability to get real-time data from the athletes and put that hands into the, uh, put that into the hands of the audience as well as us, you know, yeah. scientists. You know, yeah. we're we're used to getting nerdy about this stuff, but but we're excited to to have that story come to life and have that data start to create meaning for people, you know, wherever they are in the world, um, and get excited about the sport, yep. see themselves in running, and you know, find their super at some point. Yeah, exactly. So. One of the other things that I really think is cool is it's not just for the elite athlete. You know, I used to be fast. I'm getting slower <laughs> as the second goes by now. But I like to look at my data as well. This isn't just for the elites. It's hopefully for all runners of all abilities. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the most important thing, I think as, as an elite athlete, you know, you have have the, 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 the luxury of a coach that helps you to yeah. interpret what's going on. And I think that's, again, what becomes our job, which is how do we start to, to, be, to be the coach for the masses in such a way that data becomes a useful tool to everybody, you know, particularly th those of us that are, um, are maybe seeing our times get a little longer. Maybe we start to understand why. Maybe there's something more <laughs> that we right. can do. Yeah, maybe we can train a little bit more properly or race a little more properly. Or, or, or just buy even better products that help you to you know, move that little bit further and faster along. Well, we appreciate you guys. This is going to be really exciting. We'll be back 
uh, later in the show, later in the day, to see some more numbers. And, and a lot of the athletes, we have about five athletes in each race that yeah. we'll be wearing. Yeah, every the, race. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, thank Tom you. and Toby. Thanks Back so to you, much. Tim. Thanks, Carrie. Yes, uh, the uh, information we'll be getting, hopefully, from five of the athletes in this race will be absolutely fascinating. We'll try and bring you that during the race. There is the lineup for this men's 21.1 kilometer race, the half marathon due off in about two minutes time 19 starters two pacemakers in there there were no pacemakers by the way in that women's half marathon and unfortunately it meant that the athletes had the choice and they opted to make the first three kilometers very very slow there is one of the favorites ronsa conga the 28 year old kenyan winner of the paris half marathon in early march just a few weeks ago in 59 38 he's very much one amongst the favorites he's in great shape he run the prague half marathon too on the 1st of April. There is uh, Bernard Kimeli, the 27-year-old Kenyan, winner of Prague, actually three years ago, back in, uh, in 2019, four years ago in 59.07. He too, in great shape, second last year. And Matthew Kimeli, uh, who has a best of 58.43, I mean, that select group of athletes who's gone under 59 minutes. The defending champion here, Matthew Kimeli, won last year in 59.30. This is a quicker circuit, remember. And they have pacemakers. Pacemakers here. <laughs> Alberto Uncini Manganelli, the general manager of Adidas Running, is the official starter. <laughs> Waiting for the word. He gets the word. The gun goes. And they are underway in this men's half marathon. Remember, 16 laps and 170 meters under. Uh, the race in the women's contest just some 15 minutes or so ago. Undecided until they got into that final turn and the last 170 meters. So this looks straight away like a healthier tempo. The pacemakers there in those, uh, are they blue or lilac vests? I'm not quite sure, but they're uh, easily spotted. They stand out, don't they? Kipsambu Kimakal and Wesley Kimutai. And they have been charged with going out at a good healthy tempo here we're looking for 59 minute pace that is 248 per kilometer as we tried to do throughout the women's race we'll bring you those splits to let you know if they do hit the uh, split times that are being uh, that are, are hoped for 248 per kilometer well obviously that'll bring them home a little bit outside the world record of Jacob Kiplimo that was set in Lisbon a couple of years back 57 31. That was super fast. This course still has one or two little uh, undulations in it. There's about a four meter climb and drop on each lap. And remember, it is 16 laps. So cumulatively, that's quite a big, uh, quite a chunk of climb. But then they do get the benefit of the slight downhill slope each time, which negates most of the disadvantage of the climb. But most athletes prefer a dead flat course. The pacemakers, what's their job? Well, it's to help set down, lay down a nice steady tempo, get the athletes into a nice rhythm at the required speed, the required tape, tempo, and to then uh, enable the athletes to project themselves into the second half of the race and run to those fast times. Abdisa Tola Adera is right up behind them. Tall fella, isn't he? Maybe the tallest in the whole pack, the 22-year-old Ethiopian. He's wearing those black arm sleeves. He's in between the two pacemakers. And he is uh, a 59-54 athlete. Plenty of athletes in this field have broken 60 minutes for the half marathon. In this new age of uh, distance running, distance running speed, 60 minutes is the benchmark of super world class. Anything under 60 minutes for the half marathon, and you are in a very special club and you're actually a desired commodity race directors the world over are wanting elite athletes who can run that fast to uh, grace their routes their circuits vast majority of half marathons of course on the commercial circuit wherever it is on the planet tend to be one lap circuits this this morning just to reiterate the nature of it is 16 laps plus a 170 meter run in around this Adidas campus and they will be flying. And we're waiting for these uh, kilometer splits to start coming through. 
in this uh, men's half marathon. Well, we'll bring you the splits as quickly as we can. Just trying to uh, get the right data up now on our information system here. The first kilometre, well, a 250. A 250 for the first K. Now, uh, that's uh, pretty much spot on. We were looking for 248, but it was very, very close. So 250 for that first kilometer. Now, we uh, saw a highlight Gebra Selassie racing earlier. That's a great race in Sydney 2000 when he won the 10,000 meters by the thickness of a vest uh, over Paul Turgat. The Olympic title there was one of his two Olympic goals at 10,000 meters. Uh, but Hailey has just joined me in the commentary box. So Hailey, I shall press the button. You have a red light, and now we can hear your your voice. Hailey, you must be so excited to be watching these races unfold. Thank you very much, uh, team. You know, it's, a, it's a wonderful, and now you know the the weather is uh, sometimes is okay, sometimes a little bit cold. But aside uh, that, you know, the, everything is uh, it's going well, wonderful, like last year. Now listen, everybody thinks that Africa is hot. But I understand that you guys go up into the hills outside yeah, Addis Ababa yeah. and it can be really cold. You can get frost up there. Yeah, it yeah it's, true. it's true. So you're, you're used to, I mean, it is a cold morning. We need gloves, really. Yeah. But you're used to these cold temperatures. Yes, uh, we do. I mean, uh, if you if you are in, in, in I mean, the place where we're training, uh, sometimes, you know, just two or three degrees centigrade. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this, uh, this weather is normal, you know, over there. So, so when I was a good runner about 100 years ago, we used to think, oh, it's a cold day, there's bad mud, that's good, the, the, the Africans don't like it, the Kenyans <laughs> and Ethiopians don't like it. But you're telling me that the, the Ethiopian lads in this field, and we'll talk about the athletes in a little while, but you're telling me that it's these Ethiopian athletes, for example, they, they're not worried that it's, it's a little bit Yeah, cool. no, they don't, they don't. Um, uh, because, as I told you, you know, just we do have you know, just uh, this kind of weather over there, and uh, it's nice, but if it's uh, not too warm, not too cold, we need to you know just to relax and of course they need you know some time you know before they warming up i mean the the body has to uh, warm up you know but it's it's, it's a really for a half marathon it's a perfect weather i mean i remember highly i was privileged enough to call many of your world marathon victories and world records and in berlin most years on race morning it's pretty cold it's like eight or ten degrees and it, I don't know what it is right now here in Hertzkanara. It feels like about three to me, but it's probably about it's probably about ten degrees. Yeah, it is. It so is. it's 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 almost perfect condition. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, as you said, you know, when you are in Berlin, early, it's a uh, it's cold. Uh, the more you know, just uh, you go I mean, uh, further, you know, the temperature also getting warmer and warmer. By the end of the day, I mean, the rest is it's wonderful and fantastic. And uh, th today also. We, Here's a question. Is it different for track racing? Track racing, you prefer it to be 20, 22, yeah. a nice warm, yeah, 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 yeah. keeps you loose. Yeah, you know, uh, 10 and 5, uh, yeah, you need warmer. I mean, warmer means, you know, just not, um, I mean, 22, I mean, 22, that's perfect. But for, uh, it's, it's, when you switch to the middle distance, also you need, you know, warmer again. And uh, for the marathon and the half marathon, this is a really a wonderful temperature, I can say, and uh, not wonderful, but it's a good temperature. Okay, well, Hailey, let's have a look at the racing now. We'll continue to chat. We've got nearly an hour to talk, so plenty of time. There's um, 19 starters in this race, two pacemakers. I mean, pacemakers are quite controversial. Some people don't like pacemakers in races, others like them. You were always happy to have pacemakers. No, you? no, you, I mean, uh, marathon, half marathon, 10K, I mean, all, all the distance you need, you know, somebody to assist you. I mean, to, to, to be in front. I mean, to control, you know, the pace. Because, you know, most of them who is competing in this race, you know, they are watching each other. But the pace maker, what they're doing, they do the pace. And if you, you trust the pace makers, you have to hope that they will do a good job. But did you ever talk to the pace makers and say, hey guys, a little bit faster, a yeah. little bit faster. Yeah. You could actually communicate. Yes, yeah, yes, we do. If we are, you know, late or fast, we, I mean, we always 
used to tell us, you know, uh, you guys, you know, just this too fast. And uh, even sometimes, you know, just if, I mean, if, if we are behind them, please go, go, go. Uh, please uh, slow, slow. Uh, you don't talk, you know, just uh, that long, but uh, they, I mean, they can understand easily. But you know, so most of the time, when, when you have an you know, pace maker, they, they, you know, they, they have to know just uh, what pace, you know, they run uh, 1K, 2K, 5K, and up to uh, the distance what they keep. For example, most of the time, you know, we used to have, you know, a pacemaker until 30K. Yeah, you don't have a pacemaker after 30K, but very few, very few. Yeah, well, because if, if you can be running at world record pace or a very quick pace for 30K, for longer than 30K, you should be in the race. And you can you can finish in the top five or whatever. <laughs> well, you I mean, the pacemaker. Well, sometimes you know the pacemaker also can finish you know the top three, top two. I mean the top five. But uh, you see, you see what they're doing here. You know these two pacers, they control the time. But the the others you know they watch each other, and uh, that's why a pacemaker is always very important especially for this uh, half and uh, ma full marathon. John, it's funny because they've done three Ks so far. The first kilometer was 250, the second one 252, hey, the, the third kilometer 250. That's nice and quick. That's good crisp yeah. running. Yeah. And in the women's race, uh, uh, there, was, there were no pacemakers and the first three kilometers were very slow. Very they, slow, exactly. I've seen that one. So <laughs> they lost yeah. they, they lost probably yeah. 45 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would have been, you know, uh, uh, 106, but uh, 107 is... Uh, well, they are moving well. Kennedy, Kimutai tucked in behind the two pacemakers, sort of between them, the 23-year-old Kenyan. Now, he's got a best of 58-28. He is quick. And this tempo is pretty quick. You can see the pack there. One athlete has already dropped off the back of the pack. They've only been running now for 10 minutes, and one athlete is finding it too much. Tadesse there is uh, up towards the front end as well. Kennedy, Kimutai is uh, looking very strong. Only 23, and Matthew is looking strong too. Matthew Kimeli, left of picture. Matthew Kimeli is the defending champion. He's one of the smallest guys in the field. Uh, he won last year in 59.30. Hasn't raced this year, so he comes into this race very, very fresh indeed. And, and you know, many of these athletes have not raced yet highly. Some of them have had one or two races. Did you sit down with your coach or with Jos Hermans, your manager, and work out your racing program each year very, very carefully? Did yeah, that's, that's normal. Uh, about, I mean, about my training, about my competition, about the pace, about everything. You know, once, you know, just uh, the, the manager work, uh, it's not only, you know, just to find a rest. Also, the most important part, you know, just to, to discuss, you know, about the training, about the coming, uh, w I mean, uh, competition. A lot, a lot, especially when you, I mean, a rest day, I mean, to, con I mean, to calculate and control, you know, the, the time and, uh, well, a lot of, a lot of, I mean, hard, I mean, hard work, you know, from the manager's side. Well, that fourth kilometre was a 2.49 that included a slight downhill section. So that was very encouraging. 11.20, they went through a 4K in. Uh, they're crossing the... The top of the course, I suppose you could say here. And uh, at the moment, everything looking really good. We were looking for a tempo of about 2.48 per kilometer to get them home in 59 minutes flat. But Hailey, when you were racing, if you were in this pack, would you have been thinking about the pace or would you be concentrating on the racing? Well, uh, at the beginning, mostly, you know, just to think about, you know, the, I mean, the time and the pace itself. And uh, uh, now these guys, uh, they, are, they are not in bad uh, pace and they, they, they are okay pace, but, you know, they need to uh, move. Uh, but, you know, they, when they're getting uh, uh, warm enough, you know, they, they do faster, I believe. Well, there you can see the top right of the screen if you've joined us in the last few minutes. That is the circuit around this uh, Adidas campus in Herzogenau, Rack in southern Germany. It's a loop of 1,308 metres. It's much, much shorter than last year. Last year, they used a circuit of uh, 
2.5 kilometres and included a much bigger climb. There's a slight undulation in this one, about four metres on each lap, but that is not much over 1.3 kilometres. So this is a quick circuit and they are shifting. Fourth kilometre, 249, so they are moving at a very, very good, healthy tempo. The pacemakers working together and that is dragging the athletes out. There's a slight wind. The wind has picked up a little bit. We're on a balcony quite high up above the runners and ground level. And there's a slight breeze up here. It may be a little bit calmer down on ground level, about 10 metres, 15 metres below us. I can see there, too, to the right of the group, Josfat Kipritic, who was a 59.35 athlete. He ran that in Naples, the Napoli half marathon in February last year. And he is strong. He's a 209 marathon runner. He was fourth in Enskede last year. Uh, he's only done two half marathons, by the way, just for Kipritic, and both of them were under 60. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, enjoying the ride from these uh, pacemakers. I suppose at this early in the race, highly, as you can see, the kilometre splits there from the first 5K, the fifth kilometre at 251. You've got to be you've got to be feeling pretty easy. 5k into a half marathon, you've got to be feeling nice and relaxed and just just being trusting the pacemakers. Now, uh, as you see now, you know this athlete is getting uh, now. Now they do. I mean, they're moving you know faster after this because their first 5k always uh, to adapt you know the weather and uh, to warm warm up you know the body. Uh, after this, you know they can. They can elast. I mean, their body can elastic, or uh, they can they can do you know just much, uh, much uh, better than you know the the previous one. You know the, them. I mean, the difficult part always you know the first 5k when you run a half marathon, even the marathon you know the first 10k. So it's moving well at the moment. Running needs nothing. It was born free, goalpost free, hoop free, finish line free. Running only takes two legs, sometimes not even. It doesn't care who gets there first, whether you're breaking records or setting a record for too many breaks. just needs you to show up and run as you are. Running needs nothing but you. Since I grew up pregnant, Natalia, I break record. Na after Sasa, I miss Natalia. I'm a poor blessing squangu. I break many records. I win medals. I'm a poor baraka squangu. I get an alak word to say because I kick out when I come and do So still a big pack locked together in this uh, the early stages of this men's half marathon. If you've joined us in the last few minutes, you're watching the third edition of the Adizero Road to Records Racing Festival in Herzogenaurach on the Adidas campus in southern Germany. 6K, the 6K 251. Highly, very, very consistent pace. The pace makes are doing a good job. The last three kilometers, 249, 251, 251. It's, they're doing a good job. Yeah, they, they're doing very well. Uh, really, it's a very constant pace, uh, as you see. Uh, not you know, fast, not uh, too slow. And uh, the question is uh, when, they, when they finish their job, uh, to keep you know, this pace, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be depends on you know, the athlete who's going to move you know, after them. Otherwise, you know, the things, uh, what I've seen here, you know, it's, Great, but what I appreciate, you know, these Pesos, really well-experienced Pesos. If you were in this highly, 
would you like to be right up behind the pacemakers? Sure, sure. It's better than being in the pack where and, you've got bodies around no, you. you. You need to not just you need to stay behind them. Uh, it's a for two purposes. One is uh, to control them, especially when you run for a time. If it is slow, you can tell them. If you fast, also you can tell them. And uh, that's why always staying behind you know, the pace, the pacemaker. Very important. Uh, you, I mean, you put the you know, pacemaker in front, and uh, you cannot be you know, just at the last. Or uh, uh, I mean, the, I mean, you you have to be you know just uh, right after the pacemaker. Josh Fat Kipritic, very much to the fore there, the uh, 29-year-old, and uh, Edwin Kiptu as well, left a picture. You can see Edwin Kipto. He's a 59-26 performer. Produced that, though, eight years ago in Delhi. He was fourth in the Delhi half marathon in 59-26. But he has broken 60 minutes six times. Uh, so he's a very, very consistent half marathon racer, is Edwin Kiptu. He's uh, just to the left of the group there, but a couple of rows back from the pacemakers. Hayley, when you watch these uh, races and you celebrated your 50th birthday in the last couple of days? Yes, exactly. It's not today, is it? It's not, not today, <laughs> no, no. on the 18th. <laughs> okay, but happy birthday. Thank you. Thank belated you. happy birthday. It's a, so it's a few years ago now you retired, but when you watch pictures like this, do you still wish wish you were in there? Yeah, you see, now I'm sitting with you, but you know, my feeling, you know, oh, to compete, I wish you know, just to be inside. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but when I was racing, it was all black and white pictures. This, this is now. Uh, yeah. You you, you look see. like you should be in there right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, you know uh, uh, as an athlete, I mean, if you're an athlete, of course, Oh, by the way, you know, the seven, I mean, kilometers to 14, oh, perfect, you know, this, I appreciate, you know, the space maker, I'm telling you. Yeah. I appreciate. 249 for the seventh K, 1950. They are moving at about 59 and a half minutes tempo. They need to, be, to get down to 60, 59 minutes exactly. They need to be running uh, 248 per kilometer, and they've only had, in fact, they haven't had one kilometer yet that quick. So each kilometer at the moment they're a little bit outside it but we're not gonna yeah, it is quibble. But, uh, you know you see sometimes you know this kind of uh, rest for example if someone you know just to push one i mean uh, one k in, in between you can you can do 240 yeah. 43 make up all the ground yeah exactly and uh, Nine and a half. we don't need to worry about you know this but you know now you see now they're moving uh, uh just catching a i mean a drink and uh yeah, there are four, four drinks tables. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, drinks of different strengths are being uh, yeah. handed out at those tables. The athletes can choose what strength drink they want. There's some carbohydrate in those drinks, and it's a special uh, mix that turns to gel. It's a liquid when you drink it. It turns to gel when it hits your stomach, and then it enters your uh, intestines much more quickly and has a slow release. But basically, it means you haven't got... Because it turns to gel when it hits your stomach, it means you haven't got the liquid bouncing around in your stomach. Did you ever have problems, Haile? You seemed, you were a very consistent racer in marathons. It seems you never had problems with your drinks and your stomach. Never, never. Especially, you know, when we start to drink, you know, this year. My first marathon was the, from the beginning to the end, it was only water. But, uh, oh, really? Yeah, it was water. In your first marathon? 2002 London. <laughs> you know, we, we, uh, we had no idea about oh, that. <laughs> Hold on, that was the world record race, wasn't it? Yeah, the with the Khalid Kanuchi. Kanuchi when he was it Khalid Kanuchi and you and Paul Serga? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. The three yeah. of you approaching yeah, exactly. the last couple of couple yeah. of kilometers. Yeah, and wow. then uh, I paid the price, you know, at the end because you know the water is out of the out of my fuel, and yeah, uh, yeah. then you know slowly, you know, we we adapt, you know, just the uh, gel drinks and uh, yeah, yeah. It's, now. It's fantastic, you know, this athlete, you know, they know what they take, you know, just every 5k. I mean. They know exactly what they're doing. Did you practice drinking and training? Oh, yes, we do. A lot. Especially, not only, you know, the, the I mean, the drinks, you know, the way how you... How you grab, grab it. Yeah, exactly. Very important. Have you seen, you know, some rest, you know, how the athlete miss a drink? Mm. Uh, many times, many times. Yeah, times. many of them. You know, even, you know, Boston, uh, keep choking, you know, Miss, you know, his drink, you know, yeah, around yeah. 30k, and uh, our athlete in London, uh, um, the winner from last year, uh, she missed, you know, the drink, 
when she misses the drink, uh, I know she's going to have a problem. And yeah. the same, uh, the same thing, you know, for uh, Kipchoge. I knew it, you know, just uh, when he missed you know, that drink. Because the, you see, if you don't refill, you know, just the body every five, k, yeah, that's normal. Did you watch the London Marathon last yeah, Sunday? Yeah, I did. I did. So Sifan Hassan, with yeah. about two kilometers to go, forgot about a drinks table, stopped, ran across the road, yeah, and she almost back. got hit by a <laughs> yeah, motorbike, exactly. almost got, and exactly. grabbed her drink, but that she was, managed to sprint to the win. That was a very dangerous uh, part. I mean, I, yeah. I was I was very shocked, you know, when I, she came back and, and uh, grabbed you know, the drink. And well, amazing uh, what she did, you know, in London. Maybe even, even for her, you know, she didn't expect to win that race. <laughs> Well, you, as you can see to the left of the screen, you can join the Adidas uh, Global Running, uh, Global Virtual Race. If you scan that QR code, you can see what it's all about. The uh, target five kilometers. And uh, you can uh, be invited to join into that one. It's uh, a free, of course. Uh, and uh, be running, maybe at the same time as some of the great races today. Uh, just to remind you of what's coming up, we've had that women's half marathon, this is the men's half marathon at 10 o'clock local time, Central European time, the women's 10K, 10.55 the men's 10K, 11.40 the women's 5K, and then the climactic men's 5K. Uh, it goes off at 12.15 local time, 11.15 UK, that's with uh, Kajelcha going for the world record and that men's five kilometers so highly the eighth kilometer here the men have gone through with a 253 it was the slowest yeah, kilometer of the race so this, far this this is a little bit slow uh, i can say you know the as you said you know just the slowest in the in the race now uh, i think you know they have to pick up i mean uh, maybe the pacemakers are a little bit tired you know, so in, in your big road races whether it was a marathon or a half marathon or a 10 miles you broke the world record for 10 miles in the usa remember did did you um, like to get information from, from people on the sidelines? Would you like to be getting splits from Yoss or anybody else on the side of the road? Did you like to have that information all the time? Uh, well, maybe uh, at the beginning and then in between, yes. But, you know, the last part, uh, you, you, I mean, you don't need, you know, just any advice from anybody. <laughs> but mostly what happened, you know, just the leading vehicle. I mean, the leading, I mean, the, you can see, you know, the time. Okay, the data on yeah, the lead vehicle. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. it can tell you, you know, just uh, every kilometer. Uh, That's true. Yeah. That's true. In yeah. fact, yeah, you make a very good point, and we should mention that. So the, the, the vehicle that you're getting this shot from, the camera is on a vehicle that shows the athletes the, the pace of their last kilometer, no, uh, no, to, to the pace of their 5K, I think, and no, their predicted finishing yeah, time. Yeah. So they've got... Not a, they've got plenty of information. There we go. 2.54 yeah, for that ninth kilometer. Yeah, they have that, slowed a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I wonder, Heidi, do you, uh, think the, do you think the wind is picking up? No, maybe? not. I think it's not the wind. Uh, what I see here, you know, the pacemaker getting tired, as I told you, you know, just I think uh, this, this, I mean, this athlete, they have to now pick and they have to move because both pacemaker are now getting tired. And uh, I think, you know, Time for the yeah, competitors. Yeah. So mean, at this point, you would be saying to the pacemakers, yeah, 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 "Hey guys, yeah. pick it up or, you know, or get move." Uh, yeah, you see, uh, already two times. Uh, two slow, cl too slowish slow. kilometers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, when you think that yeah. we're looking for two forty eights, yeah. and we've had a two fifty three and a two fifty four, yeah. so that's eleven seconds gone off the required tempo straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, they have to move now. They have to move. They do have to move. They have uh, to move quickly. I think, you know, it looks, you know, one pacemaker out or still both. The, but yeah, one one is out. It's good. It's a good decision. But maybe they are striding out stronger now. Yeah. Kip Sambu Kimakal and his compatriot Wesley Kimutai, both of them Ken, and have done a very good job. But now is the time approaching halfway. They're about nine and a half kilometers for these... Uh, Racers to start racing. I always uh, feel very strongly, highly in, in, in races when there are pacemakers, that there should be a point where pacemakers have to drop out. For example, I think in major marathons, mm -hmm. the pacemakers should stop at 30 kilometers and, and let the racing happen after, for that well, last Well, it depends. Minutes. It depends. They shouldn't, I mean, they shouldn't be stopping you know, at the 30k, but it depends on, you know, their feeling or their uh, strength. If they can keep, you know, just... Uh, uh, more than 30 k, it, I mean, it will be wonderful. But uh, uh, if they tired, if they not, I mean, uh, for example, uh, it's a good decision. You know, the guy who stopped, you know, the pacing, uh, 
but this also the this face maker also looks tired and uh, he yeah you see he's talking to him well they're just about to hit 10k any second now so we'll get that split at 10k uh, and it is going to come up now 28 29 at 10k so a little bit outside what was mm -hmm. anticipated but that doesn't it matter looks, too this much this one looks a little bit okay compared to the previous uh, one okay yeah it's still a 252 uh the last kilometer is 252 but uh, it's fine but they uh, no need to uh, know just to improve uh, well, as you said, you know, while we're talking about they've lost three or four seconds on this kilometre, three or four seconds on that kilometre, you can make up so much with one quick kilometre. You know, if the final kilometre is a real yeah. charge and it's a 2.35 or something, then you're making up 15 seconds like that straight away. Yeah, it can be. But uh, if you miss you know, a lot of seconds, you know, just in between, uh, very difficult to catch, you know, uh, that fast. Maybe you can, you can do the last kilometres uh, to 40, 2.42. But uh, still, you know, just miss uh, many seconds in between it that work like this way. But uh, now, as you see here, you know, just the satellite, uh, just, just part, you know, has to move uh, because it's fresh. And uh, the pacemaker uh, really looks tired. I think the pacemaker has to stop. So 10K, 28, 29, they're almost exactly on 60 minute tempo. And the pack still big, and they're still running pretty fast. Back to the racing then here in Herzog and Alrak and this pack still moving at about 60 minute pace for the full half marathon distance. It is a small field, 19 starters and that one at 248, yeah, highly. That's the quickest kilometer so far. Exactly, exactly. I told you, you know, this athlete, you know, they're fresh, you know, that's why, you know, they have to, they, I, I said, you know, let them move just, but, you know, he did a very good job. Now uh, they, they have to help each other. Uh, very good. Uh... Well, if you have just joined us, that is the voice of Haile Gebre Selassie, myself, Tim Hutchings, sitting here on the balcony of the arena building at the Adidas headquarters, uh, high up above the course, the track that goes around this building, actually. It's a 1.3 kilometer, 1,308 meters to be exact, 1,308 meter loop around the building much shorter loop than last year when they used a 2.5 kilometer loop and it's much flatter too and they are moving well and it's probably no coincidence that the pacemakers who did a very good job for the first seven or eight kilometers and then it started slowing probably no coincidence that now the pacemakers have gone it's picked up a little bit it's uh, you're right highly it's almost like the pacemakers were holding them back for a couple of for maybe two or three k exactly they should 
They should move, you know, especially after the seven, eight kilometer. This athlete should uh, move it. And uh, now you see again, you know what, uh, what, what, uh, what's happening? Uh, they, they are. I mean, they are watching each other. I mean, uh, okay, That's to a win, big pack. to win the race, and uh, still, you know, to me, still, you know, they can, they can do under uh, one hour and under uh, fifty-nine thirty. I think. Uh, uh, still, you know, they're okay. What I see here, you know, they're fresh still. Well, there's 10 athletes in this pack moving well, 33 minutes on the clock. They're well past halfway now. They went through 11 kilometers and 31.18. That was a 2.48, the quickest kilometer of the race. But that was the pace that we were hoping they would maintain from, from the beginning. That would bring them home in 59 minutes exactly. So, Ali Gabrislasi is right. They, at the moment, they're only on about... I say only in inverted commas, only on about 60 minute pace, but that will gradually pick up, I think, over these next seven or eight kilometers as they uh, negotiate that flat, sec flat section alongside the uh, scenic lake in front of the main building. And the 12 kilometer at 2.49, so they are getting back to a, a better tempo now. That no, is good to see. No, still not bad, I'm telling you. That, that's really, uh, I mean, after their pace, it's a good progress. Uh, what I see here, and the 248, 249. Uh, when Jospat, Jospat moved, uh, the rest is uh, getting faster and faster. Very good. Now they they watching and talking each other. Uh, they're doing good. They're doing good. But they need uh, to move. Uh, uh, as, as, uh, as they as they doing you know the previous uh, kilometers and uh, as you see here uh, uh, doing I mean helping each other and uh, well that's good. Uh, Ken Kennedy Kimutai at the front is uh, the man doing the aggressive running at the moment. Kennedy Kimutai who is uh, 23 years old is relatively young. Is uh, Kimutai born in? Back in 1999, I think you were breaking world records back then, weren't you, Hailey? You, you broke, what, 27 world records? I yeah. Mean, you used to do Fine. it, yeah. do it in your sleep time. almost, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was, you know, a good time. Yeah. yeah. It's a wonderful now. Good years for you, Hailey. Hey, really, I'm so, I'm so happy, you know, the pace right now. Uh, doing very well. But it needs, you know, just... Uh, Bit faster, bit faster means you know uh, they have to play in between you know uh, 248, 47, not uh, ab I mean 250. I mean 250 is not it's not that important for this race. Yeah? So I'm looking at Kennedy Kimutai who's leading. He was only 12th in the New York half marathon about uh, five weeks ago in 63.20, but his personal best is 59.04. Kennedy Kimutai. In fact, just checking, 58.28 is his personal best. He is a, a top-notch athlete. He has run 27.29 for 10,000 metres. And Hailey, he seems to be happy to be taking on most of the most of the leading at the moment. I guess if you're feeling strong, if you're feeling powerful, you are happy to go in front. Yeah, for Kennedy, it uh, has to be like this because he's a marathon runner. Uh, he, has, he has to move you know, uh, this point. He shouldn't wait until you know the last part because you know the rest you know very good in sprint and uh, Kennedy it's a good decision out uh, of 51 it's a little bit slow and uh, well yeah, yeah. Like, I mean it's okay still that 13th kilometer at 251 we had a couple of quickish kilometers when the pacemakers initially dropped out. We had a 2.48 and a 2.49 for the 11th and 12th kilometers. That is right down there on 59-minute tempo. Ronsa Conga, the man in the center there, tall character Conga. He's in wonderful shape. Remember, he won the Prague Half Marathon on the 1st of April in 59.43. Very modest track times. Comes from a big family, does uh, Ronsa Conga. Seven brothers, five sisters. I don't think they're all runners. I bet those who aren't are wishing they had uh, taken up running. 
but he is very consistent, is Ronsa Conga. And he's, we know he's in great shape. He won the Paris half marathon back on the 5th of March in 59.38. And highly, I guess, when, you, when you've had good races recently in the last few weeks, that confidence when you are standing on the start line is such an advantage over other athletes. If you haven't raced for a few months, you're not sure about your shape. If you had a race three weeks ago where you ran really well, you know your shape. Yeah, exactly, because at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the important of the race is not only to win the race, and also to know where you are, what is your position, uh, how fast you can Woo! keep, how, how your performance, and uh, athlete like uh, who won a race like a month ago, two months ago, you know, they can, they can, they can do anything what they want, and uh, they know which, which shape they are, you know, they, they, they don't need to worry about you know their chef because if they te I mean if they tested it before. Well, off that artificial grass, there's about 90 meters of artificial grass there, just outside the Adidas campus. Now they're back into the campus circuit around the arena building, and uh, this pack is whittling down. It was 10, and we're down to what seven is it now? Yeah. Certainly, yeah. it's fewer. And it's still Kennedy Kimutai who's pouring it on. He's done all the aggressive running for the last 10 minutes. 14 kilometers is coming up. But this, I think, will be a slightly quicker kilometer. What is interesting... Tadesse, is, as you see, Tadesse is fresh and... Uh, he's, he's a big fella, isn't yeah, he, Yeah, he's, he's, he's the one, you know, just... Uh, for this race uh, and uh, to see... And, uh, Tadesse is to the, with, to the second's right now yeah. with a shock of black hair. He's only 20 years old. He was fifth here last year in his personal best of 59.41. Has no track background and, in fact, very few other results. He hasn't raced this year and was a relatively late starter. So he's a huge talent, is yeah. Tadesse Bikila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tadesse, uh, what I see here, uh, he's really... Good and fresh, you know. He's he's keeping himself, you know, behind, you know, the uh, the rest of the athlete. And uh, well, uh, now they are uh, close to the um, the last part. And uh, well, the the question is, you know, just uh, about the time now. It's not who is going to win uh, here? And of course, all you know, Adidas athlete, and uh, they have to they have to move a little bit. I think this kilometer may be the slowest. Yeah, they've done, they've done a 2.52 for the 14th kilometer, 39.50 uh -huh. at 14K. So maybe they will start winding yeah, the, it up. Yeah, and the 15 kilometers is the slowest. And <laughs> as we've discussed, Haile, they could, you know, they can, the last 5K, they could make up 30, 40 seconds and, and get yeah, back yeah, down yeah. to yeah. 50, um, inside 59 and a half. Yeah, it's it's not it's not easy, honestly speaking. You know, after this, you know, just to to catch up the time. Uh, I don't think. I don't think. Whatever it is, you know, uh, if they, you see, uh, it's a, like uh, five six kilometers to go. Uh, I think this athlete, you know, they have to think about, you know, to, uh, I mean, to move and uh, still, you know, a big pack, you know, <laughs> and uh, I think, you know. Uh, sometimes you know what they what's important you know just to know for what they are going to run you know we're talking about you know the world record uh, thingy uh, maybe if not just at least you know to run good time and uh, and oh it's okay uh, Haile you were you were very lucky you you had great finishing speed I saw you win the world indoor title at 1500 meters uh, and you had enormous strength. You broke the world record at marathon. That is, those are almost the two extremes as a distance runner. 1,500 meters, marathon. But do you have many regrets from your career? It's a strange question because you, you broke the world record <laughs> so many times in many different distances. But what would you change about your career if you could? Oh, win a marathon uh, in Olympic. Olympic marathon didn't work. Oh, yeah. That's you know, one of my regrets. And, uh, but uh, 2012 was the big chance, but it didn't work because they, when I went to uh, Tokyo, I was good until you know the la I mean uh, until 38k, but the last 4k, 
as soon as you know, just uh, I go the downhill, I wasn't in front, mm. and uh, everything's gone. Okay, okay. Half marathon, uh, yeah, this men. Is, this is too slow. Too that slow. 50, 255, that is a slower kilometre. It almost makes you think maybe this is becoming a tactical affair now. I mean, that is the slowest kilometre of the race. 255, wow. I wonder why. I'm, I'm still thinking, highly that maybe the wind is affecting them a little bit down there. It is still very cold. It, it's a cool, cool morning here. The yeah. wind is cool, and that's making it feel even even colder. But 2.55 for that 15th kilometre, 42.45 at 15k. Uh, uh, down there, it's not uh, uh, it's not the wind like what we what we are, and uh, of course uh, it's a it's it's a little bit cold, but for a uh, half marathon, a marathon. I can say, you know, just it's a good weather. You're tougher than most of us. I think it's cold. <laughs> My hands are freezing yeah, up yeah, here. Me too, me too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But these guys are racing. We should focus upon the racing as much as talking about times all the time. Josfat Kipotic to the right of picture looks nice and relaxed, actually, the 29-year-old. This year he was uh, third in the Venlo Half Marathon in the Netherlands in 59.41. That was only a month ago on the 26th of March. So we know Josh Fratz uh, Kipritic is in very good shape. Only done two half marathons and both of them were inside 60. But still, Kennedy Kimutai is leading. It's almost like he's volunteered to be the pacemaker through the second half. Uh, well, it's not because of his volunteer, but because of, you know, his, uh, uh, I mean, his uh, marathon athlete. He has to. Uh, I told you, you know, just he has, uh, he has to move, you know, in this stage. Even, you know, just uh, fast, uh, you should be faster. Otherwise, you know, he cannot uh, make it at the end. So they head out then on another lap here in this uh, Adidas campus. The building in the background there, the arena building. We're on that balcony, actually, just below the main structure. Although we're uh, quite a few feet off the ground, quite a few meters off the ground, and it is, uh, we're exposed to the winds a little bit more, but they're moving well here. They've gone through 15K in uh, 42.45. They're on almost exactly 60 minute tempo. They haven't really accelerated or clawed back any of the time lost through some slower splits. Two laps to go then, and Josfat Kimutai, Josfat Kimutic rather, hits the front. He too, a marathon runner, maybe highly if he hasn't got the speed because of the marathon strength, he wants to push it hard from quite a long way out. You never had to make that decision, you see. You were lucky, lucky, you trained, you trained for it. But you had that wonderful finishing speed. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to worry about being out kids. Yeah, exactly. 99% yeah, exactly. of your races. Exactly. You don't need to worry about, you know, just uh, with the, any any athlete you can you can do it. Because of, you know, I used to run, you know, 5, 10, you know, all distance. But uh, athlete who runs only a marathon or half marathon, they, 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 they have to look, you know, just who's, you know, with them. And uh, the most important part uh, here, what I've seen, you know, just many of them, you know, in this uh, part of the race. Uh, for me, what I need, you know, just... Uh, you know, some of the athletes, you know, they, uh, they finish the race uh, without uh, getting tired. And, uh, for example, you know, some of the athletes, instead of, you know, just wait each other, if they push, they can, uh, they can warm enough, you know, easily. You see, uh, the mistake of, you know, some of those uh, athletes who's waiting each other, 
because they don't know their body. If they know their body, you know, they have to, they have to move. They can, they can relax. 16th kilometer, 251. That uh, took them through 16K in 45.36. So still not really hitting their straps. And this pack was what, seven or eight strong? Seven strong, I think. No, eight strong. Yeah. And hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My maths is letting me get my eyesight. No, no, eight, eight of seven, them. Seven, seven. Eight of them. <laughs> you are right, you're right, yes. Your eyes are yeah, better than me, yeah. but you're a lot younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> no, come on. Eight athletes in there. And they're watching each other now. I'm trying to see who looks the easiest, who looks the most calm. It's difficult to tell. You can read so much. You can read too much into it. The 17th kilometre at 2.54. Well, yeah. they have really eased back in the throttle. The world best this year is not under threat. That's by Bernard Kibet in the Iraq half marathon back in February in the United Arab Emirates. That was a 58.45. The world record, an almost superhuman 57.31 by Jacob Kiplimo. That was in Lisbon in uh, November 2021. But now this pack is beginning to whittle down and I yeah. wonder if there has been an acceleration. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, he's just better. No, he's doing well. He's in he's in good shape, by the way. Uh, he's asking athletes to come up alongside him yeah. there, just for uh, Kipritic. It seemed like he was asking Tadesse Bikila, who's yeah. only twenty. He's, he's a he youngster. To, yeah, very young. Uh, he ah. used, to, used to be fifteen hundred uh, when he started. I don't see him in you know, just so many. I mean, so many uh, long distance. Bikila. Yeah. Well, he's only he's only 20. I, I I looked at him last night and I couldn't find any track races for him. So maybe local small yeah, yeah, yeah. 1500s in within Addis Ababa. Uh, but he's the... grimacing there. I wonder what's yeah. happening. With the big shock of black hair, he stands out very, very clearly, the 20-year-old. Was fifth here last year. Eight in the pack, although one athlete beginning to struggle dropping off the back of the pack. Yeah. Josfat Kipritic to the right of picture. Ronsa Conga beginning now to make his present felt. We know he's in wonderful shape. And Hailey, when you went through tough patches in races, did you did you use anything as inspiration, your family, your kids back home or anything? What did you, did you sometimes have something that you'd go to in your head to give yourself that little bit more determination? Well, a lot of things, by the way. Uh, at this stage, you know, just you can think about, you know, the athlete, you can see the man on the athlete who's running next to you, the left and right, mostly, you know, just uh, think about uh, the race itself. And uh, uh, sometimes, you know, just you are in, uh, Europe and uh, you think uh, uh, 5,000 miles uh, uh, home uh, about the family, about the things, you know. But you see, in a, as an athlete, of course, uh, a lot of things in mind. And uh, mostly, you know, just about the rest. <laughs> the pack is breaking up. Charles Manaria, who has been in this group throughout, disappearing in the background there. He's suffering. Josfat Kipritic to the right of picture. Kennedy Kimutai in the centre. Tadese Bikila, who I have to say has looked very, very strong. He's the biggest in this group. He's probably the youngest in the group, but he's about the biggest fella there too. He's built like a middle distance runner, a 400 meter runner. He's very powerful. And we're now down to six. Ronso is still there. Ronso Conga in the centre of the pack. Tall figure with the arm straps, the arm sleeves. Yeah. He's he looks, you know, just uh, looks good. Good, and uh, I think Ronsa and uh, Tadesse uh, and just just Pat, they 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 really uh, very okay. Uh, what I see now and uh, what is Charles in the left side behind, you know, Tadesse. Yeah. Yep, he's back on back with the group is Manaria. But it is still Kennedy Kimutai who has done 
so much of the leading since the pacemakers dropped out. I would say he's led almost all the time since the pacemakers dropped out. And with one lap to go, just over one lap to go, it is Kennedy Kimutai who is asking the questions and is gradually seeing these athletes drop back. Did you have a mantra, Hailey, when you were leading in a race and you were trying to break the guys behind you? Or the, did, you did you have something in your head you'd say, keep working, keep working, the results <laughs> will come, you will get your reward? Yeah, exactly, I think, you know, uh, mostly, you know, when you're moving, when you tactic, uh, when you do that, your tactic, just, uh, uh, it depends on who's in the, I mean, in the race and uh, what kind of athlete. Uh, if I move, you know, can he catch me? Can he follow me? And uh, something like that. And uh, now, um, as I said, you know, before, what you see here, now all those six athletes, you know, watching each other, it's almost uh, a kilometer and a half. And, uh, well, it's a... Uh, Kennedy, it looks Kennedy is okay, but uh, I don't understand why he's waiting. If he has you know, just enough, uh, enough, thing, enough thing to move, he should, I mean, he has to. And uh, well, after this, of course, uh, yeah, 255. Uh, 255, the yeah. 19th kilometer. Guys, it's getting slower. They've gone, the last uh, five. 6K have been 252, 255, 251, 254, 254, 255. It has become a tactical offense. None of them seem keen to leave. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. all watching each other. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the projected winning time at 19K is well outside 60 minutes, 60 19, in fact. But I do think that if we're getting quite a lot of wind up here on this balcony above the course, as this uh, drone heads out towards the runners, watching this in real time, by the way, live, then uh, maybe the wind down there is beginning to affect the athletes a little bit. The pack has dwindled down, been whittled down, just as in the women's race, where in the last few hundred metres it was down to three, and then in the last sprint down to two. So here it has gone from eight to seven to six, and we're now down to five. We are. Ronsa. Beginning to, is he struggling there? Ronsa Conga to the right of picture with the uh, arm sleeves. And they're looking around at each other. And that yeah. is always, <laughs> you know, then they're, yeah. they're playing cat yeah. and mouse. This is the last part. Yeah. That is what you're doing. So, about uh, one and a half kilometers to go. As they push on, and it's still Kimutai at the front. Tadese in the centre. Looks really strong, doesn't he? I yeah, mean, he is. You must is, have big hopes for him, Haile. He is, you know. Uh, when you have, you know, just uh, a big thing like this, you know, the, uh, when it's when the weather is like this cold, you know, just you can you can you can do anything what you want, you know. The, the more advantage. Back in Addis Ababa, do you get many young athletes coming to you and asking for advice? Do you get emails? Oh, yeah. Do you get people yeah. knocking on your front door? Yeah, no, or what? No, no, most of them, you know, they come to my office and when, uh, when I... When you when, have time. When we meet, yeah, no problem, you know. But you're a busy guy. You're a busy guy. You uh, run many businesses. Well, you see, I'm an athlete, you know. I'm so happy, you know, just when they come and uh, just to ask, you know, some, some advice. I'm so happy with that. And, uh, of course... You have to, uh, you have to, you know, uh, it's much respect, you know, for those athletes who comes and uh, ask, you know, about, uh, uh, about, you know, their training, about the race and everything. And uh, it's wonderful. Well, the pace has picked up at 2.50 yeah. there. It's gone from yeah. Yeah. 254s and 255s to 250. The 20K time, 57.09. And it's going to be... Because it's become a tactical affair, highly in the last five kilometers, this is going to be a very quick last yeah, kilometer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And look now at young Tedesse. But he, he's got the shoulders of a big fella, yeah, hasn't yeah, he? The way yeah. he carries his arms. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's very fresh, I'm telling you. I told you before. Doesn't he no. look strong? Yeah. He's got the power. This may not come down to a final sprint like the women's race. Remember, 
That one <coughs> won so impressively by Bertukan uh, Waldesura in 67-44. Well, it could be a Kenyan, uh, sorry, an Ethiopian double in the half marathons yeah, yeah. here. It's true. Tadesse is away. The yeah. youngster is away. The youngest man in the race. Yeah, he is. At 20. And the others behind him seem powerless. Powerless to go with him. Matthew Kimeli there, left a picture in second place. He's working so hard, but he's half the size of the powerfully built Tadesse Takele Bikila. His personal best, 59.41. I don't think he's going to be threatened today. He was fifth last year, but boy, has he worked hard, has he trained hard, has he grown in stature as an athlete because he is pulverizing this field in the final kilometer. He's easing away and it looks easy, Haile. Yeah, I told you from the beginning because he was waiting in the, inside the group and uh, I knew it, you know, just from the beginning. He was, he was a fresh athlete, by the way. Yeah, you see? Very relaxed. Yeah, yeah he should. He should not move uh, like uh, a few kilometers ago. He is looking so easy, but he's got the win and the prize money today. Well, that always helps. A young athlete like him, $7,000 for the win. Wow. That's, that's good money. Take yeah. it home to yeah. Addis. It's good. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, uh, the most important is not the money. He the takes time. the right turn there, the final turn into the finishing straight. He has one left turn to go, but he has secured himself a victory here in spectacular style. It's a dominant performance from the 20-year-old Ethiopian, Tadesse Takele Bikila. Remember that name. Fifth last year, a champion this year. He approaches the line. It's going to be just outside 60 minutes. 60.03 unofficially. That is still very, very quick running, considering those final few kilometers was slowing great running from the youngster and he made it look so simple i reckon he could have done another lap yeah yeah he could he's a big fella highly i mean i'm watching him running and i'm thinking this young man could do a good 1500 good 3000 yeah, you know but he doesn't he, have that yet he used, he used to be he used to be you know 1500 and some uh, that's what I was uh, watching, you know, a race in, uh, in, in Addis Ababa. And then, you know, he moved to uh, half marathon, marathon, and uh, the big guy. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful, you know, if the, if the race, you know, like this kind of weather, it's a big advantage, I'm telling you. And uh, Tadesa is really, really uh, a wonderful athlete. Now, uh, of course, after this, you know, just he moved to marathon and uh, half marathon. No question. Would you, but Kylie, you come from a generation of athletes who went through the gears, as I always say. You, you know, you were 1,500 meter runner, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, half marathon, then marathon. Do you, do you think athletes like him should try and do some track, become more complete? Uh, it is really wonderful if you can keep, you know, just uh, running a track first, especially, you know, this kind of athlete is good for 5,000, 10,000 meters and uh, slowly can move to the marathon. But you see, one of the problem, uh, this, this kind of athlete, uh, the more you prepare for the marathon or the half marathon, uh, you, you might have you know, just those injuries and uh, those problems. And uh, because the, uh, this kind of muscle, uh, mostly what you are facing, you know, just injuries. Uh, otherwise, it's a very good advantage uh, for the athlete like him, you know, especially the day like today. We saw Reed Fisher cross the line there, just outside, uh, about 62 minutes. We'll get that for you exactly, the American in this field. Tadesse Takele Bikila, though, 60.04. The youngster winning by three seconds from Ronsa Konga, Josrat Chumo. The uh, Ethiopians take the double in terms of victories, but look at the Kenyan packing their second to 10th places are the Kenyans and in fact the uh, gosh we get down to the the top seven inside 61 minutes not bad running at all in these cool breezy conditions yeah. now as they are on this Saturday morning yeah. Yeah. very very cool air here in uh, southern Germany if you joined us in the last few minutes we're in Herzogenaurach the headquarters of Adidas about an hour and a half drive north of 
Berlin. And there is the race winner. Tatese Takele Bikila. Well, Hailey, thank you very much indeed. Hailey is heading off downstairs to help with some of the translations, I understand. He's been a fabulous commentary partner for this last hour. What a privilege. And some real insights there from Hailey. Clearly doesn't make it over complicated. I think it helps if you've got uh, talent in bucket loads. And as a young man who does have talent in bucket loads, we'll be hearing a great deal more of the winner today, Bikili. Bikila. Well, they got underway in this half marathon. It's a men's half marathon at 8.35 local time. That field of uh, 19 starters. And they finished just outside the hour, that winning time. 60.04. And uh, Ronta Conga taking second place. Josfat Chumo taking up third place. Josfat Kipritich, that is. Well, they set off at a fairly crisp pace. The first kilometer, 250, then a couple of uh, a 252 and a 250, then a, a 249. They were just a, a second or two outside the required tempo in the early kilometers. But the slowest part of the race was in the latter stages. They started slowing at around 15, 14, 15 kilometers. And then they put in a series of slow kilometers, 255, 254, 254, 255, because they were watching each other and they were racing. And the chance of a really fast time here today, we hope that they might get down towards 59 minutes. That was gone and it was the racing and the result that mattered. But despite the strength of the Kenyan opposition, the uh, superior years and experience of the Kenyans in the front pack, it was the youngster, Tagdese Takeli Bikila, who forged clear in the final kilometer. He looked really strong, quite dominant on the day, well muscled, looks like a middle distance runner, crossed the line in 60.04, very, very comfortably indeed taking that one. There's many more seconds to come from the legs of young uh, Tadesse Bikila. His personal best, 59.41, not threatened. He was fifth last year. He wins today in a slower time, but there is so much more to come.
Well, Haile Gebrselassie is headed down to that finish area to assist with the proceedings, the uh, presentations for that men's, the first three in that men's half marathon are uh, coming up in just a minute or so's time. I'm rejoined by Carrie Tollefson here in the uh, commentary booth. Carrie, I suspect you've been uh, suitably filled up with hot soup and buns and cakes. And I, I made sure to bring you some. I made sure to bring you some coffee when I did. You but did. You were it very is chilly. Good. And as you said, I think there is a bit of wind out there. You know, it's perfect day to race, but um, there's a little bit of some elements. Almost a perfect race. Yeah, day to race them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's chilly sitting here, though, isn't it? It is chilly sitting here. The sun is trying to break through. The prediction was that the weather would always be better. The, w the prediction was that the weather would always be better today, and uh, maybe it'll warm up as the morning wears on. It is still only 9.45, not even 9.45 yet, local time. So uh, it's early on this Saturday morning, compared with yesterday when the heavens opened yes. and it rained most of the day. And this, actually this overnight, good. there was uh, quite yep. a bit of thunderstorms, but I didn't hear any of it. <laughs> 15 degrees centigrade. If it's 15 degrees centigrade here, I'm a banana. <laughs> that, there, that, it's not 15 degrees centigrade. I think out there, it's My a lot different. Freezing. I know, but underneath this arena, it's called, it's a beautiful building. But it is chilly in here. We just you need to get some heating yes, next year. Yes, next year. Or I'll, I'll but I've been sitting downstairs with Paris Jepchichir. Okay. Mary Katani. You just like hanging out with important people, don't Yola you? Yola I mean, it is so much fun. They are down there. They're getting ready to um, sell some of the Tear Ups Angels bracelets. Oh, cool. And then other athletes, kids are coming in. It is like one big family. It is a big family, yep. Adidas Elite athletes gathered. Here are the three best from the half marathon this morning. The presentation ceremony for the athletes who made the rostrum coming up. <laughs> and the award ceremony of the half marathon in the men's category is ready. Finishing in third place with a time of 60.08 from Kenya, Ronsa Conga. <laughs> Finishing in second place, also with a time of 60.08, also from Kenya, Josfa Chumbo. And the winner of the half marathon in the men's category in a time of 60.04 from Ethiopia, Tadese Takela Bikilat. The medals and trophies are being handed over by Artur Hurd, executive board member, Global Sales.
it's like never before Together, what we're fighting for Together, all the nations lost And he was really quick over the line and straight to the ceremony. And now he's with us here, the winner, Tade. So congratulations. Last year, you came fifth. Now you're on top of the podium. How does that feel? I'm so happy today. Uh, last year I was uh, a little bit, uh, I had you know, a problem and uh, this year, you know, I was preparing very well. I'm so happy today and uh, it's wonderful. And it looked wonderful and especially those last few meters, you were really ramping up the crowds. You were soaking it all in. How did that feel here on the campus with all the support from all the Adidas runners and all the other supporters here? I'm so happy you know, to see the support of the people, you know, especially in the last part, you know, when they give you, you know, just a kind of support, a kind of moral. It gives you, you know, a lot of energy. And what does it feel like to have Haile Gebre Selassie translating for you here on your winner's interview? Haile is here at the Gabu Hono, Strugum Sastra Gumilik Minister Mahal. But I'm the Senyan in here, but I'm the Sulunyan. And the honor. I'm so happy, you know, just to have a you know, just Haile here. <laughs> We're very happy to have both of you here. Congratulations, Tadesa, and thank you again to our translator, Haile Gebre Selassie. Well, Haile Gebre Selassie finding a new career for himself, <laughs> maybe. I'm sure he needs it. What an honor, though, really, for Tadesa to sit there and I stand. Know. It's surreal. It's been so fun to walk around and see all the kids. Haile, Haile, Haile! And it's then like, I was just yelling at him, too. He was trying to run to the finish side. He got going. He's pretty quick still. Of course he is. He <laughs> runs every day. But it's, it's a bit like a young Jamaican kid of 20 winning something. And, you know, doing okay. And his career's building. And Usain Bolt comes up and starts insisting. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, like a, it's like a, pretty amazing. Wow. Just yeah. Brilliant. Just brilliant. So the next race is the women's 10K. It'll be the third race of the day here at this Addis Zero Road to Records. 2023 racing festival in on the Adidas campus in Herzegonarak. There is the lineup: 20 starters, including one pacemaker, and it is a strong field. Margaret uh, Chalimo, Kip Kemboy, 29.50 was her personal best. That was in Valencia in October 2021. She's the sixth fastest athlete in history. That does make her one of the favourites. Charlotte Perdue, the only Brit here, I believe, racing in this weekend out of the 126 athletes, 136 athletes from 22 nations. He's been uh, struggling with injury in recent months, but uh, hoping for a good run today. But it will almost inevitably be the best of Kenya and Ethiopia that battle out this race. And uh, carry very, very hard to place your bets in fields this strong you know when you've got a, a field that's got one standout it's kind of easier to say yeah if I if I was a betting man and I know you're not a betting lady <laughs> but if I was a betting man I'd put my money there but with, with the fields this strong there are four or five in this race maybe more yeah there's four or five and they also have great results from the present you know that's the thing that you sort of want to look at there's a lot of PBs that are wonderful, but are they current? And that's the thing that we have right now is we have six, seven ladies in this race that 
are showing that they could win this race and they should push the pace. Hopefully we see a little bit of a quicker tempo out in the 10K now. Well, exactly, yes. There are athletes here who are familiar with this campus and with certainly part of this circuit, this adjusted circuit. Irene Kameis, the 24-year-old Kenyan, was ninth uh, in this race last year, just outside 31 minutes. She's a prolific racer, though. These athletes are uh, able to hone their talent at various venues around the world where they're flown in to race hard, race fast, and make good money. Now, only two returners from last year's races, and not only in this race. So you said Kamais last year, ninth in the 10K. She also ran in 2021. She was fifth in the half marathon, so switching distances. But then Agnes get it. she's the one that I think a lot of people are looking at we have some notes down, and I have a note that says pressure's on her. So, you know, I think that she definitely has some eyes on her. She was ninth in the 5K last year, fourth in the 5K in 2021. So she knows this course. She knows this campus, and obviously an Adidas athlete. So, But she's in great shape, yeah, too. Yeah, she's she in great shape. third in the World Cross Country yep. back in the middle of February in Bathurst, Australia. Yeah, uh, so very young she athlete. She comes here with kind of, you know, I was, I was saying to Hailey, if you haven't raced this year and plenty of athletes here today have not raced yet this year so you're you're count you're recalling memories of racing back in the, yeah. the the autumn the fall maybe even last summer if you've raced in the last three or four weeks and it was a good race experience you come here with that extra confidence that extra it just gives you that little the bit of grit, edge i think right? psychological edge yeah i mean i think that is a huge factor and i think it is an advantage you know there's something about racing you, you could work out and work out and get these really great race simulators and workouts but until you actually line up and go through that hurt, you know, you, you said it last year, one of your great lines is we're hurt and hurt cell. Like, it's just, you're going to hurt here, and they know it. But I think if you've done it in the last month, you've gotten that, that race feel, definitely a, a big advantage, another card in your pocket. So, this race due off at 10 o'clock. That's in about... Five minutes time, maybe four minutes time. Very, very close to uh, st gun time for the uh, 20 starters in this women's uh, 10K. Yeah, a little bit of wind. I just had, we're sitting up underneath this, this overhang here, but when we're outside, I guess there's a little bit of a headwind. Not a huge factor, but it's there. Don't worry, I've been telling people about how cold I am, so, so <laughs> I people will be fed up with hearing about and it. And I'm from Minnesota, you're from England, like, come on, we get some cold weather. Yeah, but you're Norwegian stock, you've I got am. cold blood yeah, don't and you hairy know. feet. Uh, stop it. Allegedly. She hey. has to get extra, I'm telling you, she has to get extra large shoes. <laughs> you know what? To fit all the hair in. I can still run faster than you, so if you want to go out there. you're about 20 years younger than me. It doesn't matter. You're, well... What do you mean it doesn't matter? You're I mean, if you want to go there, let's just go put our shoes on. Let's get some Addy Zeros and let's go and race. And let's just I'd prefer put you your just mouth go back where to the, the money hotel is, and shave, you, shave your feet. Knock it off. People, I do not have hairy feet. <laughs> I, I, it's only <laughs> what people are talking about in the bar last night. Oh, jeez. You don't want to Anyway, know. we can start looking at these super elite athletes. There she is, Irene Kimais, the 24-year-old. Winner in Barcelona back in February in 64.37 and a half marathon. This, remember, is a 10K. She will be strong. She may want to push it. Margaret Chalimo, she is another one that we are going to look. Look at that time. 29.50. Sub 30-minute 10K athlete. Definitely one of the strongest ones in the field coming off that third place in Eugene at the World Championships last summer. There's Ag Agnes Ngetic, the 23-year-old, who's run 30-30, very close to breaking 30 minutes. That was second in Brazov back in uh, September. That's in Romania. Last year, she was ninth here in the 5K, as Carrie said, but we know she's in great form with that World Cross Country Championships bronze medal. Well, Gabin uh, Magruta, Wimbledon and French Open champion. Looks like she's going to be the starter for this one. You know, we've seen a lot of tennis athletes transition over to running marathons. You and I have both done the commentary in New York, and there's been a number of athletes that have come over. You know, it's, it's fun. I'm sure she's a big fan and, and will actually probably want to go for a run after seeing these athletes today. You can, you can go for the run. I shall be defrosting. <laughs> so you can see uh, the rest of this field. 
Fotin Tesfaye Hailu is in there, young Ethiopian. Esther Borura, one of the uh, Kenyan squad who was uh, fifth in the 10K here last year in 31.02. There she is, uh, tall figured second to left as you're looking at that picture, Esther Borura. And uh, there is one pacemaker in this field, that is uh, Faith Chetkoech. Let's hope she does uh, a really sound job here. She is in the top, that's more of an orange color there. So, engines revving. Charlotte Purdue of Great Britain to the left of picture. And away they go. Now, is this going to be quick or are they going to take it very, very conservatively through the opening uh, kilometers, as was the case for the women's half marathon, the first race of the day? Yeah, very slow off the start for the women's half marathon. You know, they had a little bit of a push and then ease off and push, almost like a fart licking out there today. But they made it up in the end and it was fireworks coming around the final bend. And what a great race that was. I hear, yep, settling in behind the pacer. Off the line a little bit quick, you know, they look like they're moving pretty good. The last couple races we've seen, it looks as if they are a little bit more subdued off the line, but obviously we are moving down a distance right now. We're running in the 10K. Yeah, and uh, this 10K race, well, on this uh, adjusted circuit of 1.3 kilometers, it's seven laps plus 844 meters. So they have a unique start for this 10K. But uh, we'll obviously bring you those kilometer splits as uh, often as we can. The uh, target time in this one, by the way, 29.50. That's 2.59 per kilometer. That might be a little bit optimistic on this cool and breezy morning. And that's not a great combination, although this race getting underway at the time that it did. Uh, 10 o'clock is a lot kinder than the 7 a.m. start for the women's half marathon earlier on. So Cynthia Chepengeno right on the right of your screen there. She made the Kenyan World Cross Country team just last month, right? no, in February. So about two months ago, time's flying But she didn't by. finish in she Bathurst. She didn't finish. She was sick. And they say redemption is the motivating factor potentially today. Well, they will key off the uh, pacemaker, who's, uh, as it happens, about the shortest athlete in the field, Faith Chep Coetch, but she's looking very, very smooth. Probably the most relaxed of all of them at the moment. Whereas uh, you talked about uh, Cynthia there to the right of picture, Cynthia Chepengeno. She's quite a busy athlete, the way she covers the ground. It doesn't matter how aesthetically pleasing you are to look at if you, if you cover the ground really well, but you can see there Cynthia uh, Chepengeno. Chepengetich, rather. Uh, Cynthia Chepengeno, it is, sorry. 22 years old, making her debut at 10K on the road from the uh, data I was able to pull out. So uh, a learning curve for many of these athletes. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is where it's at. I mean, you want to try a different distance. You want to try a race that isn't so maybe uh, hilly or the terrain is so challenging that you can't get into a rhythm. This is a perfect time to come and race a lot of different athletes from different countries here today, but many from the same country to work together and to pull yourself to a new a new time, new PB. Well, we're looking for uh, kilometer splits of 2.59, as I mentioned. The first kilometer was 2.52. So, wow, have they set they out? They look like they're out hard. Aggressively, that's great to see. And we're looking right there in the tall figure with the um, She's got a little bit of a, you can see those pink ribbons on their their jerseys. Joanne, Ch Joanne, Joanne Chalimo Melli, she is off to the right of the screen. If I can find her right there in the pack. She's back behind Agnes here. She's one of the athletes that started the foundation for the Tear Ups Angels, it's called Tear Ups Angels. And she is, her daughter was downstairs and they're selling bracelets today here. And Agnes Tirup was the woman that was murdered right after the Olympics. 
and they started a foundation. And it has been so neat to see the ladies come together for but Agnes. What was really horrible about that was that Agnes had set a world record here yes, at 3001 right. here. At, the, at this very yes. meeting in 2021. Uh, at, at, at you know the the road to records the yeah. inaugural road to records in 2021 set a world record and then murdered. It's it terrible, like, oh. and it it's been heavy here. You know, there's times where it's really really hard. You see, the tear ups angels on the the flags, but the ladies are down there remembering her and they're having fun and they're trying to spread the message that tear ups angels is trying to do and they're you know obviously trying to combat any sort of abuse, domestic abuse in Kenya, but also all over the world. So Joanne Shalimo's little girl, Ariana's down there. She said she and mom are going to go have chocolate after this race. <laughs> uh, Janet Chepin gets it to the uh, left of picture. Just uh, just coming in out there she is. Janet Chepin gets the 24 year old. She's in good shape. Won the Udine Half Marathon last September in 68 minutes and has had two great half marathons this year. A win in Verona back in early February in 66.58. And then she was second in Prague on the 1st of April in 66.42. Now listen to this. Janeth Chepengetic, Kerry, her personal best is 32.29. She's got to be worth two minutes quicker than that when you Ooh. look at her half marathon yep. racing. So she is due a massive PR today, personal best. PB, I should say. I, I, you know, your Americans influence my language. I say PR because you've got some Americans do. But thankfully, PB is catching on in the USA. It is. It is, definitely. Why is that? Well, I mean, everyone around the world says it, so let's get on board. We still say PR quite a bit, though. You still say aluminum. Yeah, and you say schedule. You want to go there? Let's go there, oh. Tim. What, what language do you speak? <laughs> I don't know even. <laughs> oh, no, no, that was a tough one. Okay, second kilometer 308. So that is, wow, contrastingly uh, slow yes. with the contrasting fit, fastness, or speed of the first one. A 252 and a 308. They look like they're moving again, though. They settled down in that second kilometer, but you can see there's an intensity now on the pace. They're right there behind the pacer. We want that intensity. They are shifting. By my reckoning, a 252 and a 308 should bring them round to uh, 2K in six minutes. But this 601 has come up somewhat bizarrely. Don't know where the extra second's been thrown in, but I think it's because actually there are fractions of seconds that uh, can be offered by the system, so they've just rounded it up, so to speak. 13 or so athletes in this lead pack. So it is a, a big pack from the 20 starters. And I think it will probably be that way for quite some time. I wonder how long the pacemaker will survive out there, Faith Chepkoet. She's uh, doing a great job at the moment. A lot of responsibility on her shoulders as the only pacemaker. It's always so much better if you can share that role. Still. Look at Cynthia Chepengeno there with that high arm carriage. And indeed, Janeth uh, Chepengetic has a high arm carriage too, doesn't she? That's a left of picture. Tim, I'd like to just step in here. The, the pink ribbons are not for Tear Ups Angels, although they are doing all kinds of great work for Tear Ups Angels. But the pink ribbons are actually for Reed Fisher's wife. So Reed Fisher was in the half marathon just me prior to this race and his wife just was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer and so all of these adidas athletes are coming together to support her and you can actually buy a t-shirt you can go to reed fisher's instagram page and it'll give you the link to where you can buy a t-shirt for her and all the proceeds will go to breast cancer research but she's young they just haven't been married there's got a super bright future in front of them and she's got this you know tough diagnosis right now so those pink ribbons on their shirt are for Reed Fisher's wife, and we are thinking of her and praying for her and hoping that she gets through her treatment okay. Well, the early pace was so quick here. 
that already athletes are peeling off the back and they're peeling off the back all the time. As you can see, I think uh, Cynthia Chepengeno is coming off. Well, our starter was the uh, fabulous tennis player Muguruza. And uh, she is uh, very much involved today. There you can see on the uh, bicycle, enjoying uh, a little bit of exercise on this extra circuit, probably to keep herself warm, frankly. Yeah, and Marcus is next to her, enjoying that bike ride. Well, there are uh, a bunch of Adidas bikes that you can uh, grab and move around the campus on. Which uh, we used last year, remember? We did use them last year. You, 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 you almost fell off yours. I did right? not! Stop it! You did! Okay, look at these athletes up. Just the way that they power through with these awesome new shoes that everyone's wearing. I wish I had them when I was competing, that's for sure. But 252 for the first kilometer, 308, and then coming back down again in 259. 259. So settling back in to that rhythm, right around three minute pace per. So exactly nine minutes at uh, 3K is what we're being told. And remember, we were looking in this race for uh, 259 per kilometer. So they're they're pretty much on it. Really good job being done here by the pacemaker. Solo job. Agnes uh, Ngetic there, the tallest perhaps of this pack, is hanging right on her shoulder, almost in touching distance the whole time. She is the athlete who we know is in great shape after that uh, bronze medal yeah. in Bathurst at the World Cross Country down in Australia. She came to Boston just last week, well, a, a week and a half ago, and ran the 5K there and was second and so she had a really great race there it's also an adidas event so just getting in a, a little bit of work there but she was fourth here in 2021 in the 5k running 1502 she's very young she's 22 only now so she's been racing at a high level for a very long time her mom was a great athlete she was a 10,000 meter runner in the 90s so she's got some times to chase absolutely Looking to at uh, another of the athletes there, Veronica, on a vest, Veronica Loleo. She is uh, probably heading for a big personal best if she can maintain this tempo. And Irene Kimais there to the right of the group. She was over on the other side, a lap or two back. She is keeping very close yeah, to the uh, pacemaker as well. Just ran 104.37, which is the world lead right now for the half marathon. She did that in February in Barcelona where she won. I think but I called that race as well. Did it, you? Yeah. Oh, it was a few weeks ago now, but yes, yeah, what a run she had. And of course, the weather in Spain through February, March, beautiful. They've got a heat wave but down now there hot. now. 38 degrees a couple of days ago yes. in Spain, a, a record for April uh, in, this, in the Spanish nation. Kind of worrying. 3 303 that fourth kilometer Ooh, so look at that. it clicks out a little bit Only world five record seconds off five seconds off yeah. world record tempo no, that world record let's just terrible. remind you about the world record of the 10k women yalom zerf yahua law 29 14 that was in castellon in spain in february last year 29 14 so they are on schedule to go a long way under 30 minutes at the moment fabulous running in this women's race The women's only world record is 30.01. Komadzina naitua Paris Chief Chief Chief. Mi ni mkimbiazi natoka Kenya. 2021-2022 nilipua mwana mke wa kwanza wa kike kuwin Olympic Marathon na New York Marathon na Boston Marathon. When I'm thinking about Paris, I think, you know, she likes to challenge. Her winning starts, you know, from the beginning. Uh, bado na nataka rekodi tena ya wanawake. Uh, nini kusema nafanya kitu nafanya. Yeah. Running makes me feel happy. I feel more energetic when I run in the morning. It gives me energy and you start your day in a good way. What's your sort of earliest memory of running? I did run a lot when I was young. I used to wake up and pray and then run like five in the morning. Running needs nothing. It was born free, goalpost free, 
finish line free. Running doesn't care whether you're breaking records or setting a record for breaks. Running needs nothing but you. They're still racing hard here, 15 minutes on the clock. We're at about halfway in this women's 10K uh, here in Herzegonalrak on the Adidas campus. This is the third of six elite races on this uh, cool, breezy Saturday morning, and it's looking good at the moment. They uh, went through 4K with a 3.03 clocking carry. And then they just went through 5K in a 3.06, so 15.08. They're on 30.16 pace as you can see they're they're dropping off that world record a little bit but keeping in mind the women's only world record is 301 uh you know we just got to talk with reed fisher he didn't know we were talking about him and he's just admiring the women wearing that pink ribbon for his wife christine he said she had another chemo treatment yesterday and she's doing great and i said how are you and he said i'm doing okay just ran close to his pb and he was kind of all alone today. 61.57. 61.57, but you know, lots, lots on his heart and on his mind right now. So yeah. big props to them. Thank you all for going to his Instagram and checking out. You can buy a great t-shirt if you want um, to help with some cancer research. Cool, I shall have a good look. Yeah, I it's an Adidas well. cool t-shirt. I, I just ordered one last week before I came. Did you? Yeah. Did you? So four across the front. Reed Fisher was saying actually that the section where there, the wind, he really felt the wind during his race, was a, 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 adjacent to the pond here uh, at the beginning of each lap as they head out. And remember, this, uh, this 10K is a uh, seven laps and 844 meters. So there's a section of maybe three or 400 meters where they're exposed to a headwind. And that is going to knock you back a little bit, lap after lap in the half marathon, of course, where they had 16 lap. It's understandably tough. Pacemaker has dropped out, done a wonderful job in this uh, 10K for women. Faith Chepkowicz, well done to her. Now we have racing on Janeth uh, Chepengetic, looking confident and strong, just tucked in alongside. Agnes and Getich, the taller figure there, who's clipped. And uh, she's chatting to those Ooh. behind her there, Janeth. Look at that, she's gesturing. Yep. Janeth Chepengetic, very, very uh, energetically gesturing to Foyton behind her and saying, come on, why don't you join in and help pull this pace along? Well, we've seen time and time again, when you get too close in these races, things can happen. And they are running very well and they're trying to you know, perform here on the Adidas campus, and this is a big deal for them. There are lots of eyes on all these athletes. They're, you know, this is a business, and you have to perform when the right people are watching, and all the right people are watching right now, so they're serious. It looks like everyone's settled back in now, though. Well, the women's only world record is that 30.01 by Agnes Tirop a couple of years back. That was under threat. For a brief period, I'm not sure that's the case anymore as they uh, approach 6K, 15.08 at 5K. Now it's uh, still possible they could get right down there towards 30 minutes. I mean, we see it time and time again in these races where they hit that halfway mark and they, they regroup, they start going again, and that's what it looks like. Everybody is back in this race. There is two, three, four, five, six, seven right up front, but two chasing hard to try to regain that position of being in that top pack, which is so crucial. Falling off is so hard in these races. 3.09 for that sixth kilometer. So that was uh, the slowest split of the race so far. 28 seconds outside world record tempo. Now they think the world record is not on, but uh, a quick time certainly is. One athlete that is in there is Fochin Tesfai, the 25-year-old uh, Ethiopian. 
cross-country team gold medal from 2019, Aarhus in uh, Denmark. And a uh, good young athlete who uh, has a 10K road best of 32 and a half minutes at altitude. But uh, 8.41 for 3,000 indoors, five years back. And certainly speed. got really good good uh, wheels on her, good speed. By the way, you can go to that uh, uh, QR code and if you scan that, join our global virtual race right now. Get out for a run this morning and be part of what's going on here. So we have 136 athletes here today. 22 countries are represented, but if you want to be a part of it, you definitely can do that through the app. But here they go. This is that new section of the course. Every time they go over it, they know they're almost close. They're a little bit closer to home. Well, and also I think that flattish section on this um, plastic grass that they're running on for about 90 meters, they get back onto this road, and this is where it gradually starts it's heading down. Downhill. So it's sort of it's a slight, very gradual climb up onto that section of grass outside the LS campus. Then they come back onto this road inside the campus, and it's now a long, gentle sweep down towards the uh, finish area, which of course they have to go past in this race seven times. Seven laps plus 844 meters in the 10K. The 10K men comes after this, by the way. Which is another one of those races where there are so many athletes that could win. Well, there is the scene from behind to the right of screen. You can see that one or two athletes beginning to drop off, off the uh, pack, Esther Porura, amongst them. And she's a 30-15 athlete. And she did that when she was third in Valencia back on the 15th of January. And she's struggling to go with us now. The tall figure, to that right-hand picture, the tall figure with a ponytail wearing 309 on her back. Maybe she's still in touch with them. I think she's still in touch they with They are. Them. They're working together. You know, that group up front is really tight. But the two that have fallen off have not fallen off any more than they did in that initial surge. So they're really staying with them. And that's a hard thing to do mentally. As you see people kind of make a little bit of distance in between, it's hard to regroup. But look at they are already coming back onto that pack. Well, Fortune uh, Tezfaye to the left of picture, just beginning to uh, impose herself. She was fifth in the world cross country in Bathurst. So she is uh, in very good form indeed. And she looks full of running, doesn't she, Fotchen? 311. Yeah, she for looks that, good. Uh, kilometer, the sixth, seven, sorry, carry the seventh kilometer, the throw, slowest of the race. That's maybe why she's surging. Picking it up a little bit. Look at her. Just smooth. And you know if you can run that well in that heat that they had in Australia, big storm coming through right after the women's race. So there was humidity, there was heat, there was all of it. And obviously being on the cross country course, she has that power, she has that grit. Well, she's asking questions now, is the 25-year-old Fotjen Tesfai Hailut, to give you her full name. Fifth in the world cross country. She doesn't have great track credentials, 15-12, but that was 16, six years ago for 5,000 on the track. 32.27 in Addis Ababa at altitude. That's great running at altitude, but 32.27 is a long way outside world class for 10,000 on the track. And yet, she's hitting a rich vein of form. Clearly, if you can finish the top 10 in the world cross country in this day and age, you are in superb shape. Well, the woman right behind her, Agnes Negetic, she is the one that beat her there. She was third at the 2023 World Cross Country Championship. So you know that they've run each against each other. They, they know each other and they definitely want to win. You know, they don't like to be beaten by people. So if you have a one up like Agnes Negetic does right now, the tall figure on the right of the screen, you know that Foyten is thinking about her and thinking she wants to get that one up on her today. Irene Kamais, you've talked about her. She's so fit right now has such great endurance running that 104.37, but also running a 106 just a little bit before that, after that, excuse me, in April. So she is very fit, but coming down in distance a little bit. Some of these athletes have been running that 10K, 12K distance, but Irene Kamais is the one that's been running the half marathons this year so far. And of course, we were chatting to one or two of the agents and specialists in the hotel yesterday, and they were 
querying whether or not, if you've had a couple of really tough, high caliber half marathons, that has taken something out of you. Are you feeling a little bit tired maybe? Right. Well, I mean, Irene Kamais is has got to be excited. She trains with Claudio uh, Berardelli, who's, uh, you know, obviously the coach of Iliad Kipchoge, who has so many people that are out there and doing great things. Patrick Sain. I'm sorry, sorry, Claudia. No, Claudia's her coach. Yeah. That is Evans and Evans Chabet and Benson Cabrudo, who did so well in Be Boston, excuse me, getting a little tongue tied as the day goes on. <laughs> it's the cold. Actually, it could be the age. <laughs> you should talk. I do. <laughs> 301. Yeah, the attack came in from Fortin Tesfai High Loop. And it shows in the stats, 3.01, 36 seconds outside the world record. Forget the world record, we've got great racing unfolding here. 8K in 24.30, that is uh, five miles, if you like it, in the old uh, country's currency uh, of English. Five English miles, 24.30, 3.01 for that eighth kilometre. And the aggressive racing to come over these next 2K, because this is still a pretty big group. Well, it is, and the one thing that we did hear about Irene Kamais, who's in the lead, is that she would be more conservative early on and then press hard, and that is exactly what she's doing. She trains with Claudia's group. She has these great athletes that she's looking forward to running with and getting great, uh, you know, stats like. So here she is, moving very hard in front. Yeah, Irene Kamais there, pointing down at the road as if to say keep to one side. I don't know if she's having a go there at a, a little word with Fortune and test by Hailu as if to say, can you stop? Maybe she's been clipped from behind if she's trying to say, look, just keep to one side, can you? But side by side here, Carrie, this indicates they're not really feeling the wind at this stage. Agnes and Getic moving to the front. So we've had three different leaders in the last three minutes. It is very tight in there. And you can see that Irene is not liking that. Agnes went to the front. Irene was almost right up on her. You know, those two are working together a little bit, it looks like. But definitely so much space. But yet they're so tight. And it can cause some problems. Clearly, Irene has Foyton in her head because she's telling her where to go. And that can sometimes psychologically take a little bit of a toll. Lagnus and Getic looks like she's very, very deeply focused on the job at hand. The eyes are pulled wide. The brow is stretched upwards. The tallest in this, her lead pack by some margin. Although Margaret Chalimo is still in there, isn't she? Tucked in, what, in about fifth place. She's a tall figure as well, Chalimo. Remember, 29.50. The sixth yes. fastest in history. Don't write her off. But there's aggressive running going on here, Carrie. The lead is changing again and again. It's almost like they're having a punch up. Yeah, they definitely are. Mar Margaret Chalimo, as you said, is also Irene Kamais' uh, training partner. So just working together a little bit, keying off each other. Not quite up there in the lead pack, is she anymore? Chalimo, that is. But so many great. Janet, Chep can get it. She's a 66 minute. Half marathoner, so has that strength as well. She's right there back in this this uh, quartet. Well, it's anybody's race. It's uh, wonderfully tight with 27 and three quarter minutes on the clock. 9K, they've just gone through 9K. That split will come up any second. 311, the seventh kilometer, and then a 301 when Watch and Tesfaya Hailu hit the front and ran really aggressively for two or three minutes. Then she lost the lead, and it's changed three or four times in the last five minutes now. 9K, that ninth kilometer, was a 3.04, so it's still quick. Oh, I like how Janet looks right now. She's looking around a little bit, but Foyton, she might be the one to watch. She's been on that side now. She's making a little bit of a move on the outside of Agnes. Ooh, that is that was critical right there. Lost her rhythm on that Anybody that turn. Right. These are the final stages where you need to have every single angle, and she did not have the right angle on that turn, Tim. Well, Irene Kameis is in the front, but there's nothing in it. You could uh, throw a big blanket over this quartet as they head on this down slope here. Nothing between these four, hardly anything. One athlete just beginning to drop away at the back of the group at the moment. Agnes and Getic, I think, in second place at the moment. Yes, it's Janet who's dropping back now. Janet, Chep and Getic. 
who has had two great half marathons this year. Maybe those are in her legs as Arin Kamais negotiates the one of the last turns, but Fortune is still there. Fortune Tesfai Hailu in second place, shadowing her stride for stride. And is Agnes uh, and Getic back in third place, losing this one down to raw speed. Yeah, she's been trying. Irene Kamais has been trying to run the legs out of Foyten. Foyten, he, she is the one that was fifth at the World Cross Country, and Agnes right behind her. Agnes and Getic was third, so she does have that advantage right now. But here we go. Foyten goes to the lead. What a battle between these two. They're racing so hard. It's like a couple of heavyweights slugging it out. Irene Kimais there. Wow. A prolific race, almost squeezed in against the curve by the Ethiopian Fortune Tesfai Hailu. Ethiopia against Kenya. And Ethiopia in the lead. But now Irene Kimais, the 24 year old Kenyan, hits the front. And has she got this one in the bag? 68 minutes for half marathon. She's broken eight times. She's got enormous strength, and she's used that strength there over the last couple of minutes to forge this narrow lead over the young Ethiopian, and she's going to take it, and it is quick. Look at the time, unofficially 30.23. Fabulous racing. Wow, you said it. She really kept the hammer on, but the way she tactically ran those final turns. We have soft turns on this course, but she ran them perfectly. She got into the position, and she almost ran exactly where she needed to do so she could beat Voiten, and she did that. Just a perfect tactician over the last 300, 400 meters. Well, that final kilometer was 2.55, 30.28. The official, uh, unofficial winning time will confirm that for you. But we have been treated to perhaps the race of the day in that women's 10K. Great job done by the solo pacemaker, Faith Chetkoic. Massive pass on the back for her to set this up. And then to the rest of them, because they battled for the lead again and again. None of them wanted yes. to give quarter. There was no watching each other, no cat and mouse games. It was hard and fast throughout. And you know, they have Agnes tear up on their mind, especially the Kenyans that were out there running. And Irene Kamai, she ran with that today. You know that she was thinking about her chasing after that world record of 30.01. Didn't quite get it. You can see 30.23, but what a race they all had there between Irene Kamais and Foyten Tesve. Wow, a battle to this tape. Absolutely brilliant. It's the fourth fastest time in the world Woo! this year. That means it's very quick. The previous, the three times that are faster were set in Valencia, the Eastern Spanish city where super fast times have been set again and again in uh, half marathon, marathon 10K over the last uh, five years and more but the fourth fastest time in the world this year by Irene Kimais, 30.23 to sprint to victory. They set off in this women's 10K at 10 a.m. local time here in southern Germany in Herzogenaurach on the Adidas campus, the field of 20 starters. And it was really good to see them going for it from the word go. They did. They really took it out fast, running their fastest split of the day in 2.52 for the first kilometer. And then settling into maybe more of an average around 3.03 for the rest of the race. But, you know, went out hard, attacked it. The pacemaker, as you said, nailed her job. And once that pacemaker left, it was really just a playing of cat and mouse. Different lead changes until the final stretch. 20 meters to go and we saw Irene take over. I was really impressed with the uh, Fortune Tesfai Hailu, the 25 year old Ethiopian. Her best uh, was fifth in the world cross country back in February. She knew she was in good form, but she got out sprinted here by the best of the Kenyans on the day. Barcelona half marathon champion back in February in 64.37. Irene Kimais had the strength. By the way, the first five setting personal bests in this women's race. Wonderful, wonderful times. As we have Irene. And we're here with the winner, Irene. Massive congratulations. Smashed your personal best there. How did that feel? I feel good. <coughs> this is my first 10K of the season. And I'm much happy, at least I have improved my PB. And today was my last race till next month. 
and I feel so glad to be here in Germany. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. And just one more question, because you timed your race to perfection there. What was going through your mind on those last, in that last kilometre when you timed everything perfectly and then overtook them for the victory? Okay, for me, I don't have the last kick. That's why I tried to push my last kilometre. Well, you did everything correctly. You got your personal best and we say congratulations and off to the ceremony you go. Thank you so much, Irene. Thank you. Thank you. I think she's still in shock, is Irene Kimais. Now that winning time, 30.23, is not only a personal best by almost a minute, but it is quicker than she's run on the track. Wow. The track best a couple <laughs> of years ago, 30.37. So Good it's an out her. and out PB. And just the way she raced, she has to be pleased with that. She answered every call, and then she actually made the final one, and it was all hers today. Well, you know what? The world record for women's only is 30.01 by Agnes Tirop two yeah. years ago. She was only, only uh, 22 seconds know, outside that. It's such that. a shame. But it is so, you know, it's so great to see that these athletes have come together for her. And they remember her, and they talk about her. They keep her alive in her spirit. And, yeah, we, you, a lot of the Adidas people as well, they miss her. Well, Perez Jepchirchir is uh, here. She won the guest of honor, the Olympic marathon champion, and uh, we caught up with her as well. Well, and from one fast athlete, straight on to someone really special, our guest of honor, Olympic marathon champion and fresh off a third place at the London Marathon, Paris Jepchirchir, welcome. Thank you so much. Well, Paris, last week you came third in London in 2018-38 and now you're here. Can you just tell us a little bit about this last week for you and how you feel about being here today? Uh, I'm feeling grateful and uh, I am happy for being that in London uh, because you know I'm coming, I was coming from injury and, and I, I thank God because I trained for a shorter time for two months of preparation for London and I emerged to be that place and um, I'm grateful to be here uh, watching, seeing uh, road record people are running. Um, I'm so glad, I'm so grateful to see people like Irene Kemais that run personal best time but uh, we don't lose hope because we're expecting for our records but we still have time to go yeah we have plenty of time to go and speaking of records the whole theme of the road to records is all about breaking records you've got quite a lot of experience at breaking records having broken the half marathon record on multiple occasions what goes through your mind when you know you're in record shape and then you approach a race wanting to break a record uh, because it depends on how your preparations, uh, when you are training, you know how many percent you are in training. So when you have something to do, you are supposed to be strong in mind, believe yourself. So that's why you end up getting breaking records because of actually hard work and believing yourself. Yeah. Now, you are self-coached and there's quite a few runners today that are running a 5k later in the public race. What's the best tip as a coach that you can give to them? Uh, I can say that is uh, because of self-discipline, you have to be disciplined by yourself. Uh, because even if there is coach without self-discipline, uh, I think you cannot do, you cannot emerge good things. So I can urge them to work hard, believe yourself, everything is possible, yeah. And what's next for you? But what's next for you? Um, I can say that um, I have still have a long way to go. I've not yet completed my missions. I have my targets in uh, my coming races, and uh, but I'm still in the field. Um, I still need more records by myself. Thank you. We have absolutely no doubt that there'll be more records for Paris Chepchichi to come. And we say thank you so much for joining us, Paris. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Komadzina naitua Paris Chepchichi. Mini mkimbiazi. Natoka Kenya. 2021-2022 nilipua mwana mke wa kwanza wa kike kuwin Olympic Marathon na New York Marathon na Boston Marathon. 
when I think about Perez, I think, you know, she likes to challenge. Her winning starts, you know, from the beginning. Ah, bado na nataka rekodi tena ya wanawake. Nini kusema nafanya kitu nafanya. Running needs nothing. It was born free, goalpost free, finish line free. Running doesn't care whether you're breaking records or setting a record for breaks. Running needs nothing but you. And the award ceremony of the 10 kilometer race in the women's category is ready. Finishing in third place in a personal best of 30-27 from Kenya, Agnes Jebet and get it. Finishing in second place with a time of 30.26, also personal best from Ethiopia, Fortune Tesfai Hailu. And the winner of the 10K race in the women's category in a personal best of 30.23 from Kenya, Irene Cheptumba Kimais. The medals and trophies are being presented by Garbin Muguruza, Adidas tennis athlete.
So there is the lineup for the next event on the track. The fourth of our six races in this uh, Adi Zero Road to Records uh, day of racing here in Herzogenaurach at the Adidas headquarters in southern Germany, about an hour and a half from Munich. Myself, Tim Hutchings, and Carrie Tollison with you now for these uh, next three races. We're half the way through. We've already had the women's half marathon, the men's half marathon, and a fabulous women's 10K just now. Things are hotting up as the races go on, and this uh, promises to be fast as well, this men's 10K. You can see the line up there. Several athletes have broken the magical 27-minute barrier. It used to be the 28-minute barrier that was special on the roads, but this is a new era. Times have moved on. And uh, now, to be really special, you have got to break the 27-minute barrier. And that may be possible today. The uh, target time is 26.40, which is 2 minutes 40 per kilometre. Now, when I was a lad, when I was racing, back and when uh -oh. everything was in black and white, 2.40 per kilometre equals 13.20 for 5,000 metres so on the track. And they used to be considered world-class, 13.20. Yeah. Now, it's a, everything's moved it's forward 15, through. 20 seconds. If you can't break 13 minutes now, you're a bum. Right. If you'll excuse my French. <laughs> uh, at least that's the way some people that's would like to split. think. That's their split. Yes. Yeah, I think we have, what, about five returning from last year. So we have a lot of names that have seen the course here and that are excited to be back. And, you know, they want that title. They want to know that they're the best on the Adidas headquarters. Yep. So last year, five men broke 27 minutes in this race. All five are back. Though Burundi's uh, Rodrigo Cuisera is in the 5K later on. He's uh, not in this 10K today. It was the first time in history five men have broken 27 minutes in one race. It was a very, very special day of racing. And uh, the defending champion, Kibiwat Kandi, the 26-year-old Kenyan, goes here. His personal best, 26.50, when he won last year. Uh, He's a special, special athlete in very, very good form. He's broken 60 minutes nine times for the half marathon. And he was, incidentally, he's an ex-world record holder. He was the first man in history to break 58 minutes for the half. That was uh, back in 2020. Sebastian Sawe goes in this field, the 28-year-old, second here last year in a personal best of 26.54. He was also seventh in the World Cross Country back in uh, mid-February. He's in great shape. And uh, Kari Kibirok Kandi mentioned him, the defending champion. Does he start as favourite because of that? I mean, I think so. You always have to. You don't, I don't know about you, but I think the defending champion always has to be in the, in the mix and the one that we talk about. And Ronix Kipruto. Well, Ronit Kipruto just happens to be the uh, man who is the world record of 10K on the road. 26.24 he ran to win in Valencia back in uh, January 2020. So this is perhaps the best field of the day so far. Sawe, Candy, Kipruto. Unbelievable strength and depth in this field. It's still breezy. It's still a cold Saturday morning here in southern Germany. Better than yesterday when it poured with rain most of the day, but uh, not ideal conditions, not by any means. And uh, that is a little bit frustrating because everything else has gone so well. And actually, when we walked down here this morning at 6 a.m. from the hotel, about four or five hundred meters away, conditions were perfect. It was really still, but the wind has still. picked up. A little bit damp this morning. I think that there's not quite as much dampness in the air, but yes, they are feeling that wind and they will feel it here as they make their way around the course. So these athletes are getting ready to get underway. Seven loops of this course with a little extra added on to make it 10K. Ronix Capruto right there with the white shorts. He's going to be the one to watch. As you said, he is the world record holder. Nobody's run faster than him over 10K on the roads. He has had some injuries, so he's not quite the same athlete that he was, but people are saying he's making his way back. 
Well, let's hope he's making his way back. He'll need to be at his best to contend with this field. The starter, Ricardo Leiter Okaka, soccer player, gets them underway in this fourth race of the day. The men's 10K here in this Adizero Road to Records uh, Festival of Elite Racing. And it does look quick, doesn't it? And there are two pacemakers out there, the Ugandan Martin Kipritic and Kenya's Vincent Keegan. And uh, let's hope they'll do as good a job as the other pacemakers so far today has done. Ronix Kipruto to the left of picture, with that uh, slightly strange arm carriage bouncing along. Well, our female winner from the 10K, Irene Kamais, her training partner right there, Sebastian Sawe, he is part of that training group, Claudia Ber Berdelli's group that trains so hard. They have so many big names in that group. You know that that is just contagious when you have guys that just finished first and third in the Boston Marathon, like Evan Schbett and Benson Cabrudo, and then you have other athletes that are here today wanting to win. You know that that is just kind of what is what's on the mind of all these athletes and when you're part of that training group it's definitely contagious well another athlete to watch who is uh forced himself to the front is tadesse he is uh, in that long sleeve t-shirt sort of right in the middle there behind the left hand orange vest ronix kipruto and uh Shadrach Ruto is there as well, left of picture, just making an adjustment to his vest and shorts. Just trying to see who else is there. Cosmos Mwangi to the right of picture. Right behind the pacemaker actually is uh, Morgos is there as well. well. This is quite the field as you said. We have four men that have gone under that 27 minute mark. I mean, pretty amazing to see that. They are the four who were in the first five last year. Yep. You know, on the track, as you said, when you break 27 minutes, that's still a huge number on the track. Now, this is on the roads. So obviously, there's different things that you're dealing with. So times aren't necessarily quite as fast. But we're seeing a little bit of change in that. I think with the technology now, we're seeing a little bit faster times on the roads. And they're getting a little bit closer. Seven laps and 844 meters. So they are, they've run the 844 meters, two and a half minutes on the clock. They're just uh, now heading out onto the first of the seven laps. And that's a big pack. And already athletes are peeling off the back because frankly, if you know you can't hold a certain tempo, you uh, know it very early on. You know it in the first couple of minutes and you have to be realistic and ease back on the throttle. But they are running aggressively, it's good to see. That section they've just crossed, by the way, adjacent to the uh, lake, is what we were told. Look at that first kilometer, Woo! 241. Wow, that's fast. I love that they have these pacemakers, though, that are willing to go for it and willing to put themselves out there. And that's exactly what our pacemaker is doing right now. He is out in front. He's leading that way. Some of the athletes trying to tuck in behind him here and there, making that big, almost like a V, like the birds do, right? Like they're in there and everyone that is in the middle of the pack is definitely at an advantage. Yeah, as they were adjacent to the lake, I was saying that that's where they're exposed to the wind is what Reed Fisher was saying that they've negotiated that. It almost count came and went yeah. in time to blink uh, as they negotiated that uh, plastic grass for about 90 meters outside the campus. Now back onto the circuit. And uh, Sebastian Sowe, right in the center there, the 28-year-old who was second here last year. He's run 27.09 on the track, not as quick as his road time of 26.54. Well, he got into the sport, Sowe, that is, in a, in a different way, but it's kind of an exciting way. I mean, he did run to and from school. He was an 800, 1500 meter guy because his uncle was a 2008 Beijing Olympic. Uh, runner in the 800 meters so he has this middle distance you know pedigree in his family but now moving up into distance a little bit kind of helps doesn't it if you have an uncle who ran in the olympics at 800 he does abraham shakirwak i must admit 
Um, Chep Kierwok, it's not a name that rings a bell, and I no. shouldn't remember it, because I, I, I was there at the, for the Beijing Olympics. But, well, uh, it's nice that his uncle ran, because he does have a brother and sister, and, you know, oftentimes you see this in many families around the world where everyone is a runner, and for him, his siblings weren't runners, but his uncle was, and so just nice that he can have somebody to key off of and, and, and hopefully, you know, have a little bit of fun talking about running with. Well, the other thing about Sebastian Sawe is that he is in fabulous shape. He won the Berlin Half Marathon on the 2nd of April in 59 minutes flat. Yep. And uh, the time they're going for in this 10K today is 26.40, 240 per kilometre. The first kilometre was 241, by the way. The uh, second kilometre, well, it'll come up any second now. We're hoping it's something similar, although they have negotiated a slight climb at uh, second kilometre has come up at 2.44, so that's still pretty good going. 5.25 at 2K. But they are shifting. I mean, they're going to go through 3K, not much outside eight minutes. Boy, oh boy. Well, they just went through 2K there, Tim, in 2.44, so they are on 27.04 pace. And Hailey is back here. I am going to let the man take over the mic. Oh, Carrie. We'll be I'll be back. Have no fear. They are moving now. And the pacemakers have gone. I think they've had enough. They can't live with this early pace. Kibiwak Kandi, the defending champion, really attacking here. It's almost like he's coming towards the home straight or some kind of a decision point. Tadese Worku in second place. He's the 21-year-old Ethiopian. Haile Kebir Selassie, welcome back, Haile. Thank you, you, thank you. You join us at the perfect time. We're just approaching three kilometers. Uh, Kibiwak Kandi, the defending champion, former world record holder. He's still uh, the second fastest in history, Kandi, uh, with 26.50. Uh, second for former world record holder at the half marathon, I should say, excuse me. Candy is leading and looking really, really aggressive. It's good to see them running so fast early on. Wow, wow, that's a, that's a, what I don't understand, you know, they should have, you know, just a pacemaker uh, in this race. And uh, the, the things what I've seen here, you know, it's, it's really, really, uh, really okay. It's good. Well, there, there were pacemakers. There were pacemakers, but they've gone. They, they were so, it was so quick, they couldn't stay. Ah, but you know, you have to, I mean, you have to choose the right one. <laughs> but you know, the, Well, you didn't offer your services. <laughs> Come on, you know, the, you, you shouldn't stop, you know, just uh, early of the, uh, the race. And uh, you have, I mean, you should have, you know, just something very good. And uh, you see, pacing for 10K must be somebody uh, uh, somebody very experienced, very good and fast. Yeah, yeah. I guess when it's so quick, your judgment has got to be a little bit more fine, hasn't it? You have, there's not so much room for mistakes. If it's a half marathon, you can be a few seconds out at, at the kilometre points. But in a 10k, every second is precious. Very important. Every step, you know, very important in 10 and 5. And uh, that's why, you know, the pacemaker has to be perfect. And, uh, uh, so 3K time, 2.39 for that second kilometre. I knew Candy was running aggressive. Candy was 8.04 at 3K. Highly, it's looking very, very promising. There we, maybe the wind has dropped. I think the wind has dropped. Yeah, now, now, now it's really you know getting... The sun is coming. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I really, if you, if you really want to do something, this is a really a right time. So, we have a new leader. And it is aggressive running. Coming in, coming in from Jim Dessa, is it? Yes, it is. But Kibiwak Kandi now moving back to the front. Gemachu is uh, looking strong. Yeah, bouncing along. He's Again, he's a very solid guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he built. is. He is. See, he's... Uh, Gemachut Diriba, Gemachut Diba, Dida Diriba, 
Yeah. He's great form. He set a personal best five weeks ago. That was in Lille. He won in Lille in France on the 19th of March in 27-12. We know he's in good shape. By the way, join our global virtual race now. Scan that QR code and get involved. Come on, join in the fun here today at Herzogenau Rack as that pack, which was about 15 or 17 strong, has suddenly become smaller because the running is so aggressive. There's what, about eight now in this lead pack easing away. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really uh, wonderful. What I see here, as I know, uh, attaining uh, 5,000 uh, meters athlete, you have to, you have to, you have to be like this. And uh, uh, the previous uh, race, as you see, you know, just as a big pack. Now, no, they, they are really uh, working together and uh, moving to, I mean, moving, you know, uh, step by step and. Uh, of course, still, you know, just uh, a lot of things to do, to work and uh, to catch the time. And uh, uh, okay, still, still, you know, they are watching each other. And, uh, that's that's not uh, the only part. You know, you have to. Uh, we are here, you know, just to do something, to run the time. So, Gemachu at the front, Gemachu Dida Diriba. He was a fourth in the Rack Half Marathon back in February in 59.53. We know he's in great shape. Ronix Kipruto fighting his way back to full fitness. He is uh, the world record holder. That's all. 4K, by the way. Another 2.39 highlight. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that really good. That is super fast. That's good. They are closing yeah. in on that world record. 10.44 at 4K. 16 seconds outside the world uh, leading the mark. And, uh, uh, I don't know what is that the world leading mark means, you know. The fastest time in the world this year, 26.33. Oh, wow. By oh. Berehu Aregawi. That was in Laredo on the 11th of March down yeah. in Spain. Uh, three men have broken 27 minutes this year. But uh, in history, 14 men have broken uh, 27 minutes for 10K on the road. Wow. Wow, you see? At this rate, we're gonna, it's going to become 15 or more, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you see. Uh, and there's a highly Gabriel Selassie on this list, oh highly. Yeah. But, but <laughs> only 2702, you yeah, lazy That was a long you. time ago, you know, 2002. It was 2002. Yeah. Where, where was it? That was in uh, Qatar. Doha. Yes, Doha, very good. Yeah, Doha. It's a million dollar uh, prize. And you won it? Yeah. And no wonder <laughs> you're smiling. Winning, you know, break the world record. Wow. <laughs> well, we might get a world record here this morning. If not in this 10K, we've got the two 5Ks to come. If you've just joined us, we've had women's and men's half marathons, women's 10K. This is the men's 10K here at this Ada Zero Road to Record. Coming up, the women's 5K and then the men's 5K over the next hour or so. Ronex Kipruto looking really strong. Kibiwat Candy looking super strong, the defending champion. He looks relaxed, doesn't he, Kibiwat Candy? Yeah, he is. He is. Uh, Wow, that I think you know this uh, this tank uh, for me until now it looks very very strong, very good in terms of time, in terms of uh, many many things you know compared to the previous r races. Well, the uh, weather's better. Oh yeah, it it's is warmer. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. no wind. Yeah, no wind and wow, well, it's a perfect atmosphere. I'm telling you, it's a really. Though I mean, what we need you know just to. to to have a more, more, more uh, effort, you know, from the athlete uh, side, and uh, uh, well, they, they, they're doing good, but uh, they need, you know, one more move. Well, they, they, the funny, not the funny, but they, as you see, you know, all they have, you know, the same, the same shoes, and uh, you cannot see any different bit among them, <laughs> and uh, well, beautiful, there really. That's slightly slower, that fifth kilometre, 244. Yeah, that's the slowest. So that has them, uh, the projected winning time, by the way, is still 26.54, so they're still on sh schedule for the uh, sub-27 minutes. There's the kilometre split so far, 41, 44, 39, 39, and then, and then a 44. 44. They've had a little little rest in yeah. the middle of the race, highly. Yeah, exactly. I, I, think, I think time to wake up. And uh, I, what I see here, okay, Kibiot, you know, is moving. Yeah, he understood, you know, just to, oh, that's, that's great, you know, very yeah, great shape, great looking. And uh, yeah, 
13.27 at 5K after a 2.44. Wow. Give me what candy. The uh, bronze medalist at the Commonwealth Games over 10,000 last summer with 27.20. Kenyan champion with 27.33 at altitude last year. He's very rarely out of the first three, Kibi Watkandi. He's a super consistent racer. He was a late starter to the sport. It comes from a very, very humble beginnings, a very humble start in life. And uh, he was inspired by his neighbor, a certain guy called Paul Turgat was one of his close neighbours. Is he? Yeah. Oh, wow, wow. And he was inspired. He used to go and talk with Paul Turgat, yeah. get inspiration from him. Wow, this, this is really, really very good, you know. That, that's what I appreciate in uh, the athlete, you know. And he's breaking away now, or he's breaking up the group, Kibiwak Candy. Ronix Kipruto, the world record holder in second place. About 4K to go, and it's building wonderfully in this men's 10K. <laughs> Running needs nothing. It likes fast times, slow times, but most of all, good times. Has he got a gap then? Almost 6K on the clock, and Kibiwak Kande seems to be getting daylight between himself and the rest. Ronex Kipruto on the way back from injury was fourth here last year in 26.58. His personal best is the world record set in Valencia in 2020, 26.24. It's not that quick today, but it is super fast. And uh, highly, when you get in front like this and you get a gap, do you sort of think to yourself, you feel better? Do you want to push on even more? Yeah, you, you see, the, the, uh, well, uh, let, let me talk about you know, this athlete. You know, he's, he, uh, you know, 237, you know, wow. the last, the, 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 the last kilometer. And uh, look at, you know, just his style, uh, his uh, shape. Wow, what a wonderful. You know, now I believe, you know, just uh, this guy, you know, just he, he, he keeps, you know, just uh, the, uh, the pace uh, as it is. And I don't think, you know, just uh, he wait, you know, the others because he, he has to, he has to keep, you know, this pace, you know, he has to move like this. Otherwise, well, in my time, you know, just once, you know, you move, once you, I mean, uh, leave the rest, you have to keep, you know, the pace. Otherwise, when they come behind, very difficult. Otherwise, it's wasted effort. You've, you've, yeah. you've worked hard, you've, you work so hard to get yeah. a gap, and then if you relax, they close up. Yeah, so and then it's just the advantage of the uh, people who, I mean, uh, staying behind. Now, time to him. Now, just uh, up to him. So through 6K in 1604 with a 237 clocking. Kibiwak Kandye, the defending champion, world, former world record holder in the half marathon. He leads, but look at Sebastian Sawe, second here last year in 2654, recent winner of the Berlin half marathon. That was at the beginning of April in 59 minutes flat. He's in fabulous form. Indeed, last year, Four half marathons in 2022. He ran 59.02 to win Seville. He won the Rome Ostia in 58.02, was sixth in Valencia, and then he won in Manama in 58.58. He won three of his four half marathons last year, Sebastian Sawe. So he is a tough, tough competitor. Yeah, I can see. I can see. He's, uh, he's, uh, he looks, you know, just he's still strong and uh, he's very fresh. And uh, uh, wow, wow. He, he is. Uh, I can see, you know, just this face compared to Kibot and uh, Kibot also still strong. And uh, wow, that's uh, that's a really good a good part of the race. This is turning into a quite majestic battle over 10k through halfway in 13:27. Kibiwat Kandi, the defending champion, in second place now. Sebastian Sawe. The second place of last year, that is his personal best, 26.54, takes the lead. That 26.54, by the way, is quicker than his track best of 27.09. And he pushes on now. 2.44, yeah, that seventh kilometre, a little, little bit slower. slower. Yeah, a little slower. slower. Yeah, yeah, I can see. 18.48, but that still gives them a projected winning time of uh, 26.49. Those the last three kilometers. Look at that fluctuation. 2.44, 2.37, 2.44 again. Yeah. 
They are absolutely redlining here. They are flat out. Yeah. Great to see. And highly, it's because the conditions have improved. Not so much wind, sun yeah. is shining. Exactly. It's exactly. three or four degrees warmer. That, that it's helped a lot for the athlete. As you see here, uh, all of them, you know, they, they, they relax and, uh, you know, the, the body uh, reply uh, perfectly. And uh, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's just amazing, you know, it's a lapping athlete over here. That, yeah, uh, lapping an athlete. Yeah. Nicholas Kipkore yeah. in third place, by wow. the way. Wow. Uh, was, uh, he won in Brasov in Romania last September 26.51. So he is a sub-27 performer. He was only 13th in the World Cross Country in Bathurst, but was second here last year in the 5K in 12.55. So he has great speed, really yeah, good he speed. Yeah, he is. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at this. This is really, really, really. Sawai getting a gap. Yeah. And Kimi wow. Wakandi may be losing his added zero road to records title here as there is a yeah. battle for second place. Sawe looking quite superb. This is a slight upslope here, a little bit of climb. Yeah, yeah, here. a bit, a bit. You know, this part of the rest, you know, just as you said, you know, a little bit. But uh, most of. I'm a, most of the course is flat and uh, uh, maybe small problem, but it's not that much. Uh, it's, uh, of course, uh, a curve because it's uh, too many laps. Uh, uh, but uh, the rest, you know, it's uh, wonderful. I, I really, if, uh, if you really prepare, you know, just uh, right pacemaker, right uh, pace uh, to keep, I mean, it, it can be a world record, uh, but still, still doing well, and uh, I'm so happy what I what I see here. Well, this is where they take that right-hand turn, bottom of the screen, and then at the downslope, they're following the black lead vehicle with a timing clock on it. That's what the camera pictures are coming from as well. The tenth, the eighth kilometer, two forty-two. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's pretty quick. They're twenty seconds outside world record schedule, twenty-one thirty at 8K, and Sebastian Sawe has got that gap, but he's not really growing the gap at the moment. He's, yeah, he's yeah. worked so hard to get the gap in the first place. Well, this race, it can be, you know, just a race, well, uh, first, I mean, the front one, you know, almost moving, but uh, you don't know, still, you cannot predicate, you know, who's, who's going to win, but, you know, it looks, Sebastian, it looks very good, very strong, uh, and, uh, uh, his style is very economical. Uh, Sebastian, uh, really, it's a very good marathon run. Yeah, he's moving well. Yeah. He's moving well. The winner of the Berlin Half Marathon earlier on this month. Last year, he broke 60 minutes in the Half Marathon four times, Sebastian Sawe. It is familiar territory for him. He's in wonderful form, we know that. He's yeah. married with a couple of kids. He's got a, a two-year-old girl and a, a, a boy of just nine months. So maybe that's inspiring him here towards this victory and super fast time and the prize money as well. 23 minutes on the clock. Sebastian Sawe. While he leads highly, that gap is only about 20 meters. He, yeah, he yeah, can't yeah, get yeah. the gap to grow. You see, he's, he's a really, he's the action and shape, the way how he's running. It's a perfect marathon style. It's a perfect half marathon style. And that's why it's hard to catch him, you know, just because he can, you see, no chance, you know, to, to closer uh, to this guy. Uh, he's doing well, but wonderful, you know, all the action, everything. And while well, winning for him, it's, it's not that uh, hard thing uh, after this. He moves really well, powerful legs. Still looks relaxed, although there's a little bit of a grimace there. Sawe is having to dig deep now. Candy is trying to come back at uh, Kimeli. Indeed, are they going to start working together, Kimeli and Candy? They are in second and third, almost locked together. Sawe has more of a gap. That gap has grown in the last two minutes from about 20 meters to something like 40 meters. 24 minutes on the clock. He is pouring it on. He has a seven second lead, so that's more like 50 meters. 
There's the ninth K, 2.38. Oh, That's man. why he's got the lead. He's dug really deep on that downhill section and the flat section beside the lake yeah. to get this gap. Now, can he hang on to it? Yeah, wow, that's a, that's a really... This is the the second fastest uh, kilometer, I can say, uh, uh, next to 237, now 238. And, uh, well, uh, wow. the question is, you know, what is the last kilometer now? Uh, uh, kilometer nine now. Uh. There's the scene from behind. Kimeli still in second place. Candy being dragged along by his compatriot. But Sebastian Sawe in this 1-2-3 for Kenya has that lead. He was second here last year to Kibiwak Kandi. Kandi is back in third place, the defending champion. He won't want to lose this. But he's got to fight back and pass Kimeli and then close that yawning gap up to Sawe, who is about 50 metres ahead. And Sawe is working hard here. 25 minutes on the clock. We're on the final lap. Sawe negotiates these last few turns. We're going to see a sub 27 minute clocking. There's no doubt about that. 9K in, was a 2.38. 9K in 24.08. And that gap is still 40 or 50 meters high. Level. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, for them uh, to, catch, to catch up, you know, just you know, no chance. But uh, uh, what I see here, you know, just to. Uh, to walk a little bit, you know, from uh, from you know, just uh, his side, and uh, wow, that's just, uh, that's it. the battle goes on for second place. Sebastian Sawe leads. Are we seeing history unfold here? The world record, well, that 26:24, that is safe. The fastest time in the world this year, 26:33, is the second fastest time ever. That is now safe. But this is going to be incredibly quick. Sebastian Sawe, 26.54 for second last year. He's going to be quicker than that, surely. Or is he as he drives towards the line? Watch the clock. This is quick. Sawe wins. 26.49 unofficially. Candy does get second place. Loses his title, but just gets ahead of Kimeli. The first three way under 27 minutes. Brilliant, brilliant racing yet again on the streets of the Adidas campus here in Herzegonarak. Adi Zero, road to records 2023, delivers at 10K for the men. Spectacular stuff. Highly, I know sitting here watching this, you want to be out there, but that was a race to really savour, to enjoy. Wow, it's amazing. You know, I'm sitting with you, but you know, my, my feeling still inside. <laughs> and uh, I'm not too sure to know I, that way. feeling stays with you, oh, I can tell man, you. Man, man, what a, what a wonderful race. Out of you know many of those races, you know, this morning, you know, this 10k is amazing. It's a uh, incredible. Wow, wonderful. Congratulations, you know, for all of those. Even you know the time what they've done, you know, wonderful. 20, I mean, 26:49 and 26:53, and uh, very close to each other, and. Uh, Look at those finishing times. The first three, way under 27 minutes. And then Ronix Kibruto, 27.09 in fourth. He is fighting his way back to full fitness. That's a great run from Kipruto. And Michel, I think, is down there at the finish line. Michel. And we're here with the winner, Sebastian Sava. Last year second, this year the win. How much does that mean to you? I'm happy. Today. I was the second last year, and today I'm a winner. I thank God I'm happy. And you've been in phenomenal shape recently. You've won the Berlin ha Marathon recently. You won in Rome, you won in Seville. What's next for you in that kind of shape? <sighs> There's another 10K, which is in Bangalore. I think now I went back and then I will prepare for it. Yeah, next month, this month. And I've heard from a little birdie that last time when you won the Berlin Half Marathon, you showed some nice dance moves afterwards. Can you show us a little victory dance here for everyone together? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations and off to the ceremony you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that was special. Bangalore.
10K is next. That's in just a couple of weeks' time. But Sawe's winning time confirmed at 26.49. Head of Candy's 26.53 and Korea Kimeli 26.54. Great running from Ronix Kipruto in 27.09. Levi Kibet 27.14 in fifth. I mean, the place time's just superb. Well, Michel is uh, down there with uh, Ricardo Leita. Uh, Kaka, the famous football player. We saw him on a bike a little while ago, but I think he's now just standing on his own two feet. Uh, is he ready with you, Michel, or should we carry an eye now? Carry on. Highly has rushed off. I think probably he's got a cup of hot cocoa. It's still a little bit breezy and cool up here on the balcony. Oh, that heated us up, though. That last race, that was exciting. Oh. <laughs> just... Superhuman racing from Sebastian Sohn. He was hurting from a few minutes out too. He worked so hard to get that gap. Because of that, I was sort of hoping he wouldn't be caught, and he wasn't. 26.49. I mean, that is the fifth fastest time in history. Wow. Quite astonishing. And here is Kaka. Michel. Thank you so much. And look who I've got here with me. It's Kaka and Gabin. Thank you so much for joining us. And we've just had a quick chat there. Footballers have a bit of a reputation that maybe they don't like running so much, but you <laughs> raced the BMW Berlin Marathon last year. How is that for you, and how much do you appreciate the results that these guys here are putting on today? Yeah, I always like it to run. So when I finished my career, I decided to run a marathon, and so Berlin was the, the, the best choice for me. And I did it three hours 38 last year. For me, it was really good time, and I really enjoyed the, the time and run a marathon in Berlin. It was amazing. The atmosphere of running, it's really, really special. So for me, it was a, a big achievement as well. And Gavin, we've just talked because you're lining up later in the 5K. How do you feel about that? Oh God, I am excited just to be part of it. Let's just say it like that. Um, you know, tennis players, we only run lateral side. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. And you mentioned being part of this, Kaka. I mean, this is such a phenomenal event. There's so many people that are coming together, world-class athletes, absolute legends, and then many other Adidas runners as well. How does that feel to be here on campus? Yeah, it's really nice to be here on the campus and having this sport atmosphere for us that we live in sports every day. It's really, really amazing. So it's a different sport, but the atmosphere is always the, the same. The competitiveness, all the things that move us on to improve and to get better. For me, it's really special. And for you, Gabin, if you look around, what's the most inspiring thing about seeing A, these elite athletes and B, everyone that is celebrating him, put pushing on to personal bests, two national records and to possibly even a world record? Well, it's amazing. It's actually the first time I'm in a running event. So I'm excited just to watch. And obviously being here at Adidas headquarters makes it very special to be here. And we think it's so special to have both of you here. Thank you both so much. And off you go and good luck later with the 5K. Thank you. Thank you. Well, great to hear that they are both into their running. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the easiest thing to do, isn't it, running? You don't need any equipment, you just need yourself. Indeed, as uh, Adidas say, running needs nothing but you. You don't have to book a court, you don't need any equipment, any racket and balls, you don't have to be anywhere at any time. Just got to have a lot of grit. A little bit of grit. A lot of grit. It's right outside your front door. Yes, right I love it. Right outside your front door, that's where the course is. That's There's where the nothing like a run, is there, really, <laughs> once it's done? Yeah, lying in bed with a cup of tea and the newspapers and <laughs> But you always feel better, no matter if you're going for a do walk you? or a run, every time. No, I do. You're right. You're right. I, mean, I know. It is. Do you, know, you know what I always say? Is the hardest step is the first one yeah. over the door. Yep. If you can get up and get out and take that first step. Lacing it up. Yeah, exactly. And, and, it, and it's easy. Yeah. You, there's no skill. It's not like riding a bike or driving a car or, or learning to play tennis. Yeah. No, it, it's a skill we're all born with, funnily enough. I running, know. jogging. Yes. Well, this was the start this morning at uh, uh, 10.55 for this men's uh, 10K here in Herzogenaurach. And the weather improved, the wind dropped, the sun came out. They got a little bit warmer mid-race and the split started coming through thick and fast and very fast. The third kilometre was a 2.39, the fourth kilometre a 2.39, the sixth kilometre a 2.37. 
the ninth kilometer at 2.38, and the uh, tenth kilometer, I'm still trying to calculate the tenth kilometer, Carrie. You talk, you talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so fast. And, you know, those guys that were in second and third, they were closing hard on Sawe. It was 2.41. Does that make and sense? still doing the math, yes. Yeah, 2.41, yes. the final kilometer. I mean... You know, these are track times that were right. super fast not many years ago. And these guys are doing it on the roads. And what I loved about Sawe's run is he worked so hard he to did. get that gap. You know, he it was sheer grit. You were talking about grit. This was grit to break the world record or to break the yes. defending champion in Ronix, the Ronix Capruto and uh, Candy and uh, Kimeli as well, who's been in wonderful form. He was second here last year in the 5K. And to go on and win in 26.49, become number five all time. Wow. And you have to give it up to Camelli and Candy. They, they were right there. They did not give in one inch. Look at them all. All three in that finishing stretch, which is not that long. They all pushed hard, and they had a great race. Absolutely. And then they're all saying congratulations to each other. Look at those smiles. That's what it's all about. And Sawe was still able to respond to uh, Michelle's uh, extraordinary dance. demand for some <laughs> dance moves there about two minutes after he'd yeah. uh, become one of the fastest men in history. There is the lake. You can tell from the surface, the wind's back a bit, yeah, can't you? It's just a legs. little bit rougher. Ooh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they were saying, you see those flags? Well, the runners are in the background, they run from left to right. Uh -huh. in, so you can tell they're running to the, the headwind. headwind. Yes. That's what exactly what Reed Fisher was saying. The wind and that exposed stretch adjacent to the water is 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 pretty tough. For three or four hundred meters, they they got it in their faces. And for the half marathon runners, that that's was sixteen lot. times. Right. Now we have the five K coming up, three laps. Five K women, five K men. Let's hope that wind drops again both the 5k races wouldn't that be special it would be great i mean we have some amazing athletes especially in this women's race we're going to give you the field after this award ceremony but the one to watch is samberi teferi she's won here twice so she wants to win again well here's the uh, fellas who were the first three in that spectacular men's 10k and i think michelle is ready for this presentation ceremony the award ceremony of the 10 kilometers race in the men's category is ready. Finishing in third place with a time of 26.54. From Kenya, Kimeli Nicolas Kipkorea. <laughs> Finishing in second place with a time of 26.53. Also from Kenya, Kibiwot Kandi. And the winner of the 10 kilometer race in the men's category in a time of 26.49 from Kenya, Sebastian Sawe. The medals and trophies are being presented by Ricardo Late Kaka, Adidas Ambassador.
together, we are one the same. Together, winning is our only aim. Stand up for the champion. Well, coming up, the uh, 5K races for women and men, respectively, to uh, close this day of racing, this wonderful festival racing, the Addis Era Road to Records of 2023, the third edition of the Road to Records around this Adidas campus here in Herzogenaurach, southern Germany. There is the uh, men's champion in the 10K, Sebastian Sawe, who has just run a new personal best to become the fifth fastest man in history, the 26.49. And Carrie, there's that field for the women's five kilometers, 21 starters, including two paces. Yes, it's going to be an amazing field today. We have Sinberry Teferi, who is the two-time defending champion here in the 5K. She's won here and knows this course is all smiles. We've been seeing her have such a phenomenal last couple of years, but she really has been on campus this weekend just enjoying herself. And you know when you've won here twice, it's a lot of fun to come back. Absolutely, yeah, you always have a good feeling, don't you, when you return to a place where you've had a successful result, a really solid result, gives you more confidence, makes you feel comfortable in the environment, uh, familiar faces as yeah. well, Every, everything about it, is, it creates that sort of circle of comfort around your, your, the challenge you're facing. Well, and I think as an athlete, when you travel all over the world, like a lot of these athletes do, when you, when you know what the type of food is or what the food is going to taste like or what your living arrangements is going to be like what the course is like what kind of training you can do it really does put that sense of ease into your your mindset and into the whole trip so it definitely helps when you know where you've been and and when you've won here before that gives you an extra little pep in your step well, let's have a look at the best of what we've seen so far today. Four races have come through, the women's and men's half marathons and the women's and men's 10Ks. The uh, two 5K races to come. We're hoping perhaps for something rather special in uh, at least one, if not both, of those races. Well, just to clarify things, the uh, two 5K races coming up, the women first and the men next. Pacemakers in both those races. The uh, public race with about roughly 1,200 local residents is coming up at 1.15 local time. So a little while yet until that comes through. But uh, And they'll do the two waves of that, so it's going to be super fun. Two waves? Yep, oh, I didn't a know group that. Of I didn't know that. Athletes that have run under 22 minutes will start the race, and then they'll have the rest after that. Now, Carrie, the uh, yes. world record in the women's 5K on the roads is 14.19. And the uh, target time today is 14.28. That would be 2.53 per kilometer. Edgegehu Taye set that world record of 14.19 in uh, Barcelona on the 31st of December 2021. They love their New Year's race, New Year's Eve races down in Spain. I did one or two myself. I, I remember doing one so where we run through a tunnel of people and they were throwing firecrackers under our feet as oh, we were cool. running along. I mean, was it, it was scary or fun? It nearly made me... Do, my, do you know what to myself? Oh, get out of here. It is unbelievable. You didn't know it was coming. Didn't know it was coming. And the tunnel's uh, getting narrower and narrower. Oh, yeah. Especially as I was they some got way you back. Going. So the leaders had gone Maybe through. I needed that in life. That's when I was racing, I should have had somebody do well, that. I'll tell you what, it keeps you regular. <laughs> <laughs> so the women's 5K race coming up. 21 starters, including uh, Caroline Bjorkli Grovdal of Norway, the 32-year-old who is... Uh, uh, European cross-country champion twice in 2021 and 2022. There she is right in the center, but she has some tough African opponents. Yeah, she does. She's a three-time Olympian, though. She does everything from the you know 5K all the way up to the half marathon. Not quite yet a marathoner, but it looks like she's thinking about making that step to 26.2. She's run very well on the roads, so though. 15.04 on the roads. Her track PB is a national record, 
She's got great 1500 meter speed, but here they go. Again, the name to watch, Sinberry Teferi. She will be out in front. She is so good over so many distances, but this race right here is one that she loves to run and loves to win. I'm trying to see if I, oh, there she is. She's right behind the Pacers, found herself right there. There's Sinberry Teferi. You'll see her right in the middle of those two Pacers in the lime green Adidas kits. So they are lucky. They have their unique start for this 10K just to make up the distance from the uh, 5K, rather. Excuse me, it's three laps plus 1,076 meters. Uh, so not much room for error over 5K. We're expecting this race to be won in under 15 minutes, some way under 15 minutes. And the fastest time in the world this year is uh, 14.35 by Caroline Niaga. That was in Lille back on the 19th of March. That's still a tough target. Anything out of 15 minutes is strong running. Anything down towards 14.30 is fantastically fast running. World record, as I mentioned, 14.19. And the splits we're looking for, remember, 2.53 per kilometre. So just over a minute on the clock now. And we'll keep you abreast of that progress. already thinning out. So 14.29 is that women's world record that's held by Sinberry Teferi. You know, last year she was out pretty much on her own and the year before as well. But this year, in this early running, this first kilometer, Sinberry Teferi definitely has some traffic around her. It looks like the youngster, Brenda Chabet, on the outside there, she's only 19 years old, but she has run 14.57 on the track. She's also a very good 800-meter runner. So. She's young, but she's very experienced on the track. She's run 202 for the 800, and she's also run 404 for the 1500. I mean, this this girl who now is a little bit further back in that pack, but she's right still out on the right side. She's the taller figure. Her name is Brenda Chabet. She is one we need to watch because I think for a long time we're going to be calling her name in races. Well, the men in that 10K have shown the way. The racing was hard and aggressive from the gun. It looks to be that way here too. Well, they went through in 2.58. So they are off that world record pace. You can see here 19 seconds off already. Yeah, they needed to be uh, 2.53. So they were five seconds off in that first K. Now as they make their way into the wind here, this is that stretch where they are going into the wind. And Sinberry is not, not settling in right behind the pacer. A little surprising. Just grab that QR code with your phone and uh, make it to the finish line by joining our global virtual race right now and drill into other exciting stuff here on this Adizero Road to Records Day of 2023. Alina Rey of Germany already some way back. Grovdal working hard at the back of this group, back in what, about 10th place at the moment. She will be a hard one to break, Grovdal. She is a great racer. She stepped up her performances. At the age of 32 now, the Norwegian has uh, become a different quality racer this last couple of years. 8.33 for 3,000, 14.31, a national record set last summer for 5,000 on the track. 14.31 on the track, but only 15.04 on the road from Grovdal. Mm -hmm. So she's, yep. she's due a big improvement on her PR, PB for uh, 5K on the road. Well, they started, what, just four and a half minutes ago now. That was at uh, 11.40 local time. And this uh, pacemaker doing a good job dragging them out here. Brenda Chabet. 
reckon, what, about fourth place there, just to the right, the tall figure to the right of the group. There's a gold medal from the mixed relay back in uh, Bathurst on the 18th of April. She ran the last leg for the uh, Kenyan team that could, took gold. She's a relative newcomer, though, yeah. Brenda Chibet, only 19. She's only 19, but she has the sights set, she says, to get the 800-meter national record in Kenya. That belongs to P Pamela Jalimo, Jalimo, excuse me. She wants to run 154, so she's got this wide range already. Not quite sure she's still thinking 800 specific when she's seen that she's had such success over all the other distances. But Sunberry Teferi just saw her in March in New York run right behind Helen O'Beary at the NYC half, the New York City half marathon. She looked good there, uh, maybe not quite as spunky as I've seen her in the past. She's, you know, toyed with the idea of running the marathon and actually was set to run one this year, decided not to. She was going to run the Vienna Marathon. Wasn't quite 100%, but she has such great speed and endurance that she can sort of pick any distance and do well at that. That's Sinberry Teferi that I'm speaking about. Watch, her track pedigree is unquestionable. I mean, 4.01 for 1,500, 8.32 for yeah. 3,000, 14.15, one of the fastest athletes in history for 5,000 on the track. This is 5K on the road, and uh, Teferi may produce something pretty special here today. I like her. I'll tell you why, Carrie, because she's great on all surfaces. She's great at cross yes. country, great on the track, fabulous on the road. She was fifth in the Rio Olympic Games 5,000. And she's a, an athlete of some contradictions, too. She's very devout religiously, devout religious, but she likes video games. <laughs> Don't you love that? Yeah, I love when she gets done racing. You know, she, she says her prayer, she does her celebration dance, and then she always flashes this ever-so-famous smile. You know, she's a real kind woman, and she just loves, loves racing, loves being in this community. Germowit right there on the right side of the screen. She is an athlete we definitely have to talk about. She's only 22, but she had a, a great debut in the half marathon, running 64-14. You know, that was just this year, actually, in 2023 in February. She ran that in, in, the, in rec in the half marathon. And, you know, that's the number four all time half marathon. Wow. So yeah, she is, is fit, and she about. is right there leading the way now with that bun on top of her head. That's Germowit. Well, they're at about halfway in this women's 5K, the penultimate race of the day in this Adazero Road to Records Festival of Racing. The first kilometre, 258. The second kilometre, 258. Woo. The uh, clock bring them up through 2K in 555 because of the bits and pieces behind those uh, initial splits, but 5.55 at 2K. So a little bit off the tempo. We were hoping they'd go out in around 2.53 per kilometer, but the bree it is still breezy. Two laps to go. Pacers did step off. You could tell that she was struggling to keep this pace, but look at that. That's seven athletes in this top pack right now. Yeah, come with Gebrise. Uh, only 22 years old, and this pack dominated by the Ethiopians as they've just eased past halfway in this 5K. So the wind is still gusting around the Adidas campus in Herzegonaurak. Three kilometers, 303, that third kilometer. They've gone through uh, 3K in 8.59. So uh, not quite hitting the marks that were being hoped for, but the wind undoubtedly playing its part, carry. And it's so hard to see it from here because they haven't got hair that's blowing around. There's nothing in shot to indicate what the wind is doing. You have The only way you can do it is getting feedback from people out on the course. Yeah, and you can actually see some of the pain that's coming, setting into some of these athletes. They're, they're trying to hang on, but you can see earlier in 
these the shorter races when that pain starts to set in you know the the half marathon the 10k we don't really see it to the second half we are in the second half of this 5k and we can see some grimacing already starting to happen absolutely Senberi Teferi the 27 year old so experienced on all surfaces strong fast track country roads you name it she's been there and done it and listen to this she has five sisters and three brothers <laughs> huge family you know that she was racing to the to the dinner table kind of gets it yeah. first yeah <laughs> Well, which of these athletes is just cruising at the moment, is tucked in there and enjoying the ride? It's really hard to tell. What do you need to do if you're at the front is make sure nobody can cruise, nobody can be on cruise control and enjoying the ride. You want to make them all be hurting. Seven athletes in this breakaway group. Brenda Chebet at the back of the group at the moment. Is she hanging on? She's a relative newcomer. Last year, she set six personal bests at 1,500 metres, Brenda Chebet. Maybe this is the upper end of her range. She's run 8.44 for 3,000, but they've gone through 3,000 here today in 8.59, so she's within her compass. But that's her to the left of picture, I think, it's beginning to drop now, and she is gone. They're on the last lap of this 1,308-metre uh, circuit around the Adidas campus with the ma massive arena building, the real heartbeat, the hub of the complex. Well, Sinberry Teferi, 28 years old. Germowit right next to her, only 22 years old. She kind of became famous when she ran that sub 31 minute 10K three years ago when she was only a teenager. And now she has just time and time again proven that she is a name that we all will be saying for a long time. She's run 1449 at altitude but she's also run that crazy 64-14 for the half marathon. So lots and lots of endurance. That was the that. second fastest debut ever. Exactly. Unbelievable. And that is and the now, woman on the right of your screen. And now we have a new leader, Medina Asa, has hit the front and she's leaning into this little uphill climb. There's just a little bit of a grudge gradient up to this flat man-made uh, track, this uh, man-made surface, I should say. But none of them wanting to give quarter here, Carrie. No, you know, Medina, you, asked, you said it, she took the lead. She's the one in the purple on right now. She's only 20, excuse me, is she even 20? No, she is 19 years old. She was second the World Junior Cross Country just this year in 2023, so she is very fit. She's also an 841 athlete, so maybe not quite the pedigree or part quite the CV that we've seen with Sinberry Teferi, but she hasn't been racing very long. And look at Lem Lem. She's been working hard for the last 2K. She, you can just read the pain on her, her face, but she is holding on and she's right in there. Four athletes there. Lem Lem Nibret working so hard, the 18 year old, the tall figure to the left of this group, making her debut. She only ran 71.55 back in September in the Porto Half Marathon. She's only run 9.03 on the track for 3,000, but she was fifth in those World Junior Cross Country Championships where Medina Asa took the silver medal. So two of this group are real youngsters learning their trade. Senberi, the most experienced of them at 27, trying to make her knowledge, her racing now count here in the last couple of minutes. Zimberi Teferi taking the turns like the veteran that she is. You can really see her working that. Gurowicz keeping her eyes on Zimberi Teferi, maybe not even knowing so much about Medina, but Medina is that young one in the race right now. A lot of people don't know what she can do, but when you've placed that high at the World Junior Cross Country Championships, placing second there you got to know her name and look at him come here Tim final little bits here of these turns and everyone's looking good in the top three well it's been hard and fast the last couple of K 257 that fourth kilometer they take the final turn here Sembele to Ferdi the most experienced kicks for the line Medina Asa, oh! the youngster is going to try and get there first who's going to make it it's a photograph I think 
I think really hard from that front on shot. It might have been Teferi. You think? I don't know. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I Put mean, your money on the table. She rose her hands, but I am not sure if it's she Teferi got it. Teferi is celebrating. Oh, she but she, she celebrates got... after every win or no, every excuse race. Me. They know. They Let's know. See. They're right there. It's like long jumpers. They know a good jump or not well, before they've hit the sand. Regardless, what a race by both of them. Good running from Grovdahl by the looks Waiting, of things, Waiting, here's too. the results. Do we have it yet? Uh, oh! Well, do I see it? Well, they're both no. on 1446, so I don't think they've been separated yet. But at the moment, they have the same time, but are they going to have to share the win? Looks like Grovdal was eighth. Do we have a final result yet? Uh, um, I couldn't possibly say. Oh. No, I don't think we do. We You're do not. You're keeping us on our Although, toes. Well, Medina Asa is the first name on the... Are you kidding computer. me? Well, hang on. They both got 1446 and Semberi 1446. That final kilometer. Wow. 4K was oh, 257. and look at that. 1156. Asa got it. Wow. The youngster gets it. I Sanberi. knew you, that squint would come in handy Sanberi for you. Sanberi Teferi, though. What a class act. Every single time she races... She is happy with the outcome. She is excited for the person next to her. But those two, that was maybe one of the, the best finishes today. Yeah, absolutely. The close, certainly the closest finish. It's the third fastest, sorry, the fourth fastest time in the world this year. Doesn't hurt 14.46 because of that uh, slowish middle kilometer, a 3.03, remember, doesn't get them up there in the top 20 all-time rankings. The wind has picked up again. Do you know, the fastest race of the day, intrinsically, was that men's 10K, and it's the only race where the wind has really eased back. Now, was that Sanberi Teferi raising her arms and celebrating a little early? To the right is Medina Asa. Oh, how they separated them, I do not know. You don't have photo finish equipment in road races. You have usually have judges by the line. But who got that? Sanberi Teferi definitely thought she'd got it. I think in that sort of situation, you sprint for the line and you dip. Well, what we do know is that it was a 1-2-3 for Ethiopia. In fact, I'm just checking. I think it was 1-2-3-4-5-6 for Ethiopia with Brenda Chebet in seventh place. Brenda Chebet being given 15-09. Uh, not her best day at the races. She's a 1457 athlete, and indeed she ran that for fourth in Lille back in the middle of March, just a few weeks ago. Well, the crowd's building down there in the uh, finish area. Of course, they have created uh, a little bit more of a buzz down there. There is a, a DJ, and there's bars, there's a beer zone, and uh, just a little bit more of a villagey feel. Food trucks, beer garden. And, uh, of course, the People's uh, 5K, the public race, is at 13.15, so in just over an hour, about uh, 1,200, we think just north of 1,200 local residents coming in to race over the uh, circuit and do the 5K, the uh, three laps and 1,076 metres that has just been negotiated by the elite women. And what a race it was. That winning time just confirmed 14.46. A personal best for uh, Medina Asa. We actually think it was her, her debut. Absolutely superb. Same time as Sinberi Teferi in second place. And then Gamowit uh, Gebrezer. 14.48 in third. Well, so they got underway, separating around that island very early on. And uh, the pace was honest, if not super fast. 2.58 the first kilometre, 2.58 the second kilometre. There was a hope that they might go out 
It's something around 253 to 255, a little bit quicker than that. It wasn't to be. But uh, on a day like this, when it is cold and there's a, a breeze around, a little bit of wind at certain parts of the course, we should really just relish and enjoy and soak up the great racing from these uh, fantastic athletes more than be worried about the finishing times. Anyway, it came down to a sprint for three. Medina Asa, the uh, youngster, to the right there in the purple, to the left, and Barry Teferi, so much more experience. They crossed the line simultaneously, almost impossible to separate them. But they did indeed give it to the youngster, Asa, with 14.46. World Junior 5000 champion last year she was, by the way. She knows her way around the uh, 5K distance. And Sanberi Taferi having to settle for second place. Third was going with Gebrezet, the 22-year-old, who we know is in such fabulous place after that 64-14 half marathon in uh, Razalkaima in February. That was uh, last year, but she has uh, run that. 66 minutes for half marathon in Lisbon just recently. Fourth fastest athlete in history over the half marathon. Just didn't quite have the speed to live with the 5K athletes this morning. She settled for third place, Gebrezer. But uh, yet another athlete is finding her feet as a senior from Ethiopia. Medina Isa winning the women's 5K. Running needs nothing. It was born free. Goalpost free. Hoop free. Finish line free. Running only takes two legs. Sometimes not even. It doesn't care who gets there first. Whether you're breaking records, or setting a record for too many breaks. Running just needs you to show up and run as you are. Well, as you can see, it's pretty busy around the uh, finish zone of the uh, near the arena building on this Adidas campus here on the edge of uh, Herzogenaurach in southern Germany, where we've uh, had five of the six races so far on this third edition of the Added Zero Road to Records day of racing, a day that has. Uh, gone spectacularly well so far we haven't been inundated with records that doesn't matter it's the spirit it's the determination to run hard one thing that cannot be controlled despite the fabulous organization of this uh, loop circuit around the uh, Adidas uh, campus is the weather and it hasn't been particularly kind today it's been a breezy morning it's been a cold morning and uh, that has not been conducive a really fast running. Nonetheless, we have been treated to a feast of brilliant racing and maybe, just maybe, the best is yet to come. The men's 5K, 5,000 meters on the roads is due off at 12.15. So in about 11 or 12 minutes, there's 28 men in that one. It's a big field, three pacemakers. Medina Asa is confirmed as the winner. She stood out because of the purple kit and she stands out as the champion of Road to Records 2023. Also been a rather lucrative day for the uh, young Ethiopian. $7,000 to the better, 4,000 for third, 3,000 for second in each of these races today. 22 nations represented in uh, the various races today from Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Burundi, South Africa and Uganda. 
from uh, Europe, Spain, France, Israel, Sweden, Norway, Germany, Poland, Romania, and the UK. And from the Americas, or Brazil, Colombia, USA, and from the Caribbean, the Bahamas. And from Asia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Japan, and China. Almost at every corner of the world represented. By the way, there is Asa. It is, we are being told, a world record for under 20 on the roads. A 5K road world record has been set this morning. So that is uh, superb news for the youngster. Now we were told at the uh, gathering for the elite athletes yesterday in the technical meeting yesterday afternoon that a world record would be rewarded with $30,000. They didn't stipulate whether or not that applies to under 20 world records or not. I rather hope it does for the sake of Medina Asa. It would uh, make her day even more special. Oh, I don't suppose for one minute it's even crossed her mind as yet. If her agent's in the crowd, then uh, I suspect he's got a vested interest. <laughs> but uh, the athletes tend to get on with the job of training and racing and getting things right from the performance perspective and leave all that other stuff to the, uh, the backroom boys, the agents, the coaches, the assistants, the uh, family members very often who uh, back up and support these athletes. It's so easy to forget that uh, each of these brilliant performances each of which are months in the making. Uh, each of these brilliant performances represents a massive effort from teams of people, often dozens of people. Well, we're waiting for the presentations to be uh, made for the uh, first three in that women's 5K race. Winning time, remember, 14.46 by Medina Asa. And she's had quite a couple of months, hasn't she? Silver medalist in the World Junior Cross Country in Bathurst. She has run 8.43 for 3K last year, World Junior Champion at 5,000 meters on the track in Cali, Colombia. And today, setting a world under 20 record. We used to call it world junior record, but now you have to specify that it's a world under 20 record. Oh, I'm being confir confirmed, it's being confirmed by my producer that we she will receive a $30,000 bonus for that world record. I wonder if the news has got through to her yet. I'll tell you what, if it was me getting that news, I think I'd be jumping in the lake. So $37,000 for Medina Asa for that win. And we can go down now to the uh, presentations. And the award ceremony for the five kilometers women's race is ready. The award ceremony of the five kilometer women's race is ready. Third place with a personal best of 1448 from Ethiopia, Gebru Gimovic. <laughs> Finishing in second place with a time of 1446 from Ethiopia, Sembere Teferi.
five kilometers race in the women's category in 1446. A new world under 20 record from Ethiopia, Medina Esa. The medals and trophies are being presented by Amanda Rashkuma, the executive board member HR, and there's going to be a world record check for our winner in this women's five kilometer race. Give it up everybody for our winner, Medina Esa. So coming up very shortly, the men's at 5K here in Herzegonau Rack. It will be the uh, final race of this uh, brilliant day of competition on this 1,308 meter circuit in Herzegonau Rack in uh, southern Germany. The Adidas campus has done us proud today. The men's 5K, which we've contested as the women's just now over three laps and then 1,076 further meters, has a fabulously strong field. 28 starters, including three pacemakers. And I can tell you that the defending champion from last year, Yomif Kajelcha, is back, the 25 year old Ethiopian. It seems like he's been around for years and years, but he was racing so well from the age of 17. 12.50 his personal best. That was when he won in Lille just some five weeks or so ago on the 19th of March. He's twice world indoor champion at 3,000 meters. He's a former world under 20 champion at 5,000 meters on the track. Former world youth champion at 3,000 meters on the track. He found it tougher in the senior ranks very often. He was uh, eighth in the Olympic games in uh, Tokyo. 2021 over 10,000 meters, a silver medalist in 2019 at the World Championships over 10,000 meters. Started his running career. Berhanu Bailu, the Bahrainian, former Ethiopian, 1307, his personal best. That may be on the cards to break that. There's the tall, lean figure of Diomif Kijelcha, super racer. He's a 347 miler. He's got amazing speed, enormous strength. Just a wonderful, wonderful racing machine, Yomif Kajelcha. And uh, he starts here probably as favourite, going by recent form. Mukhtar Edris is in there, coming back from injury, you understand, the 29-year-old Ethiopian. Twice world champion, Mukhtar Edris. But which Mukhtar Edris will show up? He's had his fair share of injuries, a little bit inconsistent, but he is strong and fast. Bjorn Gulden, the CEO of Adidas. That's all. Jürgen Gulden will be the starter. The athlete's ready on the line. The breeze is still with us, unfortunately. It's not a warm morning, but none of them feeling the need for hats or gloves or anything like that. It's not that sort of cold. It just takes the edge of what would otherwise be perfect conditions on this really quick circuit. Look out, too, for Rodrigo Quizera making his debut with Burundian. He's in great shape, 
27th and 04 in Valencia just recently. That was back in January when he finished in fourth place and then eighth in the World Cross Country in Bathurst back in the middle of February. And they're away, they're racing. Now, just to put things in context, we're looking here for a 12.50 is the target time. That means 2.34 per kilometre. The world record is a tantalising 12.49 by Berahut Aragawi. That was in uh, Barcelona back in uh, December 2021. And I'm rejoined in the commentary box by Haile Gebre Selassie, who I know will be watching this one with an intense interest, knows a thing or two about uh, 5K racing. Haile, did you do many 5Ks on the road? Uh, I can say one, maybe. One, maybe, yeah. yeah, not, yeah. Not so much. I not. bet it wasn't rubbish, though, was it? What was the no, time? No, it's just too fast. Remember? You know, when you run a road, there's no 5K, it's too fast. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, Heidi, that we've already had two world records today. We've had world under-20 records. So Getachew, uh, Seniak Getachew set a world under-20 record in the women's 10K of 30-34. And that win just now in the women's 5K was also a world under-20 record. So those two youngsters, juniors, are going to get $30,000 bonuses. That's not wow, a bad day's that's work. that's wonderful. Congratulations for them. And uh, again, now this is the final one. Yeah, there is indeed. Back to the racing and uh, the pacemakers will do a good job here, I'm sure. There's two of them out there in the yellow vest, of course. You can see Yomiv Kajelcha there in the centre, highly. Yeah. He's a special animal. I mean, he's run 3.47 for the mile. He's oh. under 27 minutes for 10,000. He's got that range, a, a bit like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, Yomif, uh, as you know, just the last many, I mean, some years, you know, just he's doing very well. I think, you know, Today, you know, we expect a lot, you know, from him, and uh, well, things doing well, and uh, wow, that's is, that's is, that's is something uh, something good today, you know. Just if we can see something, well, at least you know, fast, fast, uh, fast race. To the left, there is Beraket Batebo Nega. He's just 18 years old, the Ethiopian. His personal best 13:33. Uh, we're looking, remember, for each kilometer here to be 2:34. Eric, that's coming up very shortly, so we'll uh, keep you abreast of those splits, of course, as they come through for us. Let's see what happens as they reach that first kilometre point. It will be any second now, and it will be quick, I'm sure. Right. He should be going through one kilometre about now, and it's come up. As a, a 2.32, oh, wow. highly. Uh, 2.32. Yeah, That's super quick. fast. <laughs> wow, that's a... Uh, wow. They are, you know, six seconds uh, inside the world record in this space. And, uh, but a little bit too... I mean, a little bit too fast, you know. But uh, this, it's okay. Maybe too fast. But maybe they had the wind behind them a little bit on that section. Is it? And it's slightly downhill, I think, that first Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, maybe that's a little bit easier. Uh, but they are hammering it out here. Berhanu Belu of Bahrain, expected to be amongst the uh, favourites. But it's, I mean, look, highly three and a half minutes on the clock and the field is pulled right apart. Yeah. It's so fast. Now, this is this is really a right, a right thing to do, you know, just from the athlete side, because you have to you have to be like this, you know, just if it's a 5K, what, what you need to wait in. Uh, pacemaker doing a good job. I think, hey, look at, you know, the pacemaker and, and the... Yomif looks very relaxed, doesn't he? Yeah, he in the is. middle there, in the he white, with the, uh, the the sort of white cut-off tights. He won last year in 12:53, so close to the world record. He was the winner last year, yeah. And he's come back for more. And we understand is in fine fettle. One pacemaker gone. Better get an interesting character. Just 18 years old, highly. Well, uh, what I see, you know, from Beraket's side, you know, just he's. Uh, He's uh, bothering, you know, Yomif, uh, because, you know, Barakat, uh, I can see, you know, just uh, he's struggling, but... Uh, but he's looked like that from the word go. He's, he's just, a, he's just an, an aggressive, awkward-looking runner. Yeah, very runner. aggressive, very aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you see, it's sometimes, you know, just uh, this kind of athletic disturbing, you know, just a pace, and... Uh, the yeah. Other, the other pacemaker <laughs> drops steps aside, <laughs> it's much, down to these guys. For him. 
Four and a half minutes on the clock and the pacemakers are gone. That's how aggressive it is. That first kilometre, remember, 2.32. That's almost four-minute miling pace. Yeah, exactly. What amazing today. So uh, quick. And yet a big pack there. I can see Mukhtar Edris towards the back. He's in there. Yeah. Mukhtar Edris, yeah, there. And, uh, well, for him, uh, a little bit too fast, you know, the, the 5K. But uh, Yomif uh, is doing well. Uh, yeah, as you see, you know, just right now, also, you know, just the rest between, uh, 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 well, it's a time. Well, we're uh, waiting for the uh, two-kilometer mark to come yeah, up. Yeah, They've yeah. Sort of passed it by now. And there it is, 2.39, wow. that second one. That is not the best way to get to 2K in yeah. 5.12. A 2.32 and a 2.39, yeah. that's too quick. A couple of yeah. 2.34s would have been yeah. better. It's too quick. So 10 seconds outside yeah. world record pace. But the important thing, Harley, is that uh, Yomi Kedelcha looks very strong. He's bouncing, yeah. he's moving well, and, and he looks confident. You know, the style and everything, you know, from his side, you know, really good. And a well-experienced athlete, and uh, he can, uh, you know, he can, he, can, he can do anything what he wants, you know, just in this stage. But he needs, you know, just somebody to help. Uh, okay, now he by himself, and... Uh, well, you know, you, don't, you never know about the race, you know, just, I mean, uh, later on. Uh, if he's alone, it's hard, you know, just to, uh, to keep, you know, pacing, you know. Well, well he's still he's, he's, he's doing well, you know, almost halfway. In second place is Adesu Chala, the 18-year-old uh, making his debut. He's having a fabulous run, trying to go with the uh, leader, Kajelcha, but the gaps are widening now. This is super fast. Yeah, it, it is. Wow. But the problem is that those first two kilometers average out at 236. And we need 234 per kilometer. So they're four seconds outside world record tempo at the moment. Yeah, if you keep, you know, just a pace like this, you can catch it. You know, uh, uh, we don't uh, we don't need to worry about you know the time if Kajelja uh, keep you know the. Well, Gidelcha leading at the moment, and he's a building a gap. He's been great for over 10 years. He won plenty of age group titles, loves his movies and music, relaxing music and spending time with his family. He's a very ordinary guy in some ways. Oh, this is good. Yomif Kajelcha then has forged a gap of some 30 meters or so on his pursuers as he reaches 3k in 7.45. 7.45 at 3k, that was a 2.34. Now he needs to be averaging 2.34 to get down to 12.50. The world record is 12.49. He's got 2k to go, Hailey. Yeah. How do you think about it? Yeah. Well, it's very difficult to say in this stage. Uh, uh, well, it's, it, if he keeps, you know, just uh, this pace, uh, well, he's he's not that, that far from the world record. Uh, but you know, the, now we he's uh, seven seconds shy you know, from the world record. But uh, you see, no one helps this athlete. Only yeah, it's, it's, it's tough when you're on your yeah, own like this. Yeah, very tough. Very tough. We know the wind is still here. We're sitting up at this yeah. balcony. We can yeah, yeah, feel yeah, the wind yeah. quite strongly. Yeah. It's cool. Exactly, exactly. No matter what, you know, just you can run, you know, under uh, almost under 18 minutes. Uh, minutes and uh, but uh, well, they're chasing hard. Yomif yeah. Kajelcha has got a winning lead. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. He's got what about three minutes of running, three and a half minutes of running to come. But he needs to dig deep here because that threat from behind, is he closing in second place? Yeah, what I can see, you know, here, uh, as, you, as you said, you know, just uh, Bala is, uh, is moving fast you know, on this uh, stage. Behani Bailu yeah. is chasing hard in second place. 
and clothing yeah. on Yomif Kajelcha. He's got a man in his sights, the Bahrainian, the former Ethiopian, sixth in the Olympic 5000 back in 2021. He's in fabulous shape. Back in February, just a couple of months ago, he ran 7.33 indoors for 5,000, for 3,000 in Lieva in France. He was fourth here last year in 13.07. But that's telling. He looked over his shoulder. So he's worried about what's <laughs> worried behind Worried from him. the one behind, of course, they you know. Uh, he accepts, you know, uh, Yomif uh, win. Uh, that's why, you know, just to check behind. Otherwise, yeah. you know, they... And now, what I see here, uh, Yomif, uh, the pace is a little bit slow. Uh, still, still, still in the time. Still. Well, uh, looking for the four kilometre time yeah. to come up. It was 7.45 at 3K. Uh, 4K should be coming up any second now. But Yomif Kajelcha has the race won, I think. That gap back to Beilu is probably just put too big. He's a Manchester City fan, is oh, Pohanu Beilu. If he can race half as well as his team are playing football, he could catch Yomif Kajelcha here at 2.37. That's a little too slow, yeah, isn't it? Little, little. But his time at 4K, 10.23 highly. He just needs to hold his form for this final oh. kilometre. It'll still be quick. Yeah, it, it is. I, I told you. I know, this, uh, uh, this pace uh, can be, you know, just uh, under 13 minutes, and uh, well, still we we'll see, you know, just what the last part. And uh, okay, now they they are in the last part, and Brahanu uh, Balau uh, and Yomif Kajelcha, but Yomif already, you know, just ahead of Brahanu Balau in. Taye Adesu back in third place behind the Beilu in second, Kajelcha, who has the lead and surely the win in the back. Started running in high school, did Kajelcha, following relatives who ran. He runs with the Ethiopian club Oromia Engineering Construction Corps, has done since 2012 when he was 14. Moved to the USA and trained uh, over there in Oregon for two or three years. But the defending champion looks like he's going to make a successful defence of that title from 12 months ago. He won in 12.53 last year. Is Kajelcha heading for an improvement of that time? The fastest time in the world this year is his 12.50 from Lille on the 19th of March. The world record is 12.49 by Berahu Aragawi in Barcelona in December 2021. I think that is now out of reach, but it's been a fabulous run from Kajelcha. Maybe that first kilometre just too quick at 2.32. That could have, uh, could be, they could be paying for that now as Kajelcha grits his teeth. Beilu has a target in the background. They have just over a minute of running to come as Kajelcha now negotiates one of the last turns. Those long legs, he's still bouncing well, moving well. This final section as he turns right into the uh, finishing straight. He's got a little left-hand turn to come. Watch the clock. The world record, 12.49. That has gone. He's not going to get that. But look at Beilu coming back at him. Kajelcha easing off as he's approaching the line. Does he know he's under threat here? Kajelcha may get caught here, and he is going to be caught, I think. Oh, my word. He has been caught. Oh, my word. Bailu had a target. He knew what was going on. Kajelcha relaxed, didn't concentrate, lost focus. It was a fantastic run from him, but he is defeated. Can you believe it? Caught in the last two metres, probably beaten by two centimetres. Boy, oh boy, Berhanu Bailu of Bahrain. Improves his personal best, unofficially his winning time, 13.06. His best time was 13.07 when he was fourth here last year. Wow, and look at that. Kajelcha looked over the wrong shoulder and much, much too late. Why didn't he have a glance over 10 seconds earlier? You need to know what is going on in a race. Dear, oh dear. Well, all credit for Bahanu Bailu for chasing so hard. And maybe just a little bit of that gold dust of Manchester City, his uh, English Football League club, soccer club, was uh, that gold dust was dusted off on him. The man who moved to Addis at the age of 19 to live with his brother. His brother said, no, go and get a job, stop running. So he went down and slept on the streets. 
Berhanu Bailey. It's a bit of a fairy tale, really, his running career. Moved to uh, Bahrainian nationality in October 2014. And he started running because it was two hours for him to get to school. So he ran to school each day. There is the uh, confirmation of the result in that men's uh, 5K. Bahanu Bailu, 13.06. John Mukajelcha, the same time, but beaten by centimetres. Rodrigue Cusera, 30, uh, third, third with 13.11. Great running from him in a debut, too, for the Burundian 23-year-old, Taye Adesu. Well, that is new ground for him as well. That, I think, too, his debut. Mukhtar Idris, 13.26 in sixth place, the twice world champion. Well, let's head down to Michelle to speak to the winner, Michelle. And we're here with the absolutely phenomenal finish from Bihanu Balib. Congratulations. What was going through your mind those last few meters? Where did you get that push from? And First of all, I know I'm so proud, I'm so happy to win the race. You know, second, secondly, you know, just I, I didn't you know, expect you know, to win, you know, to beat the you know, Yomi. You know, just uh, I want to keep you know, just my second position and then you know, I win the race. And Yomif was pushing the pace so much the whole time. And this event is called the Road to Records. How much does the crowd help to push you on to results like the one that we've just seen just now? Yomif, you know, but I'm pushing you. I'm going to be with the Duruna. 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 I'm going to uh, when, when he pushed, when he moved you know, from uh, the group, and I uh, didn't expect him you know, just to catch and uh, to, to be number one, to win the race. You know, just my, my goal was you know, just to keep the second position, nothing else. <laughs> Well, you've done absolutely amazing, Will. We're sending you off to the medal ceremony and we say congratulations and thank you so much. Thank you very much. Boy, oh boy. Well, it's the third fastest time in the world this year by Berhanu Bailu, 13.06. Kajelcha, second after his victory last year, having to settle for runner up spot in the same time, 13.06. And I can tell you that Rodrigo Cruzera setting a national record for Burundi with his third place, 13.11, just behind that uh, leading pair. And a national record, too, for Mfalele Ryan of South Africa, 13.24. Brilliant running from him to uh, take what position was he? He was in the fifth place, so a national record for him. And that time, 13.24. So they've been... Uh, Quite a few national records today in this uh, Adizero Road to Records uh, day of great racing. Joan Melli setting Romanian national record of 31.21 in the women's 10K. Angelica Mack of Poland, a national record, 34.01. Uh, Sanna Mustonen of Sweden, a national record of 35.22. Uh, Chu Lo Ying of Hong Kong, a national record of 36.55 in the women's 10K. And Seniat Getachew, as I said, world under 20 record with 30.34 in that women's 10K. Now, this was the critical moment in this men's 5,000 metres. Yomis Kajelcha just striding towards the line. Bailu had the bit between his teeth, dives at the line there, eases past Kajelcha, who realised too late, didn't have time to respond. They'd missed the 13-minute barrier. The racing, though, right up to the line, supreme by Bahanu Bailu, who uh, takes the win. Well, unbelievable. Improves his personal best by one second. Wins the $7,000 first prize. Well, uh, 
down by the finish area where it's getting increasingly crowded. I understand, Kerry, you have somebody rather special to have a chat with. Kerry. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm down here with the CEO of Adidas, Bjorn Goulden. <laughs> Six national records, two world records for U20. Amazing day out here today. Yeah, and I think seeing all these, uh, you know, fit people running on our campus, uh, the people watching it and now having people taking part in the, what should I say, amateur race is a great feeling. Adidas, what does it mean? What does all of this mean for you guys here on your campus? Adidas is sport and sport is life, so it means everything. Yeah. You're getting ready to run. Of course. I mean, together with, I think, 1,000 people. So those who haven't lined up yet, you can just start in the back and join us. Bjorn, thank you for everything you do here, and congratulations on what another great day. Congratulations to everybody. Have fun. Well, six national records there. Two world under-20 records do indeed constitute a road to records day of success. And that is zero road to records day of success. There is the Adidas campus. You can pretty much see the entire circuit there around the outside of that uh, uh, those two large buildings. The arena building is the big square one. That is the uh, real hub of Adidas's uh, HQ here in Herzegnaurak. And I think uh, can say goal achieved. New records being set here by the uh, various athletes. The 136 athletes from 22 nations are delivering yet again in these six elite races over the 5K, 10K, and half marathon distances. Well, through sport, we have the power to change lives, is what it says across the front of the main arena building here on the Adidas campus, and that is absolutely the case. And more lives are gonna be changed later on today with the uh, public race over 5k that's at 115 that's in uh, about 40 minutes time some 1200 plus local residents racing in that one it's been a real privilege to uh, have chatted today with Harley Gebre Selassie and Perez Jep Cheer Cheer and I saw Mary Kaitani at breakfast although she didn't make it up here to our commentary box but uh, boy oh boy this place is just uh, alive with a buzz after Great racing, plenty of records, and uh, famous faces. Wherever you look, it's uh, runners' delight to be in this sort of environment. Last year, nine national records were set at the last count. And I'm going to double check, but I think six national records have been set today and two world under 20 records. There's Rodrigue Quizera. I wonder, I'm sure he's got the news that he's set a national record for Burundi of 13-11 for third in that men's uh, 5K race. And Falele Ryan also setting up or Ryan Amphalele, excuse me, get it the right way round. The 24-year-old uh, South, Africa, South African setting a national record of 13.24 here. Mukhtar Redris, while well, he's battling his way back to full fitness, the Ethiopian, twice world champion, sixth in 13.27 here today. We're just waiting for the presentation ceremony to the uh, first three in that men's 5K. There were great hopes of a possible world record for Yomif Kajelcha, but to get a world record, and it's so easy to say those two words, things have to fall into place in such a special way. The wind, uh, the weather wasn't conducive to it today. It's a windy, cool morning, has been since uh, we all got up before dawn at the hotel just a few hundred meters away and then of course the pace the early pace in that men's uh, 5k well 232 was suicidally quick 
for the first kilometer. Then there was a 2.39, and that does damage when you go out so hard like that. It's hard to recover. Kajelcho, all to his credit, he led through the middle stages with a fabulous third kilometer of 2.34 to get to five to get to 3,000 in 7.45. This on the roads, remember, with all those corners to negotiate and a slight rise on each lap. But then uh, a 2.37 fourth K showed a degree of tiring. And boy, oh boy, was he tiring as he got towards the finish line. Lost concentration as much as energy to allow himself to be caught by Bohanut Belu. Great racing from Kjelcha, but fabulous racing and determined just determination displayed by Berhanu Belu. Well, those are world championships in Budapest are the big target this coming summer as the track and field season gets underway. The majority of these athletes today will want to be involved, whether it's in the 5,000 or 10,000 steeplechase, maybe even the marathon in the Hungarian capital. They're 16 weeks away. I was counting earlier the uh, World Championships in uh, August in Budapest. And I'm sure many of these athletes will gather there as well. Before that, plenty of Diamond League meetings to be uh, attended, to be raced in, fast times, personal bests. With luck, perhaps the odd world record will come the way of some of these athletes. And the sport of track and field continues to go from strength to strength. In many respects, and thanks to the sponsors, it's easy to take sponsorship for granted in this uh, sport where a sponsorship, frankly, is the oxygen that drives the sport. The chemistry, oh, the whole mix of uh, great products being sold around the world is absolutely critical to the health of the sport and athletes like these here today and days like this today are what uh, inspire people to uh, and get out and run. the award ceremony. And the award ceremony of the five kilometer race in the men's category is ready. Finishing in third place with a time of 13.11, a national record for Burundi, Rodrigue Quisera. <laughs> Finishing in second place with a time of 13.06 for Ethiopia, Yomif Kijelcha. kilometers race in the men's category in a time of 13.06 for Bahrain, Biranu Balev. <laughs> the medals and trophies are being presented by Björn Golden, CEO of Adidas.
Well, what an amazing day. It's the 2023 Adi Zero Road to Records and a Road to Records it was, right, Spencer? Yeah, absolutely. We're exceptionally proud. We broke eight national records and two world under 20 records. So, amazing results. The athletes did awesome, and we're so proud of them. Well, and we're proud of you for organizing this. If you look around, if you see how much this event has grown, if you see how much the community has evolved, how does that really symbolize the mission that Adidas has here in the community as well? Yeah, you know, impossible is nothing. Um, we said up front at the beginning that you can only judge an event in the third year, we thought, and um, we've got bigger and better, and we had what we called pillars of improvement, and when we looked at them today, we certainly achieved in them. Didn't quite hit the home run with a couple of world records, but like I said, we, we really thought that, that, that the athletes did a good job uh, with taking the weather into consideration. Absolutely, and we can't wait for hopefully the next two road to records, <laughs> two world under 20 records, eight national records here in Herzogen Aurach. And we say a big thank you to Alberto, to Spencer, to Jennifer, and we can't wait to see you next week at the Adidas Atlanta City Games for plenty of action on the track of some of the world's best athletes. Thank you very much from Herzogen Aurach. Das Ganze findet ihr hinten am Start, wo auch der Hafen Feldmarathon.